Introducing a new league for WoW Classic. One life where death equals delete. Welcome to Hardcore All-Stars Season 1. Participate in 10 live events for $5,000 in prizes with two ways to compete. Rally your friends for the first Hardcore World Tour. Compete as a team and survive four punishing dungeon circuits. Make it to level 60 to enter the final showdown. Or compete solo in dungeon drafts. Make a fresh character. Enter a draft. Be the first to clear the dungeon. And claim victory. The action starts on February 25th, 2023. Click the pinned comment and sign up today. Hardcore All-Stars. Introducing the Hardcore All-Stars World Tour Season 1. The world's first One Life Dungeon Speedrunning Tournament. The World Tour consists of five circuits where your team will go up against the best to see who can clear the dungeons the fastest. And today we're going to break it all down for you. Leveling is open now on Blood Cell Buccaneers for NA Realms and Hydraxian Waterlords if you're playing in the EU region. The first set of dungeons to be tackled will happen on March 11th at 9am PST. This is where teams will take on Wailing Caverns, the Dead Mines, Shadowfang Keep, and Black Fathom Deeps. For circuit number one, the max level will be 22 and a half, so make sure you're not too high. Two weeks later, we have circuit number two, where the max level is 32 and a half. These dungeons will consist of Scarlet Monastery Graveyard, Razor's Fen Crawl, Gnomergan, and Scarlet Monastery Library. And you can do these in whichever order you want. Leveling up to 43.5 by April 15th, teams can take part in circuit number 3. This is going to be Scarlet Monastery Armory and Cathedral, Razorfen Downs, and Uldemen. Some of the most challenging dungeons we've seen so far. Then as we get closer to max level on April 29th, circuit number 4 happens. Here level cap is 51.5 and, and you're going to deal with Zulfarak, Marodon, and Sunken Temple. This means you need to clear the entirety of the massive dungeon Marodon in one go, so keep that in mind when planning your routes. And then on Saturday, May 13th, 9 a.m. PSC, we have the Grand Finals, where you can be level 59 and 3 quarters to ding level 60 in one of these dungeons. Teams will need to clear through Blackrock Depths, Dire Mall East, Lower Blackrock Spire, and Strat Undead. These dungeons are extremely punishing, and remember, all of these characters are hardcore characters. Now let's talk about the rules really quickly. As for registration, you can register all the way up to March 24th. Now you're probably thinking, Sarth. Didn't you say that the first circuit is on March 11th? And yes, I did. But you can decide to join in on the Hardcore All-Stars action even after the first circuit has happened. Although you can't win the grand prize at the final if you don't participate in all of the world tours. Each team can consist of up to six people. This means a five-person dungeon team and one backup player that can be swapped in for dealing with certain dungeons. Of course, each player can only play on one team, and each team does need to choose a team captain. Your faction, class, and profession choices are permanent upon registration, and team rosters cannot be changed. You have to level by yourself following the hardcore rules, using Autobiographer and the hardcore add-ons, as every hardcore player must. You can only ever group up with your team, and trading is only permitted once you hit level 60 and only with other members of your team. But because these are hardcore characters, your backup characters can be leveled at any time and used if you die. Each participant can only run a dungeon one time, and that is for all characters. So if one player does die in the dead mines, as he levels up his backup, he can no longer enter into that dungeon. Here's some more of the leveling rules, and this PDF will also be linked in the description. For substitutions, you can substitute your six player in between any of the dungeons but you have to complete a full dungeon with that character before another swap can be made. 
players can only use backup characters if their main is dead, and players can't use backup characters in the same circuit that they died in. To start each circuit, all players must meet up at the dungeon meeting zone of their choice. You can complete the dungeons in any order, and Hardcore All-Stars will have a custom weak aura that all participants must run so that they can clear the trash and boss requirements. This is mostly to prevent some logout skips and glitch spots within each race. Its group is required to live log their runs, and each team will be communicating through the Hardcore All-Stars Discord. Also know that the only quests allowed during the circuit are dungeon quests, as well as quests that drop within the dungeon. Things like Grime Encrusted Ring or drops in Wailing Caverns, for example. Each player is required to record the circuits, and at least one player per team has to stream the race. And at the beginning of these recordings, we ask that all players display their experience level, their equipment, their full inventory, and a slash played to prevent any sort of tomfoolery. Points are aggregated across all five circuits, and teams must complete all circuits to be eligible to win the entire world tour. Points are measured per circuit in three categories, dungeon clear time, circuit clear time, and deaths. Times will be parsed against one another and points are awarded based on those parses, which will become more impactful as circuits progress. Dungeon clear times can be awarded between 25 and 51 points. Each circuit includes three to four dungeons, and for each required trash mob not killed, there is an added time of one minute onto the time of that dungeon clear. Circuit clear times can be awarded anywhere between 12 and 25 points, based on dungeon times as well as the full completion time of the circuit itself, so choosing your route wisely will have a little bit of an advantage. Deaths will penalize each team as follows. One death will lose you 25 points. Two deaths will be 45 points. Three deaths is 60 points. Four deaths is 70 and five deaths is 75. But don't worry, a team cannot earn less than zero points in any circuit. So if you do have a full team wipe, you can just start over. You won't go into the negative. And lastly, all points, positive and negative, will be doubled in the final circuit. The grand finale also comes with a cash prize, so good luck to all the teams out there. Assemble your party and start practicing your hardcore routes. All right, guys. I am done. Oh my god, guys. <laughs> Let's do this. Welcome everybody to the whole <sighs> hardcore all-stars season one. We're finally here. We finally made it. This is gonna be the entire event. We'll be here. Today, I'm joined on the desk by the amazing Winky and only guys. Welcome, welcome to Hardcore All-Stars Season 1, Circuit 1. Uh, please introduce yourself to everybody so they know who you are, your involvement with Hardcore, and especially with Hardcore All-Stars. I'll let you go first only. Let's go. Uh, sure, what's up, everybody? Only Black Smoke here. Um, yeah, I've been involved with Hardcore for about a year and a half, maybe two years. Um, joined just before the whole Road to Rag deal uh priest enjoyer god help me but uh yeah i've uh, i've been the lead for hcas world tour um although i gotta say it's definitely taken a village and sometimes feels like a lot more than a village to pull all this off so i'm just happy to be here with you guys uh now we get to get started on this hell yeah winky welcome what's up dude. what's up guys my boy welcome welcome Yo. Introduce yourself, uh, dude. You, you're you're ingrained in the hardcore community. Yeah, my my name's Winky. Hi, it's nice to meet you guys. Um, I've been a moderator of the hardcore community for what three years now, almost three years now. Um, Good to meet me. Been playing hardcore for a really really long time, um, and I've you know been very fortunate enough to take part in a lot of events. Um, hardcore World Tour, not excluded from that, and I'm super excited, as always. Um, I also run the uh, hardcore community podcast called Eps and Chat, which is probably how people actually know me. <laughs> that's actually for some reason. That's like the the best because because your podcast literally started with just like death clips and yeah. just literally watching and breaking down all of the people dying and like with hardcore everyone joining today what we're doing today well you probably know already but this is gonna be the world's first real speedrunning league in world of warcraft classic and it's not only a normal speedrunning league but this is fully going to be a hardcore speedrunning league meaning if players die which we'll show you guys some death clips 
pretty soon. If players die, then they have to delete their characters and the rest of the group needs to try to finish the dungeons. Now, this is circuit number one, which means there is going to be four dungeons today. They're going to run through the Dead Mines, SFK, BFD, as well as Wailing Caverns, and they have kind of their pick of the litter whichever ones they want to start with first, but they also have to plan their routing to make it through all of the dungeons. With that being said, it's going to be really exciting because people literally died yesterday. People have died this morning, right? Only we have teams that have, that died yesterday getting to the dungeons, right? Oh, yeah, we have had full teams wipe uh, just trying to get to dungeons. Uh, we had a, in a, a phenomenal 44 team registrations uh, since we opened up registration back in late February. Uh, of those, 35 teams actually made it. So even just oh making it level 22 <laughs> on your, your pre-raid bis, if you will, and then getting to these dungeons, we had about 25% of our teams fall over. Yeah, I we, think we're going to see that more. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. But I, I do think we're going to see more and more of that as time goes on, too. Certainly. Um, the the speedrunning aspect is only high risk in short periods of time on the event day. But to get to the next circuit, you have to level your character without dying, yeah. um, which is a challenge enough in its own, right? That's the crazy part is like, it's not just within these dungeons that it that it's going to be fully like um, hardcore and, and for people to fully clear it, right? It's not just within these dungeons. People literally have to get to the next level. Right now, the level cap is 22 and a half, and they had to obviously get to 22 and a half, but like planning for this means that if you're twinking out at max level and you can't turn off the experience, then you're, you're gonna need to start doing your quests at like 18 where you're gonna need to make sure you don't have any sort of exploration getting to the dungeons you're gonna start your circuit on. So that's like one of the crazy things. Do you see like people have died leveling up? Didn't someone die yesterday and then leveled up last night and made it back all the way? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, a legend within the hardcore community, at least, Table Slam, known very much for leveling up solely inside of caves, never leaving them. Uh, died yesterday, fell through the world on his druid, had to delete on the spot. Uh, but he spent all night leveling back up, got back to level 22, uh, coming in huge for their team, Gorilla Milk. At least you can do that for Circuit 1, right? The, it, mm -hmm. At a certain point on this world tour, you know, if you die at level 45 or something, you know, you're not going to be able to re-roll the day before That's <laughs> and get yeah. back to, to level for, for your team. And it this is one of those things where it's like, you want to perform for yourself, but you also don't want to let your team down, which is very, 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 it adds even more pressure to the leveling um, and really yeah. doing anything because you can die at any point, right? You could be fishing for 30 hours and then just like Go not AFK look at your screen, your right? Toaster's on fire and drown. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's all kinds of crazy things. There's people that have, I, Bobco was, or actually, I think it was Ampi was saying it yesterday. Maybe it was Karg saying it yesterday. But Bobka's team, um, if anyone dies, if anyone is the person that messes up, then they owe every single other person on on the, the team $100. So it's a go. free and very easy way for people to make a lot of money if anyone messes up a little bit. And they're not even all at the dungeon yet. A lot of people are heading towards the dungeons that they're going to be starting at. So even just running towards the dungeon, especially the scary one is Horde heading towards Dead Mines, where we literally saw a team die yesterday. I don't know if you have the clip of that. I think you sent it to yes, me. Yes, I do. Yeah, it's in the it's in the chat. Oh. Here, I just DM'd it to you again as well. A team or... died <laughs> yesterday heading here. All right, let me pull this up. Huge rip to our boy. We we might see more teams die on the way there this morning. By the way, it's not if you if you made horde characters and you're planning to start dead mines, it is not a safe run to Which, get to dead mines. Shout out to our boy Jerome and his team. Jumping off very bad. on really, the really way bad? to dead mines. Yeah, Discord, 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 Discord. No! Oh, then they just get the Murlocs, dude. And not even just one. They get multiple Murlocs. They jumped so... Oh, what a position to jump at. We just wiped. Our team just completely wiped. We actually just watched something very similar to this. 
on well, Epson chat last, uh, last Friday. Well, that's a buzzkill. Mm -hmm. And we learned it. that if you take <laughs> the Zeppelin from Brill <laughs> down yeah, to Gromgol instead of the one from Duratar, you can jump uh, and there's basically no opportunity for you to pull Murlocs. Really? Um, it, yeah, it takes a more northern path, so you can jump closer to the, the ZG Island, like Westfall uh, place where you're swimming to. Yeah. And you, you can avoid all the elite Murlocs to begin with if you, come, if you go from Brill. Wow. Yeah, who, who would have yeah. thought just taking the wrong Zeppelin can result in an entire team wipe? It's Hon happened before. Honestly, to me. honestly, Cargos and, and his whole team and, and a bunch of people were just on the Zeppelin right now running from org, but they didn't jump off. That's the thing. They didn't jump off and they're all following like the same route. They're all marked and they're all making sure that they're following the same route. So they're kind of safe. I think that's like the smart way of doing it is like just knowing your route. But for from Brill, you literally can't die. You can't accidentally pull. Talking about routes, though, Sarth, that brings up the question that I have because I have been perp I don't know if you know this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've even told anyone this. Um, I've been purposely not really paying attention to a lot of things that is going on with the teams of Hardcore All-Stars mm -hmm. because I want to be surprised, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to know everything. And plus, I want to be able to make assumptions and say that I was right or wrong, right? Yes. So, uh, so assumptions here. So in <laughs> terms, yeah, I know, right? I wish I was. I wish I could have assumed that we were doing turtlenecks today. I would have put a turtleneck on. Hey, there's but, still um, time. He's, I want to talk the routes one. between the dungeons, right? So today's event, you have to do whaling caverns. You have to do dead mines. You have to do SFK, and then you have to cap it with BFD, right? Right. So, Two on so each what, continent. What route for Alliance and Horde? You think people are going to be taking to maximize minimize travel time between these dungeons um and i've heard some pretty wild accusations that there's some interesting tech going into this i'm not sure i don't want to expose anyone but i want to hear what you guys think uh, yeah. like what do you what do you think the routing is going to be and and before i'd like to hear sarth's guesses first but i want to give just a couple of like rules that are in place here uh so that the viewers kind of understand why we're we're thinking about it from this way so the big one is that you can't log out at any time once the circuit starts so mm -hmm. being able to use logout skips which is a really common speed run tactic is a big no-no you also are locked into a single team there's no um up to six players but only five can be at a party at a time you can't have any class uh uh, duplicates all uh, so it's not like these teams have summoning teams that are just waiting at each individual dungeon portal these teams actually have to run their asses all the way uh, you know if you were uh, alliance starting at you know dead mine so you might have to go all the way at the continent just to get to sfk but yeah sorry that i have a lot of spoilers so i'd love to hear from you first yeah, you have you're you're pretty much you know everything that's about to go down right now. And what I'm like, I'm seeing some groups right now, like cargoes I'm showing on the screen, is their their group is heading towards the dead mines. A lot of groups are deciding to start here with the dead mines, especially as horde, it's kind of the furthest out of the way. So it's easier probably to start there. It also is one of the relatively lower level ones. It's like dead mines and whaling caverns that are lower levels. So you can go in if you make it there and, and clear them, get some good loot that you can take to get through or to help you get through SFK and Black Fathom Deeps. And BFD is is going to be the hardest one. Going in there right away at 22 and a half, I think, I don't know if any team is going to start there. They're all going to die. I think there's we're going to see some crazy pulls in the dead mines, especially with the teams that are running with different compositions, which we'll talk about in a second. But I think a lot of the teams actually decide to start with dead mines. It's a faster dungeon if you do some of the jumps, which also can be very scary if anyone messes up any of the jumps. But it's a faster dungeon, so I think the dead mines is the go-to start point. It's also just, it's so far out of the way. It's so far oh, out absolutely. of the way. Yeah, it's, I do have yeah. a question for you, only yeah. as the tournament organizer, the prime, the the prime uh, minister of the hardcore all stars. I I, I want to know. I, I do like is, the titles you're giving me. Yes. Is <laughs> ghetto hearthing allowed? Yes. Can you drop so, group? So ghetto hearthing is allowed at the end of each dungeon. So once you've killed all bosses in each dungeon, you are allowed to drop group ghetto hearth. But otherwise, your team needs to remain in a group at all times. 
Okay. So it seems like the play would be dead mines. If you're horde, you dead mines, right? Then you hearth to ratchet, maybe crossroads. You do will well, and caverns. What, what I what I hear is that a lot of horde teams are actually uh, they're starting dead mines, but they're keeping their hearthstone at camp T. Um, specifically oh, oh, for blood shards, it's quite central, but also blood shards. Blood shards, for yeah, buffs. blood shards. So, although we've got a rule in place that you can only turn in dungeon quests, you know, blood shards are a repeatable turn in that doesn't give any XP. You know, at, at least in the uh, rule book of uh, of the HCS, that's mm -hmm. not a quest. You know, this isn't a, a quest that you're repeatedly doing. You're just transforming some items into 10% movement speed or, you know, 15 agi, whatever it is. Uh, so a lot of these horde teams are going to be returning to Camp T over and over again. You know, running dead mines, Camp T for new blood shards, Wailing Caverns, Camp T for new blood shards, going, you know, out to SFK and again, and then finishing up with BFD. Uh, even for Alliance, that seems to be the most common route, just with uh, your Hearthstone in Ratchet instead. Uh, yeah. However, I've heard some teams saying, no, we want to start in uh, Wailing Caverns, whether they're Alliance or Horde. Uh, even some alliance uh, teams we've heard rumored to want to go to uh, SFK first, one of the harder dungeons on this list, just to get that travel time out of the way. Yeah, I was gonna say if you're alliance, I would I wouldn't mind SFK down to Dead Mines, and then you just go run. Uh, well, I guess you can't. You'd still have to travel back to BFD. I think SFK's. The interesting thing is SFK has like some scarier mobs. We were talking about it on the podcast yesterday and Anthal brought it up, but Odo the Blind Watcher, the, mm -hmm. the boss in SFK that over time slowly enrages more and, and more. He gets more and more enraged stacks. This is another one of the mobs where if you're under leveled, you're doing low DPS to him, then over time he gets stronger and eventually he can start one shotting you. You're going to have to start pulling him to kind of like a semi evade spot potentially. Yeah, I, and we're going to see some really cool tech. I don't want to give any spoilers away, but we're going to see some really, really cool tech in BFD today. Um, oh, absolutely. I actually cannot wait for, <laughs> for the viewers to see what some of these teams have cooked up for BFD to min-max the speed in that dungeon. Um, yeah, although I will say, Winky, I'm pretty excited to see uh, some tech, particularly in routing and potential skips that could be used in SFK. So while we do have trash requirements in place in every dungeon, mm -hmm. for this first circuit, they're pretty low. Uh, especially given how long we could end up uh, actually focusing on travel time since these guys don't have mounts yet. Uh, so, you know, we've got a big opportunity for teams to be pulling off in any dungeon some pretty cool, interesting skips, but also ones that are hard to pull off. You know, Sarth, I heard you mention even in Deadmines, probably the first dungeon for 90% of these teams, a couple of jumps, you know, could spell a uh, pretty immediate death <laughs> for teams if, if they're not careful. Yeah, it's it's definitely going to be really risky. There's a couple places where their jumps can happen and uh People that usually watch my stream might know I'm a little bit notorious for failing some jumps. It, it happens. I got a new keyboard that the space bar works on. But if anyone falls, that means they could easily die. Teams cannot run out of these dungeons. So people need to know that there's no like place to escape. There, you can jump on like a little evade spot and like un -aggro all of the mobs. But if you over aggro too many things, you cannot run out. Once you've entered in, you literally don't have the opportunity to run out. So if one person dies, they can't just sub someone in right away. They're running and finishing the dungeon with four people, which really slows down their time. I think with dead mines in particular, you still can clear it with the four people if you go and pull Van Cleef to kind of a reset -y spot. But I just think it slows down the group so much and people won't be able to like then catch up to every other group that's just now you have five people doing dps and they're pushing through it so i i, I kind of this is the perfect for leading into this actual question i wanted to bring up was um mm -hmm. they the teams are set up as teams of six and not teams of five that means yes. every team has a reserve character they have a reserve person that will be stepping in should someone die only do you want to go over the the actual like rules written down for the the sixth member when can you swap in a sixth member on your team when can you uh can you do it mid-run 
for instance yeah, is this something you can do absolutely and Sarth, mm-hmm. by the way i uh sent you a dm for a potential interview we might want to do okay perfect. Um, so yeah so teams can ha- sign up with up to six players of course you know you're only bringing five people into any dungeon uh, but what these six players offer is a chance to substitute, which is allowed in between any dungeon. So once you get finished with uh, dead mines and you're on your way to Wailing Caverns, you can say uh, swap out your uh, mage because you wanted some AOE, and you know swap in a rogue uh, because you're focused more on single target for a boss like Verdon. Uh, you can make a change like this um, between every single dungeon. But of course, that person who gets subbed in needs to complete at least one dungeon with their team before being swapped out again. Yeah, so teams are six people, but the 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 do you see any teams really doing any subs today? Before we bring in in this first interview, do also I'm very curious, what do you think of like some of the, the best compositions? And maybe it'll be a good one to ask him as well. But we see a lot of the teams having kind of the same group composition almost every team having a hunter a lot of teams bring in a druid a lot of teams bring in a warrior and then it's kind of a difference between like priest and and like some warlocks here some mages what do you think are some of the strongest classes or what do you think a a composition we're going to see today is going to be absolutely so i mean to start off 30 out of the 35 teams we're going to see play today have a mage that's 86 percent of teams 83% 83% of teams have a hunter, just 29, one less. Um, you know, so these are two pretty popular classes that we'll see today. You know, following them, we've got 25 rogues, uh, accounting for 71% of the teams, 23 paladins, 96% of alliance teams are running a paladin. 96%? Uh, there's, only, there's, only, there's one team not running a paladin on alliance. Uh, it's I'm drawing a blank on which team it is, but I'll find it for us. Oh, my uh, so God. While, while then, you do that, though, what's... Only what's the reason why can't why can't I make a team for hardcore all stars today and have five mages? Well, well, that's very fair. First reason why you can't make a, a team today is because you're not Tommy Salami, the fastest speedrunner in the world. For True. Wow. Uh, so getting up to level 22 or, or even close to be able to uh, finish these dungeons will be pretty dang hard for you. Um, but the big reason is that each team can only have one of each class. Uh, so you can't be stacking, you know, five mages. Uh, going into these dungeons for the AoE cleave. Uh, players also can't swap uh, classes. Once they pick a dungeon, they are locked in um, for the entirety of the world tour. So the, the characters they chose at registration are, you know, the class, uh, same with professions. They can't swap professions um, at any point during this whole competition, uh, starting today all the way through May 13th, our grand finale. Okay, so I, I'm i interested because it... This this is a circuit event, right? And these dungeons yeah. are going to be ran all the way to level 60. So it's really interesting to me to see the dynamic of team composition now. Which teams chose to prioritize getting the most points out of the lower level dungeons like Dead Mines, Well and Caverns? But which teams are playing more for the long run, saying these classes might be more beneficial in BRD? Right, yes. my shaman, my shaman is gonna be dropping wind fury in Scarlet Monastery, right? Yeah, uh, and, and we might see that power dynamic shift a little bit over the the coming weeks and months of doing this uh, hardcore all stars event. It's actually super duper exciting. I think today we're gonna just see mages and hunters pumping. I, I think that's the real like the difference maker. There is, I think that we have uh mages mages become so much more powerful after this first circuit actually uh what level do you get blizzard back in the day 26 28 20 is it 24 22 24 i think it's 22 are they getting it in this in yeah are they getting it in uh in this run so so players are expected to hit 23 probably 24 for their last dungeon the big question will be um if they take the time to go train spells because yes. everything you do outside of dungeons is 20 time that you're not spending 20 to, oh 20 okay i wow. googled yeah, it yeah they will have it they will have thank it. you thank you wowhead yeah well that's exciting but yeah still for any other spells you know that you might be getting at 24 teams are gonna have to make the decision is this upgrade you know this uprank this new spell druids uh unlocking decurs for example for sfk you know is it worthwhile for me to go train uh, and tack on that extra travel time for my team. 
And yeah. why are we seeing people start at level 22 and a half right now? Yeah, That's so they're starting only, at level yeah. 22 and a half, um, mm -hmm. kind of for two reasons. Um, one, uh, well, the ba the biggest one is uh, that we wanted to make sure teams were experiencing kind of a range of, of dungeon experiences. Starting in Deadmines and Wailing Caverns at level 22 is pretty comfy. Uh, you know, you're, you're at Gift level itself. with or Gift a level itself. higher Gift than... Itself. The Gifted end sub. bosses. Gifted so it's going to be Gifted green sub. mobs. It's going to be, sub. Um, sub. you know, yellow mobs. But when we start getting into SFK, you know, while they'll start with green mobs, they're going to end up fighting an orange mob with Arugal. And for uh, Akumai, the final boss in BFD, that'll be four levels above them at level 28. Um, yeah, that know, guy's we're, crazy. We're seeing not only, you know, four <laughs> dungeons, but four dungeons really ramping up in difficult, get difficulty for them. And this kind of structure is going to be replicated in each of the five circuits that we face, or I should say the first four circuits. Uh, given the last circuit, uh, they're going to enter at 57 or 59.75 and actually ding 60 uh, in front of us during the circuit. Yeah, so that... That'll be really exciting. The, at, the, at the end, they have to plan also, like, where did they start? Because once they hit level 60, then they need to go train and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We yeah, might not, we might not you see might, you. You might not want to train, depending on your we, class. We That's might not true. see that many teams hit 60, you guys. I think there's going to be like four teams that hit 60 at max. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a big feat to, to not only perform well in these circuits, but actually to level from 1 to 16. Classic era, 1x experience levels without ever dying. Yeah, that's the hard part. It's I think later in, later in the so series. Long. Leveling takes so incredibly long. And you just mentioned that. And, and something that I think is really important is that leveling genuinely takes forever in without any season of mastery leveling XP buffs. It, it takes so long. And if anyone yeah, dies all the six. way up, everybody has to make it. And it's all hardcore players. Yeah, five or six days of gameplay on average. Um, and yeah, just tacking on the fact that you are not allowed to die or you have to start over from level one, you know, out in Cold Ridge, out in Durotar. Uh, that's, that's some Anybody high stakes. Rocket boots and yes, and we do have uh, Jerome, if you want to drag Jerome in. Uh, yeah, he's in here. Oh, I just got in here out of nowhere. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jerome. <laughs> Jerome. Is, is that never been hit, Jerome? Uh, I've been hit a, a lot of times, according to whatever happened yesterday. <laughs> Jerome, can we talk? Can we talk about your eyebrows, my friend? Uh, yeah. So I, I stupidly made a bet that if I died uh, in this tournament, that I would lose my eyebrows, and then I died immediately. So yeah, didn't really think that through at all. I'm not gonna lie; it kind of looks good. Oh, you know, my mom looked at it and she thought it'd be awful, and she was like, "You know what? Maybe you had too many eyebrows." So yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe too many yeah. eyebrows to begin with. Can, so what's it what, what does it feel like i've never shaved my eyebrows completely off but does it feel weird when you touch yeah, it, it with feel, your hands it, it feels really weird and looking in the mirror is kind of terrifying like you wouldn't expect what you're seeing you know have you gone yeah. on, on a walk do you get like a cold area right there that's never been cold before okay so i just i'm never gonna wear anything other than a beanie so i actually have a beanie i'll show you <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm excited you, for if this. If you start sweating, does it get in your eyeballs? Like, how do you play? If you go on like a jog or play, a I guess sport? like this, right? And now, now they oh, don't perfect. even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, I can just do this in public. Mm -hmm. But I was gonna go to CVS and or not, you know, whatever unsponsored uh, drugstore we can get and get like a <laughs> sharpie or something, and I can just sharpie them back on. So, oh, that would be even better. To be honest, I think that yeah. it would, it would, yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard, I hate to say this, you're, you're probably not going to hear this either, but I've heard yeah. through the grapevine um, that eyebrows are actually some of the longest, like, time, like, to regrow. Like, it, they take the longest to regrow out of any hair on your body. Your yeah, eyebrows. Not, on, not only that, but if you have, like, let's say you, you may not have, like, the best hair growth, they could just mm -hmm. never grow back, right? It's kind of just, like, a random yeah. luck. Some people yeah. have never had them grow back. Well, I will say, it. knowing you, it, it looks as though you're going to have Kind of no problem risk. with them growing back. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I actually just you're, you're I not the short gamble. on hair here. <laughs> I took the gamble. I I think that the scary part is it, it's it's crazy because like you never know, but yeah, you you you're gonna grow it back. It would be interesting if they grow back different than they grew the originally. And, oh you know, yeah, what if they grow back in a different <laughs> shape? And you're angry at all times now with this little. Thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> the the real no warlock look. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, you know, you know, I, the, the worst part about dying, though, is that I did all this prep work. Like, we did all these the dungeons. We, like, practiced them all. And we we practiced the run on the Wrath PTR, right? And it was just no problem because we were level 80. And then we just we just go to do it, and we just died immediately. Well, since you can't do it anymore, maybe you can give us some insight. What was your routing between the all right, dungeons? So yes. we, we initially had it Crossroads Hearthstone, and then we were going to go Dead Mines, and then Wailing Caverns, and then BFD. And then we were going to do SFK at the end. And then we realized, wait a minute, we got to get the blood shards that everybody's doing, right? Yes, so we moved the Hearthstone so to Camp Taraho, and we were going to do Dead Mines and then go back to Wailing Caverns. And then hopefully the Hearthstone be back up. So that was kind of like a debate, right? Would the Hearthstone be back up to like come out of Wailing Caverns? And then you just fly to BFD, right? And then after that, you just do SFK at the end, which I, I think that's got to be the fastest route, right? Well, you so can always SFK just drop last, group, right? BFD first. You, yeah, so you can you can get a hearth at the end of the dungeons, which helps yeah. you. It allows you kind of like freedom of deciding wherever you go, you'll have a hearth up. Technically. Yeah, and I, I maybe on, on Wrath, I was like getting that 30 minute hearthstone. So I wasn't really sure exactly when mm. it was going to come back. Yeah, because in Wrath, you also, those Murlocs that, that killed you guys on, on Wrath are no longer elite. As far as I know, as yeah, well. Yeah, they did. They obviously didn't aggro because we were eighty, and I just I didn't really think it through because I just had like a my you know, you ever been told something you just kind of think that's the way it is. Like, Dude, I every just, day, like, you just jump every off, day, just jump off the zeppelin. You're good. Yeah, just swim. Yeah, I had a, a two year old memory of getting to dead mines, and it's just like I just pieced it together, and it was just totally the wrong thing, right? Yeah, like like just a sketch artist, like just drawing completely the wrong person. And no one in the group was like, I know the way to get to Dead Mines, the safest way. You're like, yeah, we have to swim because there's there's <laughs> those, there's Murlocs somewhere in the water, but it's a lot better than dealing with the crocodiles, right? The worst part is that they looked up to me to give them the right advice and lead uh, them to, to Dead Mines. And I just took them in the, the worst possible way. So how and, much time yeah. would you say you lost as a team with with a full team wipe? How much time okay, did you so spend we, on those characters with, with fishing and things the, like that? The weirdest yeah. part is we only lost two people of the five. And so, yes, there was controversy because we were all going together, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I understand the controversy there. We were not intending to fight anything. So we were not we mm -hmm. were not set up. We were not in a Discord. I was trying to make it so it was, like, you know, kind of legit. And, and, I mean, you know, running to dungeons as your group is totally... Yeah, I mean, it was a little... That. A lot of people are saying it's a little sketchy that there were five of us there, but... I mean, you can see when things went bad. It's not like our tank. I mean, I'm not. Everything's good. But I, I, I went to heal. You know, the healer gets the aggro, and then you know they kind of all got out of there. But I did not. <laughs> are you guys? Re are you pushing for it? Are you going to level up another character so you can make it into the circuit number two? Absolutely. So I think that the thing about this first circuit, I'm just lying to myself. Maybe that the points in the first circuit don't matter. And this is only expertise, obviously. But my understanding is maybe the the last couple circuits are more important. Mm -hmm. And and just surviving is the biggest thing. So we're going to come back the best comeback story ever. And the funny <laughs> part is pretty much every team in the tournament today is going to be doing this, too. So, I mean, there's a lot of yeah. people who are going to die and it, it'll just honestly be a lot better if they just if they just have that mindset of just coming back for next circuit. Yeah, I think one thing we're not going to see so much and, and that's one thing we kind of miss and we'll try to break it down before the runs as we kind of see in between the new circuits is when people die outside of the dungeon speed runs because that's going to happen a lot last night multiple people died some groups lost two people and re-leveled both of them some groups had to drop out of the circuit not just your group like multiple people yeah. have been dying and these people a lot of people are min maxing so hard especially with like fishing that they're moving around areas like Tenaris as like a druid and fishing where all of the mobs are skull level mobs. They're like 20 levels higher than you and you just yeah. have to dodge them so you can get one tap of a fishing node and then wait like 15 minutes yep. to get one more tap of a fishing node for a, for a less than 1% chance of a better item to bring oh, into these brutal. dungeons. Yeah. Well, and, and even where, you know, one misclick can put you in combat with you know level 43 44 turtle yeah it's just i mean i'm not gonna close. say it but i feel like there's probably a lot of teams that are bringing in a little bit of a high level character to do that you know the sneaking one in i'm just saying it is definitely what if you're really serious about this tournament you would probably do that i was gonna say it's cheating is gonna be something that we need to really keep an eye on i mean i'm sure it's impossible to cover all your bases right 
we're just oh, yeah. doing the best we can as a grassroots community to make sure that the integrity of the challenge is uh upheld right right um and it, there i do have bets on on a certain team Cheating? that's very likely to cheat Oh. I don't want to throw the pot here, but as a priest, right, I find it almost impossible to kill any mob that's more than, like, three levels above me. So I just, maybe I'm just playing priest wrong, but if you see, like, there's certain characters with gear, you're like, how did they get that gear, you know? Yeah, how did people, they kill that uh -huh. level 29 elite mob at, as, as a priest or, you know? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. you, you could, in a one-life challenge, you could say the same thing about uh, warriors just trying to fight a mob at level. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. Warriors, warriors, and hardcore. All you know is like everything either dies instantly. You get like three crits in classic, and it's dead. Or you get four parries, and all of a yeah, sudden back, back you're back one there. crit away from dying. And you're like, "What is going on? This is a normal enemy." There is a team today called the Missing Diplomats. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, you guys, if when we're, when we're not looking, they're switching, they're swapping their weapons to fiery weapon swap macros, and they're bringing out this enchants at low level and they're just pumping shit down. I'm telling you that team is someone a team to keep your eye on for the cheaters. Wow. That's just me. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing, right? I, I mean, right. well what I, I have to say, say that this is all is that, not true. What I will say is that uh in some efforts to make sure that folks are, you know, keeping to the spirit of this challenge here, uh we require them to record not only the entirety of each circuit. So every single player today, even if they're not streaming, is recording the circuit in full. Um, but also anytime they're out in the world leveling uh, and they're doing a red quest or, you know, in a situation where they need to be in combat with red mobs at all or school mobs, uh, that's another time when they are required to be recording. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously we can't uh, be catching every single instance of uh, or, you know, they don't they might not submit every single recording that they're supposed to. Um, but we definitely have a lot of people out in the world, over 200 competitors out in the world. Who are actively playing actively recording uh so we've got a lot of eyes out there and uh, also actively watching everybody else what they're doing exactly that's remember been, that uh, really... there was a mage right that got three different blues from chess and everybody would have said that's a cheater but then you have these really annoying clips of this guy just opening chess <laughs> and there's just like here's another world drop here's another one here's another one yep. and it's just like okay i guess i guess it's legit we have yeah, it's, the it's, proof it's, it's, it's an interesting thing, the dynamic. I've never seen a dynamic for in Classic WoW um, where the meta is to go fishing. Um, and it's really interesting being watching these teams interact, right? They're running around in the zones and they're fishing to try and get better loot and they're trying to steal these fishing pools from each other, right? They're trying to get the most casts in they they're sharing how many how many times they've casted a fishing pole on their character. We have autobiographer running for anyone who's wondering. So every character is required to have autobiographer so that we can make sure that they're um, following all the rules, etc. But it also tracks things like how many times have you jumped, how many times have you cast your fishing rod, yeah. uh, and it's been exciting to watch these like. It's almost 9, like gambling casts of it's fishing. It's straight up like CS:GO loot crates, dude. Like they're they're out here. Everyone's fishing things up, opening them up, sharing like, "What? Look what a loot I got!" Ha ha ha. And I'm not even sure it's going to make that big of a difference when Smite just runs up and one shots somebody in Dead Mines today. Well, especially when everybody's been getting so excited, like especially the hunters I've heard getting so excited to find, you know, like a an eight agi two handed axe, you know, a yeah. an eight agi set of pants or something. And I'm just thinking, like, with all this agi stacking, like, are you not prepared just to take aggro and get one shot with no stam stacked up? Right. Especially early on and your pet doesn't really over aggro you yet in classic. If people don't remember in classic, it's very easy to pull aggro and hunters are especially in these earlier kind of like circuits they'll do a lot of the damage in the group whenever you're under leveled hunters are the notorious ones that can still pump because that's just how ranged weapons kind of work casters can't hit anything they're just wanding because they can't do any damage but hunters are just doing all of the damage and they're going to fully pull all the aggro and tanks are going to have resists on taunts I'm curious to see if anyone ends up actually over aggroing, especially at the end if in B BFD, if they over aggro the last boss when he's four levels higher than you, five levels higher than you, and end up just getting two, three shot. Mm -hmm. What do you think the most dangerous 
dungeon because people are dying today. There, there's no if ands or buts, right? We're gonna watch people die today in the game. Absolutely. What do you think the most dangerous dungeon is today? Do you think it's BFD? I kind of think I'm leaning towards SFK being the most scary dungeon to run. I, th I think it's BFD. There's that part near the end. You got the sort of walkway area, and there's a huge amount of trash required. And if you look at the rules, right. A lot mm -hmm. of trash required. You have to kill all that. A lot of people, if you double or triple pull that, you're probably going to die if you're at level. I think it's really unsafe. And I think Dead Mines is like, there's not going to be a lot of deaths because a, the, the main deaths would come from that ship, right? Then the yes. ship, if everyone's 22, you're not really going to have problems. And then Wailing Caverns, obviously there's, you know, there's so many social pa packs and it's such a long dungeon, but I think these hardcore people, they're not going to die in Wailing Caverns. It's got to be BFD. I think Verdon might go poorly if someone pulls threat right that, if you've got a clothy that pulls threat, one to pull threat yeah, yeah that's, yeah. that's yeah. Yeah. under leveled think, uh, though yeah i think a lot of this just depends on team comp to be honest like I, I think sfk looks a lot more scary if you don't have a plan for uh decursing mm -hmm. you know, you're getting the weapon skill uh and like magic skill curses from the uh, guards and officers uh, you're getting the gift of Arogal from the Sons of Arogal, which is a five minute curse where every 60 seconds you're taking like 180 damage. Oh uh, my just like God. clockwork. Like that's that's not just a ticking time bomb, that's five ticking time bombs. Uh, you know, and and I've seen hardcore deaths. I remember Graze for Days and Cargo's uh practicing for uh gosh, what was it? Practicing for uh Road to Ragnaros season of mastery launch. Yeah. They were they were in a um an SFK run and Grace didn't have a decurse and they ended up dying exactly to gift Vargal. Oh, that's rough. Uh, well, I mean, like when it's you're trying so to pump, like, when you're in the mindset of speed running, you're not thinking about, you know, this curse and how much damage it's going to. You're just, like, Oh, just some debuff. Uh, but you got to realize like at this level, when you are level 23, 24 going into SFK, you know, 400, 500 damage is damn near most of your health if not all of it and and entire group wide so the healer when you're taking damage from anything else at the same time and it ticks it's terrifying i wonder if anyone actually specifically wrote like a weak order to track that tick if they don't have a decursor because that could be a, a safe bet but there's one thing that that winky mentioned briefly but one thing i think that's going to be huge is if they get p upgrades in these dungeons in classic, obviously, in, in any version that we have right now, you have to level weapon skill. But in classic, weapon skill takes forever to, to level up. Do you think mm -hmm. people are prepared enough that they've leveled up all of their weapon skills in case they get any any loot drops that are something different? Absolutely. Nobody, nobody has done that, I don't think. I don't I, think I, if, done that. If I, Jerome, if I was on a team of five people and we were discussing things in comms and you're telling me you're playing a warrior right you, and your weapon skill isn't leveled but you're putting in nine hours a day fishing i'm going to tell you to reprioritize because that cruel barb might drop right the drops that we see in the dungeons are going to be massive for the player power on these teams the team with a cruel barb drop is actually kind of poised to just pump even harder in the next dungeon right yes rogues um, oh my god that thing is so unbelievable for rogues in this dungeon or in these it, dungeons it's insane these people are fishing right now. I'll put it in context for you. They're, they are fishing for like a 12 DPS dagger with four Agi on it, right? Like that's the best in slot that you can get in a, in a hardcore setting without doing dungeons. If a Cruel Barb drops, it is a massive, massive upgrade. What is it? 15 DPS with 15 attack power on top of it? Yes. It's incredible. It'll, be, it'll literally be the best in slot rogue weapon probably till level 30. Um, which is insane. Also, yeah, imagine SFK with the trash drops. The trash loot in SFK That's has the crazy. potential. If anyone gets the twink drops from, from SFK, yeah. I was thinking about that. If they get Shadow that. Fang or the Assassin Blade, oh my god, would that be the god? That would be the run. I would say screw it, team. I'm sorry, I have to continue my hardcore character by itself just to finish the run uh, because <laughs> you, it's die. too blessed, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just too blessed. You just can't not do it. Um, but it is interesting, Sarth. We have about five minutes or four minutes until we're getting started here. Yes. Um, and I'm close. watching some POVs of some of these people. And it look at the crowd. I don't know if you can see the crowd of people at the Westfall I Dead Minds Meeting Stone. 
I want to know um, how they all got there without dying. Did they have a secret that we, they, we missed out they, on? Or they, they took the Undercity Zeppelin down instead of the uh, the Orgrimmar one. So did they, they all got a different different memo than we did, huh? Yes, they all yeah. got a different memo than you did. So it, it's looking like Deadmines is just the de facto starting point. Point. No one that I can see, and, and maybe I'm. If, if someone else is watching the the P, different POVs, anyone in chat, if you're interested in watching different POVs, you can go to hardcoreallstars.com. I'll link it in the chat here for you guys. Yes. Slash event um, page. And yeah, if you just click on events or do the slash event page, um, it'll pull up any stream. You can see any any stream, all the different teams. Uh, you can click all of the Twitch links to to keep you know keep along. If anyone sees another team starting other than dead mines somewhere else i would love to see it um, because right now it looks like dead mines is the de facto meta of what Absolutely. these teams have decided i also like how we're watching Shobek here who's cosplaying as Falco someone yeah and, and, and it looks like we are just someone what is like he we are just three minutes out here yeah, we're getting ready to to see this all go down. It's actually going to be so incredibly exciting. Before we get started, I do want to say really quickly, Jerome, thank you for coming onto the cast with us. We really, oh, really appreciate it. Uh, we're sorry that that you had your death that you did, but we're really excited oh, yeah. to see what you guys and your team puts up in the second circuit. We're Good not we're not going to give up. We're not giving up. It's going to be so much fun to watch all of this. I might I might have to pop in later on, you know, see see how the festivities are going. I'll be watching, obviously, the whole time. So Let's this is so much it. fun. Everybody's put in, you know, 30 plus hours of prep. So this is every every death is going to be so meaningful. I just can't wait to watch. Love you, dog. Thank you for being here. Good luck on on re leveling that character and we'll we'll see you soon. And if you want to hop back in um, later, just ping only and only can bring you back in. All right, Absolutely. sounds great, guys. Enjoy the event. Yeah, absolutely. And, you, as, and as we are right now, one minute and ten seconds out from starting this, I'm actually going to hop down into the um, into the channel where we've got all of our team captains. We've got 35 team captains waiting for the starting okay, pistol, if you will. Uh, so yes. I'm going to go down there just for one minute uh, and let them know when they can start. Uh, but I will be right back. You too. Only while they while only does that, Sarth. Give me your team pick. What is the team that you think is going to win today? And oh maybe my. you don't even have to tell me why. Just give me a team. Oh Throw it out there. My. Okay, so I I really love rooting for the boys. And I think the team of Cargos, Grace for Days, Tactics, Bobka, they've just... They've, they've kind of spearheaded the entire scene of hardcore and a massive shout out to everybody who's put so much effort into the entire hardcore scene and the hardcore community. Um, and I think their team has a really good strategy, a really solid strategy for today's circuit, which is their team is literally called Team No CC. They just are gonna be pressing W the entire time, running forward the entire time, trying to do as much damage and moving quickly. And I think that that helps as well as being Horde and getting those those buffs. But I think that helps for this circuit. Having everyone with engineering, you can get rough they are off. or dense diamond. Oh, we're going. Here we we're go. going. Off to the races, baby. I was going to say, sorry, th that, so you, you went with no CC. Yes. I'm actually going to go with C and next circus. That's who... That's that's the team. That's Parla, Calamity, Ompi, Ellen Degen, a.k.a. Wonderful, a.k.a. Punches, and Peterson. These... These teams are hardcore speedrunning extraordinaires. We, of course, we all know Parla, right? Everyone knows Parla. Yeah. Uh, Calamity is is such a sleeper. Ellen Degen is such a sleeper. These people are going to absolutely pump. And we're going to see some things that we might not see anywhere else. Oh, now, what absolutely. we're seeing right well, here... Some, some of these teams have done dozens of hours of PTR. Uh, so I'm very excited to see that. Only. Yes. If you do the logout skip to the front front of the dungeon right now, since we have officially started the event, are you DQ'd? You are DQ'd. The do they know that? Has, the yes, they do. The, okay. The, yeah, no. The the circuit has started. You are not allowed to log out uh, at all. Um, Perfect. Yeah. This is Although exciting. I, Look I, at this I will group say, of people I, I running the dead mines. This is so I, I nice. I can guarantee that everybody knows the rules, but I can guarantee you that that is in the rules and has been spoken about on multiple occasions. So it looks like we're we're just seeing an unparalleled amount of people just spam running into dead mines. We have teams like I'm watching Grace for Days' POV right now. They are 
deleting these non-elite mobs. I mean, yes. these are green non-elite mobs, right? They're already using, they have dynamites already being used. Cargos is already spamming them. He's using melees. They literally Absolutely. almost destroy. And this is why I think they have a very solid beginning is they're moving very quickly. And like this dungeon yeah. will be over so fast for them. I'm curious yes. exactly well, how long. Yeah, and they're they might be called Team No so No CC, but really they should be called Team Press W. Exactly. You know, I don't think we are ever going to see these this team stop. They've got uh, their healer Dustbone, the shaman, has uh, one hundred mana potions on them. Uh, even Cargos, their hunter, has thirty mana potions. They've all got drink water. Yeah, this is something. Stop. This is something that that uh, the viewers need to recognize as well. Re re remind yourself. These, all of these characters have been leveled over the last two weeks, basically, mm -hmm. with hardcore uh, rule set, meaning they cannot trade with each other. They have to do everything solo self-found. They, they're in a group, but their group can't really help each other in the open world. Um, they have been grinding. They are twinking their characters out at these leveling brackets per circuit, um, mm -hmm. all by themselves, right? Extremely There's no auction twink. house. You can't buy things on the auction house on blood sale anyway. It doesn't. There's no one selling anything because it's basically a hardcore server. Um, yeah, absolutely. Ompy's group it, just AOEing things. One thing I do want to point out to viewers that that probably don't know this, but the first boss of the the dead mines, he can drop that amazing hammer, um, or he can drop a not so great item. You can actually tell what he's gonna drop by what he's holding in his hands. It's something that most people don't know, but whatever yeah. weapon he's using is actually what he's gonna drop. And we're already seeing from Ompy's group, the team you said you think is gonna take it, see you next circus, uh, they're already using things like free action potions, because this team is actually all, they're all alchemists. They're, they're all, all alchemy, alchemy except, alchemists. For, except for their rogue. So I'm pretty sure that they all went alchemy so that they basically have tools that a rogue already has. Things yes. like yes, you know, they're, they're doing it for the nifty the, stopwatch the play. Yeah, exactly. The nifty they, stopwatch, the uh, speed pot, the invis pot, uh, yes. all of these different things. Uh, you know, the uh, limited invulnerability, free action potion. Uh, you know, the rogue naturally has and they're pretty extensive toolkit a lot of these get out of jail can, can we talk about how we are three minutes into the invent and it's it took the time of running into the dungeon mm -hmm. and we're already fighting sneed oh absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean if you go over Unreal. to uh i i think that you've got Leland's uh or Leanne's uh stream already open they're already fighting sneed shredder too this is actually a team uh that has no tank um when I uh, asked them yesterday, you know, to confirm their roster, they said, we are running no tank. We're expecting the Paladin and Mage to have aggro most of the time, but we're just cycling uh, between different uh, target dummies the entire time. All of them are engineers just cycling one after another. Sneed's already going halfway down. Uh, okay, this is definitely a team that's going to be Vegas. right up there in the running. Absolutely. The and, and another thing to remember, too, is the, the profession locks, right? The, you have to remember this is hardcore. It's a plan for future circuits. People are doing things like alchemy because they need to get a uh, nifty stopwatch, which requires an alchemy uh, item to be made to complete the quest. So these teams that you see that are full stacking alchemy right now are 100% planning for the long run to get nifty stopwatch, help them do their old circuit, you know, things like that much, much faster. You can you can time your sprints. You can just basically pump the whole way through. Um, one concern I had with the dungeons, and it doesn't look like it's being that that big of a problem yet, is these massive pulls and the healing. Oh, um, right now we actually see Team um, Calamity's team. I can't remember the name right now. Yeah. They uh, actually yeah, just did. Yes, they actually oh just gosh. did an evade spot. So they pulled everything. They're all jumping to an evade spot. Calamity came out with the divine shield to keep everyone alive. So they bubbled, started healing everybody. We're jumping down on the chain to reset mobs in the foundry, and it looks like they're just going to use this as a as a potential skip straight, straight down. Straight down on Gilnan. This is amazing. Yeah, and we do have for anyone wondering, there are trash requirements, but even with the trash requirements, they're not like aggressive where you have to clear the entire dungeon. So you can't skip everything, but there is quite a bit you can get through and skip. And this does yes. keep things a lot safer if they deal with it all this way. They do need to kill that mob running away. Oh my gosh, they do oh. have a lot so of things like they're pulling. It looks like they have pulling. got one extra mob pulled that they really didn't plan for. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit interesting here. Yeah, Calamity is 50% mana, but they should be fine here. Yeah, this is a team that's run 
pretty much every single dungeon uh, today four or five times on PTR. Uh, so they, they leveled up characters uh, on era and actually used those for PTR, but they know exactly where every mob is here, exactly how every patrol works. Yes. Uh, so even one misplay like that, where they just let a runner get a little too far, you know, that's cost yes. them time that they didn't plan for. And, and if you look at Calamity's point of view, instead of Ompies, you can actually see the weak aura for the trash requirements in full effect. On the right hand side of her screen, you can see oh, that excellent. the the trash requirements are there. They get greened out. It's actually an amazing week car. They get greened out when you've completed the, tr the required trash and it and it reds out something that you've potentially not fulfilled yet, yeah, um, so which is really, left. really cool. Yeah, so they saw, look, they were missing one craftsman. They're pulling it up. Mm -hmm. They're going to drag that with them as they move on, get ready that to, uh, skip, to leave Gilnid's blacksmith area. That <laughs> skip, in my opinion, is an alliance exclusive skip because in order to pull that off, you either have to have target dummy or a paladin to bubble to tank all of those mobs to get well, until your entire team is in the evade spot. Eventually, oh, this, um, this so that group, although I will huge. say I do know that um, Team No CC had been talking about doing it as a horde team. Yes, but it doesn't look like they did it. If I pull up Cargo's POV, oh, yep. it doesn't look like they did that full skip itself, but they did now pull Gilnit as well. We are seeing that uh, Calamity's group kind of being ahead. It looks like Cargo's actually just got attacked from behind. He does pull extra mobs that I don't think they meant to pull those engineers, which can be a little intimidating. He does have aggro on the boss, which is like we were saying, just hunters just love to get aggro and tanks kind of can't pull it back, although they do have enough mana to keep the healing rolling and they are running with their target dummies. They have masterworked target dummies at level 22. Ooh. At level this 22. This is huge. This is huge. Oh, I'm, I'm, I hate to I hate to bring attention away from from Cargo's screen right. I know it's a, a very intense fight, but the skip that we're seeing, they we're watching. I'm I'm locked in to Ompi and Calamity's team right now, oh, in Parla. Absolutely. They they are doing the skip to the boat. They're skipping straight to Smite here, leaving the entire pirate bridge basically all the way up, still alive. Looks like they've met most of their trash requirements. And they're they're gonna fight Smite here. This is the fastest dead mines I've ever seen in my life. This is like yeah. it's nine minutes into the run. I do want to say, uh, Leanne's team is actually ahead of Team No CC. So uh, Hellfire Club or uh, Club, as they're called, um, planning oh, later are. in these circuits to use a, a Warlock tank uh, is actually ahead of them. But I did just scroll on to uh, Gertash's stream on Team. Uh, what can you do? Uh, w C Y D. Mm -hmm. It's actually uh, a guild called Grizzly over from Wrath who decided to throw their hat in the ring. They actually started in Wailing Caverns and they just got to Cobra in their first boss. Uh, oh, so amazing. Like they're doing uh, a ton of work out there. A completely different strategy here, um, but loving to see how quickly they're going. They just got a Prospector's Axe to drop in Parla's group. That is a That's huge a, draw for either. Uh, who's going to take that parlor? I mean, there's a warrior, there's warrior paladin, and then there's Peters and could even melee weave with it. I mean, that's a lot of strength. That's a 17 DPS two hand axe. That's massive. They're pulling huge here too. Are using more faps as well. They, they're just consistently pulling. This this group is blasting through this dungeon way faster than I even expected. I, I can't believe this, man. I think they're going to do another skip too. Look at them going for more jump skips. Yes, yes. They might honestly be just trying to get Van Cleef Cookie down and then clean up the rest of the pirates on the way. They only need 13 more pirates, though, and it looks like they might be able to get that just getting up to Van Cleef. Mm -hmm. This is so clean. They are moving so quickly through here. Oh, man, this is... So, okay, we also see teams like Metagoblin, for instance. Metagoblin is... um, What's their team name? I can't remember off the top of my head. Um... But essentially, they, I like to see this too, where there, some teams, you guys, this is a long, long event. We are going to be doing at weekend races every weekend for all, like what, the next 11 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes going slow and steady, you guys, you don't have to get first place in circuit one to win this event, right? All you need to do is get some points. I mean, if you come in after circuit one and, and pump really hard, you win every event afterwards, you could still technically win the event. Mm-hmm. Yes. It, I like to see teams like what Metagoblin is doing right now. Uncultured Swine is the name of the team. Uh, take it slow, steady. Just completing these dungeon runs as a team of people who live through it oh, is, well, is good the... enough to make it to the later circuits. And, and the less deaths you have, 
more chances you have of accruing points where teams are going to start wiping in these dungeons. Yeah, plus if you do wipe, you're walking away from the circuit with zero points. Uh, and, you know, and you're starting over trying to go to the next circuit with fresh level ones uh, really at square one here. So, yeah, you know, teams focusing on taking, uh, you know, a middle number of points here in these first couple circuits uh, and focusing on staying alive. You know, that's a it, pretty good strat to make sure that you can really uh, come at it strong later in the game. It, it yes. looks like our it looks like our team, our, our parlor team over here is the first team to be fighting They're pulling Van, uh, Cleef Van Cleef with, and, and Van with Cleef the, the same other time. boss. Yes. Oh, my God. They're double pulling Greenskin and Van Cleef. They might even jump straight down to Cookie here and, and be done. They only I need think they one do. more. What else do they need on trash? Cruel Barb! They got the Cruel Barb Cruel to Barb, drop. and they need Cruel one Barb. more pirate. What a what massive a run. drop. Oh, oh my god. god. You can see god. that they just, walked, they just dropped straight down, pulled Cookie mid-path. They have the one pirate to spot. get, or shipbuilder, and they grab it. That's Cruel. it. Oh Barb, my Ellen god. Ellen Degen is got to be the ha she has got to be the happiest rogue on the planet Earth oh, right certainly. now. This and is a they, 13 and they get the minute one run. From Cookie. Yeah, oh my I... god, this is the god run. This is literally the god <laughs> run. They, okay, they, they just did a 13 minute dead mines and that's including running to the dungeon. We are what 12 minutes? Yeah, 13 minutes into the they event, got... they just full cleared dead mines. First group to full clear one of the dungeons, and they had absolutely unreal drops. They got uh, prospectors axe, BOE world drop. They got cookies stirring rod and cruel barb. How is it even possible? Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, and now unbelievable they have to run to the, to the next dungeons. We also have on, on Cargo's team, Team No CC, they are glitching out some of the mobs. Uh, I yeah, don't know if they pulled like they might have pulled much. a little bit too much yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of mobs right there, you guys. That is a lot. Now, what they don't need... To, I'm, I'm interested to know. You notice where Graves for Days is positioned right now. It looks like they finally cut on. In order to reset mobs from the wheel as an evade spot, you do have to be on like the back pixel of the wheel. You can't yeah, you be to near the top. Yeah, and, and if you're you've got a large uh, character uh, model like a male torn or something, you actually sometimes need to slash sit or slash lay down yeah. uh, just really? to get out of line of sight. Yes. So it looks like, by the way, uh, in terms of placings right now, we have Calamity's team in the lead. They clearly they just cleared the dungeon at an insane pace. The, the second and third place are is a pretty close shot between Cargo's Grays for Days, um, Team No CC, and we also have Lions teams. Lions teams just pulling green skin as we speak right now, and it's oh they're sending the Hunter pet in to pull Van Cleef while they pull green skin as well, and they're AOE hiding green skin with Blizzard heavy dynamite. They've got their mage putting in a lot of work right now while we they're get just, Van Cleef pulled again, back to them. They're just rotating these target dummies. Yes, and they're rotating engineering. They're they're using the the rank one blizzard to just slow everything down, and they're just massive kiting everything all at once. This and is amazing. This is this is the team that very specifically was like, we have no tank. Mm -hmm. There's the and level got, for everyone. Just everyone just dinged. dings in the middle of a double boss fight. You gotta love that how is amazing big of a mana uh, reservation that gives you. But yeah, I mean, looking, you know, we've got a pretty uh, a pretty tight race here in dead mines but you got to remember you know we've got two teams i'm looking at gertash's stream uh from what can he do mm -hmm. as well as unchained uh coming out Ooh, here from, unchained is a sleeper agent unchained, too. uh has been winning back to back uh hardcore one life pvp events um but they uh them and what can you do are already past scum you know they're looking at a uh, at verdon pretty quick here Wailing Caverns definitely a longer dungeon than Dead Mines, but to be this far, you know they've got to be moving at a clip here. Yeah, fifteen minutes in, and you're already halfway, more than halfway through Wailing Caverns. This is mm -hmm. it's going to be I, interesting I, seeing but, the the strategies here. But it looks like uh, it looks like we also have a blackened Defias armor. No cruel barb for our friends on Lion 8's team. Mm -hmm. It's actually better for them. For 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 that team, they don't have a rogue. They they're not really running yeah, the they, warrior, right? Like oh, they, and they actually they, hadn't even they're running done the Mr. hunter Smite and feral. Yet. Like so, that's so, a better uh, drop. Lane oh, they team. skipped smite. Wow, Hellfire oh, huge pull. Smite to begin with. Huge so, so pull this, with smite. This team already killed Cookie, Van Cleef, and Greenskin. They're actually killing Smite last on their list. And they That's did interesting. Get the routing to get really out of the dungeon. They must be over oh, their horde, right? They 
No, they're not. They must no, be planning to just Hearthstone out of the dungeon. Uh, yeah, they they've got to be Hearthing out. So I think that they are just upright skipping any chance of turning in quest in Sentinel Hill. They're not worried about these upgrades. They just want to get to the next dungeon faster. Yeah, I was going to say that's one thing that we're seeing right now from our our team currently in the lead. Um, they, yeah, they they they, they took the time big upgrades. Yeah, they took the time to go uh, become saviors of Westfall and get their uh, chossies, as you might say. Chossé of Westfall. <laughs> the chossé. My choss my chossé. Also, one thing that we might notice here is all of, they got un unlucky a little bit with the loot here. But if you look at the weak aura, they've killed 31 pirates, right? Pirates, soul, uh, squash mm -hmm. shapers, and shipbuilders. They've actually cool. killed more things than they need to. It looks like they're going to pull and run out of the dungeon, it probably using target dummies. We'll see as we this just happens. saw. We just saw. Team no CC. Cargo's grace for days. Cruel barb drop. No way. Rule barb drop. That's you, two you crew on the Bob, day. Bobka, a multi glad rogue PvP <laughs> on Wrath. By the way, pink parser through and through. He must just be overjoyed. That's their team captain. I know that he. So he has been putting barb. in more more degen sweat levels than I think anybody in this entire competition. That man has over a hundred thousand jumps and ten thousand fishing casts, trying to get absolutely bis loot. Uh, 10,000 fishing, 10, casts. Yeah, that's... fishing casts all to get replaced by a cruel barb what a drop <laughs> i know what a drop that's it honestly that's the biggest thing i i if people notice oh. i wrote oh we're going the... for the hearth so yeah, so hearth. just by the way unchained's team has killed verdon they are already dropping down the hunters running ahead with cheetah trying to go uh start this event a little bit early I have yeah, that's the that's an interesting thing to about whaling caverns, right? For them. Yeah, so to, so to almost yeah, can oh, yeah, 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 I'll link it over to you guys. Yeah, it's an interesting play with whaling caverns because you, you almost want to leave one of your members behind and mm -hmm. four man burden, oh, so that they can immediately start the escort and let your team get back to you. Well, yeah, so to see see to see a team this far through whaling caverns is incredibly impressive. It's a seventeen minute run and counting right now. And there's a lot of ways that they can actually make this um, this escort move a little bit faster. Uh, so in the really similar way that like um, leashing mechanics work, where, you know, uh, if you pull something and um, and, you know, another enemy kind of sees that their their friend needs help, they'll get on you, too. This escort mob actually works in the exact same way, where if you are willing to um, pull and make sure that the escort mobs never gets in combat and never is close enough to you to kind of chain pull with you mm -hmm. that mob will just keep walking otherwise you have to wait for it to fight you have to wait for it to reset back to its position you know a lot of the annoying mechanics we hate about escorts i'm yeah. not gonna lie Do you have to keep the escort mob in like uh view so that it technically it, keeps walking fast yeah so so it's like got to be rendered which is yeah. basically your mini map distance uh so it keeps walking i'm pretty sure I, I could be wrong in the specific number but i'm pretty sure mobs that aren't render in move at about 10 to 25 percent uh normal speed yeah you actually yeah. in speed runs in re uh, like in wrath of lich king and tbc you would actually eyes of the beast to see mobs to make sure that pats render in time like in the middle of pulls or boss enemies so that like you would literally like weave it in to keep things rendered to keep them walking at times it oh, is certainly and it does look like this team is actually they mustn't have done any ptr because the mobs are going to spawn uh into the cave uh, but they're all just sitting right there uh pretty big risk of the the NPC getting into combat here. Um, but hey, you know, the NPC still does some damage. It could end up being useful for them. I'm a little yeah. confused right now. I'm watching Calamity's team, the team that cleared Deadmines the fastest, and what they actually are doing is they're questing. They're going... Oh, they're yeah, doing they're all of the Stormwind the quests to get lined up, and they and now we're finally seeing the Hearthstone come out, which was Ashenvale. Yeah, so, so I think that what they were trying to do uh, is juice out as much possible XP as they can. They are very confident in their ability to get first place in each of these dungeon clears. They want to make sure that when they walk into BFD, if not even SFK, that they are level 24. They can train, they can get those new spells, those new ranks of spells to pump just that much harder. Yeah, I mean, they, they put up a faster time than anyone right through dead mines that yeah, was I mean, yeah. unbelievably fast definitely the time to beat here 
But we're also seeing Leon's team, Hellfire Club, moving towards the actual Wailing Caverns. They've done, they're finished already with whatever quest they felt like turning in. They ran out of dead mines, and now they're already heading towards Wailing Caverns. And this is a pretty safe run, in all honesty, to get towards Wailing Caverns, but they might have to clear all of the mobs entering into WC if they're not running with another group, which is something we saw heading into dead mines is the way in was clear. Everybody was running in there all together. They also had a level 60 friend there helping clear things. To, so to be honest might... with you, Sarth, like after what we just saw this team do in Deadmines with rotating target dummies and rank one Blizzard, I think they're just going to AOE kite every mob run straight into the dungeon. Yeah. They, the, how many target dummies do these guys have? Oh, I know. Uh, Leon like by 40. himself has 18 yeah, in, so on just, just them. So, I mean, like, when you've got teams that we hear about, you know, spending 70, 80 hours fishing, I'm pretty sure that this team opted to do 70, 80 hours of mining just so that they could make enough target dummies. Because their the entire claws. strategy is using target dummies as pseudo tanks so that they don't need a healer. Yeah. And, you know, to be honest, these this team is, is almost to the dungeon entrance of Wailing Caverns. That, if they have a really good... Willing Cavern's clear time. Questing in Stormwind might come back to really bite Parla, Ompi, Calamity, and LND. And like it might actually be the difference maker in just banging out these dungeons as fast as possible. Right. Most certainly. Yeah. And, and while you're getting, you know, points for individual dungeon clears, your overall time still counts. You know, every minute that they spend training spells, turning in quests outside of a dungeon needs to be made up. Um, yeah, in a dungeon, and that's minute to minute. If they I mean, I'm I'm watching well dungeon clear. I'm watching no CC from from Grace for days over here with cargos, and they are running into Wailing Caverns right now. So our third place dead mines speed clear yes. out of all the teams that started dead mines is actually going to be the first team to get back into the next dungeon. Grace so they might actually counter. <laughs> yeah, you gotta love that. They, they might actually be poised here, uh, like the the open world movement and the and the travel between these dungeons is such a big difference maker. And look at those buffs. Yeah, that's Honestly, what I was going to point out. Privilege coming in with not only full skittles on this uh, alchemist, but also full blood shard buffs. Being able to re up on those, get thirty minute timers, is absolutely yes. huge. The five and minute speed buff also from the blood shard. If you could use it in places, speed mm -hmm. is like the most important thing in any sort of like any sort of speed run and literally just having any sort of movement speed. And for this team, especially because all they do is press W, right? So they're yep. already entering into their second dungeon. Whereas the team that full cleared the dun uh, dead mines first hasn't even gotten to Wailing Caverns. They're waiting for the ship. So um, they're I'll waiting the for the ship log out. Oh, Question mark. oh, Ompy. We Ompy's gotta know. Ompy's gotta know. Ompy's gotta know. Ompy's gotta know. Set him a thing right now. Oh my gosh. But we're seeing. Is he logged team, out? Team I don't see him no logged out. Did I miss that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I right. I see a black I see it. The little, yep. There's a little mage. Says offline. Ooh. Oh. GG's, guys. Eek Barbadurkle. Mm hmm. We have Team Gertosh also moving on towards the last boss in Wailing Caverns, but Team No CC pumping through and they're already inside of Wailing Caverns as their second dungeon. Calamity's team looks like they're waiting for the for the ship to get over there. They're probably their hearth situation with Stormwind and everything was probably set up so that they could plan for some of the later dungeons. Wailing Caverns is just one of the really long ones. Right. Check this out. This is awesome. Leon, Leon, they just brought in their sixth. They brought their replacement. Yeah. They summoned them just for the fortitude buff. Wow. Well, well, so now that they no, so they always had this priest in. So they actually yeah. subbed out, they subbed out their paladin and brought their warlock. So they are going oh, in. Oh, this is so cool. For Wailing Caverns. They legitimately and, uh, have swapped their 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 rotational yeah, member they, and their, their sixth only member. Male, their only male wearer is now on bench. Uh, and just by the way, I checked in with um with CNX Circus. Ompi needed to restart his game to fix the weak aura. 
Uh, so he logged yeah, out. He logged see. back in the same place very immediately. I, mm-hmm. I cannot lie to you. Hellfire Club is quickly becoming one of my favorite teams to watch. And I think that if they can survive these dungeons, they're already showing like really, really cool tech on some of these dungeon we've seen just so far, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, and they're kind of the sleeper agent, in my opinion. You know, the we we've got teams of well-known players running around doing these dungeons but this is really nice to see this might be one of the only rotational swaps we see today in terms of bringing your sixth member in you got to respect this though up on the screen right now you've got unchained here uh on team vidir enjoyers by the way what a great name uh little backstory the vidir elixir will instantly kill you if if swallowed so definitely a big no-no for a hardcore character which is uh, so sad by the way because you need that for, for the, the best quest. in slot offhand for your uh, for your prebis molten core gear as a th- caster this team has finished wailing caverns and is now making their way over to dead mines so pretty much a swap for swap uh in terms of overall circuit it looks to be that they are right on par if not ahead overall then seemingly our front runners see you next circus oh one thing crazy that's happening here for uh team no cc they actually split up their group two grays and bobka are off on their own kind of two two man team that are gonna have to kill some of the bosses while we have the rest of the team three of them cargos and tactics just moving through the rest of the dungeon kind of doing the main part of the dungeon so Grace and Bobka yeah, so, just two manning half of it. This is the yeah, first so time we've seen a real big split. Grace and Bobka go basically left when you enter that the west portion of the dungeon. They're going to be going after the uh, required deviant vipers and adders, maybe getting a couple of druids of the fang, and then they're going to two man Lord Cobran. Um, meanwhile, the rest of this team is going to as quickly as they can make their way to Verdin. Uh, it's a really ballsy strat, you know, given that you are much less protected first of all. Um, but you know. Each of these groups is going to be moving slower, so they better be melting these mobs. Uh, and like Grace is showing us, keeping safe, being willing to pop out, give that heal uh, as they need it, because they're certainly going to be two weaker components to what is otherwise a zug zug. Press W, cleave. That cruel barb is really helping them. Look at yeah, Bobka's DPS handy. here. 64 DPS on single target pulls. And they're going to have to move through, and, and they're, they're clearing all of the druids they want to clear, as well as clearing the path as much as they can for that quest mob that we talked about earlier, but they can leave things like some of these raptors alive. They do chain, but I think they do want to also get the boss eventually. But the well, rap- so, so yeah, there's, what I, there's the boss. Yeah, so what I'm guessing they are trying to do here uh, is kill just enough that they need to uh, to unlock, um, one, the, the escort itself, but two, make sure that they take care of this pretty hefty trash requirement. 22 druids of the fang needed. Um, but as for the escort, you know, I think that what a lot of these teams are going to try and do is actually kill some of these uh, raptors while, while, while they it are escorts. In yeah. The escort. uh, why not kill two birds with one stone? And I think that that's what we're seeing with a lot of these being left up. But they are absolutely melting this guardian and ravager. Have the boss sapped. Uh, really fun in these low level dungeons how uh, these bosses are susceptible to so many CC elements. It makes for some really fun gameplay. And they're There's... LOSing with these raptors because don't these raptors have a have a AOE call where they can yeah, summon the more? Ones, the Guardian, when they mm-hmm. get low health, they will call out for help. It's about a 30, 40 yard range. So they had it just in time. Ooh, the great gouge from Bobka. There, there's something I want to talk to as well. If you're viewing this right now and maybe you you don't know quite what's going on, um, we've done Wailing Caverns speedrunning events before. And I can tell you, Wailing Caverns is one of the most confusing dungeons on keeping up with who's <laughs> in the lead as possible. So just bear with us. As these teams get in and out of Wailing Caverns, we're going to see a lot of interesting tech happening. And when it comes down to it, I'm really excited to see SFK next. We're going to see a very linear path through SF- SFK to definitely decide which teams are pulling way ahead and which teams are still falling behind a little bit, Absolutely. as well as... BFD is also very linear, and the last boss of BFD laps, and they are going to be Mm under-leveled going in. That's going to be the scariest part. Yes. It's going to be amazing to watch, so I appreciate you guys. Also, um, Only, do you want to give a quick three-minute rundown for anyone that's just joining us right now on what the rules of today's event are? Very high-level overview. Absolutely. 
So teams of up to six people, you can have five of them in a dungeon group at a time. They are speed racing through four different dungeons, Deadmines, Wailing Caverns, SFK, and BFD in any order they want to, um, being parsed out in timed performances uh, in each dungeon clear and the overall time that includes routing. Uh, these teams uh, have to be uh, grouped together at all times. Um, they... Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, can't log out, use logout skips. It's really just, you know, through and through a world first uh, type race, just with low level dungeons. And and these are split into circuits, just so you guys know, there will be there will be a circuit basically every weekend for the next 11 weeks. Um, we are going to be doing every weekend. every other weekend. I'm yes, sorry. Every but other weekend. We are going to be racing through every dungeon in the game. Just about, I think, with the exception of Dire Mall North, Dire Mall West. There's and a couple um, left and, um, elements. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah, and stockades, of course, things like that. But yep. essentially, 99% of the dungeons in the game are going to be speed ran through by these same teams on hardcore one life game mode. So, if they die, I'm sorry, team, your team is formatting it. Um, and we're actually seeing that happen today. Alenia's team is formatting because they had a death. I don't know if the death was, was last week or, or something along I, those I think lines. It was but this morning. This morning, so they are continuing on with the four men. You have time if you uh, if you die today to level another character. You have two weeks to level another character, get back caught up to your team again, and and go into the next circuit strong, right? Yeah, today is today is probably the only one of the world tours where if you died early or like recently, even yesterday, you could have kind of made it back if you pulled an all nighter gotten pretty close to actually being useful for your group but also if you're under leveled entering into these dungeons you're going to pull things that uh, the rest of the group kind of wants to skip so moving in oh, with certainly. the four-man group is is probably a better play if you were too under leveled so Alenia's Absolutely. team being able to do this and actually getting through a lot of the dungeons will be really impressive and seeing what they end up finishing with or or if they bring in the fifth person with a little bit under leveled and a little under geared yeah. But, yep. but speaking of um, deaths, you know, with a bit of a comeback story, I just linked Table Slam's stream. So Team Gorilla Milk, uh, you know, definitely a, a fan favorite in terms of team names. Table Slam fell through the world yesterday, wasn't recording, uh, so wasn't able to uh, preserve his character, had to delete and relevel yesterday afternoon. He stayed up all night. He's level 22 again, was able to get up there. Uh, they finished Dead Mines. They just are getting off the boat uh, into Ratchet, going on to Wailing Caverns. You yes. gotta love a team. It, it looks like uh, even a uh, team Snakes is right on par with them. Love to see this competition. Uh, you know, even in the middle of the pack, competition is still fierce. You're fighting for literally every second of movement time. Yes, yeah, so many groups all moving together right now. You can see that everyone's kind of on pace with each other. There's a little bit, a couple groups that are a little bit ahead, but for the most part, a lot of the groups are, are really moving through the dungeons at the same pace and doing the same route so that they're all taking the, the Zeppelins or taking the boats all at the same time. Here from Team One No team. CC, they're also split up, killing scum as well as multiple packs of trash at the same time while they only have three people here. So they're still split up in a two-man group versus a three-man group all within the same dungeon. So the one thing that will be interesting here is I want to note for viewers, I don't think my weak aura will track the people that are far away. I'm not sure if it will be able to because of because of the way weak auras work and mm -hmm. and combat. I mean, they, works, this will but... end up requiring a lot more uh, communication between you know those two factions of Team No CC. You know, because we've got Bobka and um, and Grays all the way here, about to kill Lord Coburn, finishing up the last of their trash. Uh, you know, but other than being able to communicate on Discord, you know, they're working on entirely separate dungeons, basically. So, you know, yeah. we'll definitely have to go back, do a bit of FOD review, make sure that they completed all of their requirements. Um, but my goodness, like what a what a crazy strategy. And to be working this far, you know, we're about to see Bobka and Grays uh, try and kill their second boss as a two man. Uh, you know, for the, the remaining three to have such an S to be able to kill scum along with a really healthy amount of trash. Yeah, they pulled pretty two great packs see. with scum with the three of them. And now this well, group and, and is scum doing this, already yeah. comes with two extra mobs. You know, they were pulling quite a bit extra. 
Lord Absolutely. Cobra, also, I'm easy for them though. I'm seeing in the chat. Uh, you are correct in the chat. The we, there is a non-class stacking rule today. So if you're on these teams, you are not allowed to double up on the same class, um, which. Which makes it more interesting, in my opinion. Much more That's nuanced perfect. than four hunters and a tank, you know, coming in and just <laughs> yeah. leading everything. Mm -hmm. Or better, yeah, five just five mages, hunters. Five mages, <laughs> five, mages so five hunters. Yeah, it would so, be ridiculous. Um, by the way, on a Chippa WoW stream, Unchained with Vidir Elixirs, they are already killing Gilnit. They actually did the drop, the same drop that we saw from CNX Circus, straight down on Gilnit, grabbing the extra engineer they need, and they're just on their way, ready to roll. They got the lavishly jeweled ring. Great drop from Gilnit. Yeah, and One you can see how target that dummies haven't... used also here. A lot of teams using target dummies. Pretty much mm -hmm. almost every team has engineers for target dummies. I think 100% of the teams has at least one engineer. There are a few teams that have six out of six engineers. Everybody went engineering. Yes. I think the play would have, would have been go alchemy. That's just my hot take, but you know. No, I, I am a fellow alchemy believer. Um, yep. But, you know, when, when 55, 57% of players in this competition of the 207, uh, or I'm sorry, 217 uh, players are taking engineering, I think there's at least a crowd favorite. Yeah, absolutely. What, one thing I'm looking at here, I just pulled up um, Calamity Steam here. It looks like the... The downtime between their Deadmine start and or finish and Wailing Cavern start is actually kind of gonna bite them. I think unless they really have some crazy strats in Wailing Caverns here, yeah, I, I think that they might, might see be... them dropping down in placement just because they took so long to get to Wailing Caverns. Oh, certainly, you know, a, a lot of these teams are saying, okay, well, the dungeons are what matter most. You know, it, it is a fact that you are getting more points out of your individual dungeon clears. This is a dungeon racing competition after all but that doesn't mean that you know these uh this routing time doesn't matter you know they stand to lose a fair number of points so it looks I'm like he killed Lord Coburn and then dropped to an evade spot yeah they they peter's pet though is still up there he, they didn't get rid of the pet but they've they've probably planned that all out if mm -hmm. they do a keep aggro with all of the ads and they run after you you cannot run out of the dungeon so they need to either get to another evade spot it looks like they're out of combat so he's able Yo, to drink you need to, here you need to pull up graze's stream what is he doing Graze is getting ready to so graze is not going to rejoin the rest of the group they're actually so he, oh they did it they killed they killed the they last killed boss. Verdon. No, you don't need, immediate. You don't need to kill oh, Verdon to actually yes. engage the. Um, I love this. To engage the RP. Yeah. Oh so my you, can, God. you can even see Grayson, like Grace's team didn't even bother killing some of the entry level or entry mobs. They stealthed past them. Look, Grace stealthed back, and it, it Grace and Bobka are two manning the escort right now. Oh no! My God. Wait, are Grace and Bobka? Gonna two man this entire escort while the rest of the team goes and kills Lord Pythus, Crash, Scum. They, no, so I'm pretty sure they already killed those bosses, did they not? Uh, I was Gray just I'm pretty not sure there for the kills? See, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure we're Gray's, about to see Cargo. They, they, they did. They oh, killed, yeah, no, you're right. They killed Tactics, all yeah, the other bosses. So they yeah. just killed Burden as a three man. They are dropping down. So Gray's rejoined for the escort. So Grays and Bobka have been alone this whole time, basically. They they weren't there for the kills to get credit for the... Yeah, so, so they're looking at... Uh, if you guys remember, uh, Vidir enjoyers that were sticking together got Verdon down at 17 minutes. This team has every boss down in 15. That's a whole two minutes faster. Yeah, that's incredible. Oh, I love off. the play, actually, here I, by I splitting really, the team in half. I was really skeptical. Uh, but this really, really seemed to work out for them. Definitely yeah, they, something to keep an eye out for because this is a repeatable strategy at higher levels. You know, if you've got a rogue and a druid who can be a, a unit, just, you know, completely self-sustaining, that's, yeah. a, that's a threat to keep an eye out for. Yeah, they they that's a huge time save splitting your team up for this. That's incredible. I'm just setting up some. Yeah, it's looking like pretty much. Oh, well, yeah. Every see, we team. see Karg's, Karg is killing Crash right now while Grays and Bobka do this escort. Looks like. Um, oh, that's wild. They killed. Now yeah. they, they have everything else while they're they're going to meet up yep. here at the end. So, yes. so what I what I am guessing. So Crash patrols all along that river. I'm guessing that Bobka and Grays didn't want to fight Crash being uh, a two man melee comp because Crash has so much armor. So they yeah. just said, let's put the three man on it. That's got more magic damage. Uh, you know, between the the hunter and the shaman, uh, you know, 
and then we can just focus on downing the bosses we need, starting the escort. The rest can kind of fall into place. We see them just melting down the rest of these raptors. That they so, need. so Grays for Days and Bobka were not there when the team killed Lord Pythus, Scum, or Serpentis, or Verdon. Yeah. yeah. The so they were off the doing their the own two-man thing while the other team three-man the rest of the dungeon, and now they're all meeting up for me. That's so sick. Yeah, so so basically what, what, they're, what they're gonna see is, you know, eat, uh, if you look at Cargo's stream, for example, you know, you're gonna see that the uh, the weak aura showing trash requirements, you know, Vipers, Adders are empty, Druid of the Fang not complete. Uh, but that's because, you know, they had two people across the entirety of the dungeon. One of the, the biggest dungeon in this circuit, one of the bigger dungeons overall. Uh, doing it all for them. Yeah, absolutely. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm so intrigued uh, to see what the split time is for this dungeon for them because was it worth it? Did they save more time having the two-man group? Because I think so. They were able to do pretty good DPS. They were honestly... Just uh, Bobka and Graves were able to kill bosses pretty much as fast as a normal full group, especially because they got that Cruel Barb. That made this oh, really, man. really fast. That oh, cruel bar must feel so good on the hip of Bobka right now. Bobka's probably freaking out about that cruel bar. Yeah, dude. Well, I, I would have I would have loved to hear the com uh the commentary from Tactics saying he was about to hit need on it for Warrior Prio. Oh my oh, god. Oh yikes. That'd be a that'd be a yikes. It, this yeah, is this it, is it great. And like by the way, we have all these teams live logging, correct? And and we'll be able to do their parses at, at some point. Yes. Or not. Uh, We've got just about every team live logging. A couple of captains had issue switching over. We were hoping to use method raid tools to log, um, but found out pretty late that uh, you know it doesn't work outside of raid instances. Uh, so we tried to make the switch over to the Warcraft Logs client. Uh, some of these teams have never used it for, before, figured it out. Others um, either you know couldn't be asked to do new technologies. We do, after all, have a team called Boomer HC. Uh, and some the of these team names are amazing, by the way. Uh, you know, so some folks just not up to the tech, but yeah, we've got just about all of these teams live logging, especially the ones that we're seeing here on the front end. It'll be really, really fun uh, post game to be able to dive into those logs. Uh, oh, another weapon for for Viper. CNX Circus. Unbelievable yeah, loot. So, so, so I know Yikes. that Ellen, Ellen Degen loves to swap over to maces for the high end uh, damage. I'm kind of wondering if she will take that um you know to be going for high consistent damage or if she's actually trying to purposely run uh daggers here didn't uh, they the get didn't they get cruel barb in this group also oh yeah yeah so, so it looks like so ellen is actually cruel wielding cruel that. barb in her main hand yeah uh so yep and look she just put in yep. the mace in her offhand so she's going to be a force to be reckoned with moving forward here so what an insane pee. dps upgrade for your rogue oh my god so OP. Rogues, rogues at these young, low levels, rogues in, in all of classic dungeons do mm -hmm. so much damage, especially once you get Blade Flurry eventually. Oh, absolutely. You do so much damage, and you would think it's Warrior, but really, Warriors need things like World Buffs and more gear, where rogues can kind of just, just pump with weapons. 100%. I do want to point out one thing that Ompi, uh, our mage here on this team, was pretty worried about. Uh, and we're seeing it play out is the damage that a mage is able to put out single target in a in a dungeon that's as spread out as Wailing Caverns. We're seeing him pretty low on the DPS meters, where uh, you know, in Dead Minds, he was top of the meters every single time, sometimes doing more than half of the overall damage. Uh, so definitely a big switch. You know, he is uh, more playing the utility role here, probably sheeping a lot for, to add an extra kick. Um, Arcane but yeah, definitely a change here. Oh yeah, and, and a kind of a surprise, you know. As much as uh, you know, priest gets memed on uh, with the early wand. Um, you know, priest can be doing a pretty healthy amount of single target damage at least. So we're seeing the choice to do uh, no um, no swap and just keep with this same four man content. Probably again for the XP. Really wanting to make sure that Ampi is able to hit twenty four in time for BFD and SFK, unlocking some new class tech. Yes. And we're this seeing is incredible. Team NoCC is about to finish their actual Wailing Caverns run. They 21 mm -hmm. minutes, it looks like, inside I, of this dungeon. I have to say it, I think. OK, so we we saw Calamity's team in the lead at the at the beginning. We They cleared Deadmines record mm -hmm. pace, right? Yep. They decided to to get a little greedy with XP after Deadmines, and I know they have a reason for that. They have to have a reason for that. But the 
play that we've seen from no CC in Wailing Caverns is honestly potentially the biggest time save of the day. Oh, absolutely. And, and, the Alka and Grace for Days splitting. I, I want to say, though, Chippa Wow stream. So looking at Videre Elixirs, they are done with Dead Mines before Team oh, No CC is done. And they've and, done. And they're already, really they're already, yeah, they're already getting ready to, they're already ghetto hearthing. They're technically uh, ahead. Reform after, after they cheat out this extra hearthstone. For anyone who doesn't know, if you, um, if you drop group while in a dungeon, you're, you will automatically be hearthed. It'll, you, it'll reset your hearth cooldown back to 60. But even if it's down, Boom. It's a free Hearthstone. We just see it right here. So these guys, first team, Vidir Enjoyers, uh, we're following Unchained right now. First team to be done with both Wailing Caverns and Dead Mines. Oh, I can I can I bring this to light real quick? This is the first time we've seen this today. If you pull up one of my favorite teams, Danger Noodles, our, oh, our good Danger Noodles. Our good friend Ellie B, Yoon, Blorpy is on this team. These are some hardcore veterans from EU. They cleared dead mines and they're going straight into SFK right now. Oh, right. Wow. this will be this will be a run Our to first, watch. First so, so, SFK and directly absolutely. at twenty two. Still, actually, hasn't even leveled to twenty three. Level twenty two mm -hmm. and moving in. Yes, shout outs to our EU gamers. You love to see it. We we're alive a little bit early uh, in the morning if you're if you're a uh, West Coaster, but. That's because we have so many amazing EU friends Absolutely. that wanted to play, right? Yes. And yeah, one so, thing, so really, oh, go ahead. One thing I really want to mention really fast, guys, is that we actually have some giveaways we're going to do today from Blizzard. So as one of these groups finishes SFK, I'll do the first giveaway and we're going to be giving away a hardcore, uh, not a hardcore, one of the deluxe editions of World of Warcraft. So shout out to Blizzard for helping support the stream today. And so I will have an exclamation point giveaway in the chat so that everyone can join in on that. But as the first group clears, SFK is when we'll do the first giveaway today. Oh, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Big, big shout outs to Blizzard for partnering with a grassroots community. We've been doing hardcore for, uh, what, for almost three years now. And it has been some of the most fun I've ever had. If you guys are interested in playing hardcore, Go to go to the website here. There's links to the Discord everywhere. The Discord Classic HC. Come play a character. I guarantee that you'll enjoy yourself. Absolutely. ClassicHC.net. Discord GG. Uh, or dot GG slash Classic HC. Um, Discord's got over 32,000 people. Um, and I believe the hardcore uh, add-on, which is required, it kind of monitors that you haven't died. It monitors certain other rules. Uh, it's got well over 200,000 downloads. Uh, so definitely a game mode that has gotten a lot of traction and a lot of people have enjoyed over the years. And by the way, speaking of things that people enjoy, uh, I want to give a huge shout out here. So uh, many of you may see it down here in the stream title. The Hardcore All-Stars World Tour uh, has a grand prize, a winner-take-all grand prize for uh, at the end of the tour in May. Uh, of five thousand uh, dollars and that's actually been provided to us uh, generously sponsored by hardcore elite the level 60 hardcore guild uh well known for clearing ragnaros um back in season of mastery all on one life characters uh so yeah huge shout out to them for coming in providing us with a great sponsorship so we can be putting on a fantastic event Yes, and I just checked to make sure one more time. We have heroic, we have a horror giveaway and epic edition giveaways. So we do have multiple giveaways we'll be doing today. Um, I'll do two or three today, guys. So that will start happening towards the end of SFK, and I will have that all set up for us. But we are seeing the first group get through SFK here and get started. I wonder if there's a way to make this faster, getting through this RP. If there would have been a way to like have a rogue stealth through and maybe start the RP, because this definitely. part, this section does cost a little bit of time, and it's definitely so, something speedrunners try to optimize. Yeah. So, so what I think we're going to see from a lot of teams, I, I know that Danger Noodles has opted to not do do any um any ptr but i do think that from the teams who have we're going to see a lot of people just slide in there start the the rp event as soon as they jump down you know that uh that npc will not stop to to fight any mobs it's not going to be targeted so he's just free to go yeah if you initiate it right away and then run back to the group with enemies it could save a little bit of time oh absolutely so i'm honestly Real, real fast, I do want to shout out. We we missed one one little thing about the uh, 
the sponsorship here from Hardcore Elite. If you like stakes added to your gameplay and you and the idea of deleting a level 60 character when it dies appeals to you, <laughs> Hardcore Elite is an amazing place to be. I've been there. I've stepped foot into Molten Core with that guild. They, they accomplished some of the craziest things ever. They've cleared Molten Core several times. They've cleared AQ20. They've cleared Onyxia. They've cleared Onyxia splits. And, and they're, they're going into BWL tomorrow for the first time ever. They're, yeah, they're going to be they're trying to kill see, Razorgore. Yeah, they're going to see if Razorgore is even possible. They might get a bug and see a 40-person wipe, uh, all of whom would delete. Yes. I, I, I certainly remember my first time trying to go into Razorgore, you know, as a little, as a little wild noob. Absolutely just running my face into a wall for no particular reason. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I definitely know what it's like to wipe, but boy, I can't imagine, uh, you know, walking in first boss, first encounter of a raid with no escape, having to delete out of that. Yes. Do and you, you can see that if you're interested, Do you have if you're interested in watching it, that yeah. tomorrow, if you're interested in watching it, uh, uh, several of our competitors here today are part of Hardcore Elite. First one that comes to mind that will guaranteed be streaming it is Calamity HC. Perfect. I can post that for everyone. Speaking have. of Calamity, they they were the team that cleared Dead Minds the fastest and took a little bit longer than everyone else getting to Wailing Caverns. Mm -hmm. uh, they're still in Wailing Caverns. They are still. So they are a lot behind now. The other yes. two teams kind of took ahead. It really is going to come down maybe to Black Fathom Deeps to see who's going to win it. But it feels like they were so fast in Dead Mines that they might have overestimated or underestimated how much time it takes to turn in some of those quests. How solid the, the quest turn-ins are. Is it really that worth it to get your Tunic of Westfall, right? Because that I really set them is. back. That set them back like nine minutes almost. Oh, absolutely. Well, and they took the time to, you know, turn in quests uh, up in the Skull Cave above Wailing Caverns. It's it's definitely a big commitment just for a few extra stats. Yeah, anyone wondering about leaderboards or anything being updated, we do have the Hardcore All-Stars website. So everyone head over to exclamation point HCAS is mm -hmm. up and running now and you can check that out. You could also check out multiple streams from that page. Yeah, I, I will say as far as the leaderboards go, because we are everybody is being parsed out and to get points, you know, we're not going to actually see, uh, you know, teams be getting any points until everybody has finished. Uh, you know, so while we're looking live and being able to see the times, you know, your 13 minute clear as CNX Circus, uh, you know, will give you a, a number of points based on everybody else's time. Uh, you know, for all we know, a team could come in and, and blow their record out of the water. If I'm being honest. Chippo Wow is kind of poised to. They're they're pumping. They oh absolutely. They've cleared as they've cleared dead mines. They've cleared well in caverns. I can only assume they're going to SFK right now. I'm watching them run around in Iron Forge. Yes. Also, if you're in the chat, if you're watching this, and and this is something that's you know maybe you're you're newer, you haven't seen a lot of the hardcore uh, community stuff yet. Make sure to go show some love to these people that are streaming this event. Um, it takes a lot of time. They've put a lot of hours, a lot of prep into this. And, uh, you know, we, we appreciate everyone who's participating, everyone who's watching. Pat yourself on the back. Give yourself an easy clap in the chat one time. And, uh, you know, just I'm, I'm, I'm happy you're here with us on a Saturday. You know what I mean? Feels good. Yeah, it's, the participation in the hardcore events have been unbelievable. So thank you guys all for coming and checking it out. And also all of the teams and all of the competitors, anyone who actually wiped and is starting over that we won't see today in circuit number one, we will see more teams or maybe less teams if people wipe also in circuit two. So remember that these hardcore characters have to make it all the way to level 60, well, 59.75 really, to even make it to the grand finals, which is no easy feat. A lot of people doing hardcore end up dying to something random happening out in the world yeah i believe the last time we did a, a statistics check on hardcore wow the average first death was level 13 or 14 um it people die for all kinds of reasons man i've i've been running a show where we've been watching people die for years right so like we yeah. we have seen a death to every possible thing at least i think that's the case every time we do it uh, but eventually uh, something new pops up and people just, if you can die to it in this game, someone has died to it in hardcore. Wow. 
falling through the world. It happens. A random mob spawning like right as you kill everything else. Getting getting, getting layered on Yeah, getting top. layered. Oh, that's the getting scariest. layered into into patrolling opposite faction guards. That's the biggest Dr drowning. It's terrible. True, just AFK drowning. I mean, I died at level 50 to fatigue swimming. Level 50 hours days I'm dumb. put into leveling your character and fatigue. Oh, certainly. The pain. All right, it looks like we've got Hellfire Club finishing up Wailing Caverns. If I'm going to be got, honest uh, here, I think that the travel time on Circuit 1 is clearly favoring Horde. Oh, right? I, I think so, too. We might actually see a very close race between Cheapo Wow and Graze for Days' teams. Mm -hmm. They're both done with two dungeons so far. They both need to get to SFK. Who gets to SFK faster? Horde. Um, do they? Because Alliance can fly. I guess Horde can go to Undercity, right? You can go to Undercity. Yeah, Horde, you just you ghetto to Crossroads or whatever, and then fly to, uh, you just take the Zeppi. You, you, your little Zeppi boy. They actually didn't re-up on buffs. If you look at Graze for Days, he <gasps> didn't re-up on his buffs. Calamity's group bugged out on Mutinous. The Devourer. No. Oh way. no. The boss is not spawning. Yo, pretty unprecedented here. Do we do we have a, a rule in place for this only? Have we thought of this or no? Or is this Do we give them a five minute time penalty and tell them to go? I think that may be the best that we can do here. That is To be honest, the worst. this yeah, and you know what's even worse about this? I know this group of people, and they're all going to blame this for why they lost today. When in reality, we all knew they were behind, right, chat? We all knew that they were behind because they spent too long in Stormwind after Deadmines. That's actually, it's a, it's a new bug. If you if you turn in all of those quests beforehand, it doesn't spawn this at last boss. <laughs> it's a new thing. We found it out. Um, I do think, honestly, we, and, we, need to, yeah, send, we need to make a call. Send them a message, yes. No, I, I, I told them to move on. Um, mm -hmm. I, I actually, I'm pretty sure I know the bug. Uh, and it's if you kill these mobs um, too quickly after, <laughs> or too quickly before, like right when they spawn. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're going. They, they need to be alive for enough time uh, for the escort code to recognize uh, that like the next event needs to be queued up. Yep, and then thank you, by the way, that that I realized that that boss was bugged because we have such an amazing community of people in chat keeping track of all the runs, too. You know, we are we are doing this as a as a three person squad up here on the stream. You guys, <laughs> I appreciate you guys coming in, letting us know when something's going wrong so we can quickly and promptly get a hold of that and it doesn't end up bogging down the day. So I appreciate you guys for that. Yeah, it's very helpful seeing what's going on, and and their group is is still really fast. I'm curious at how quickly they finished Wailing Caverns, but even without the strategy that we saw from Team No CC, where their group split up and and actually dealt with the entire rate or dungeon at one time, I think Calamity's group was so much faster in Deadmines that we might also see that here with SFK and BFD. We're going to see just how quick they can clear through those dungeons and if they have crazy strategies, because we, we know that that group is one of the ones that has run tests of all of these dungeons. Now, is Talbar Mantle worth doing? If you cleared uh, Wailing Caverns, the is shoulder? Talbar Mantle worth Yes, completing that quest before going to the next dungeon. No, I think shot. we've seen. I think we've seen today taking any time between these dungeons to do anything but run straight line to the next one uh, is is a big no no. Oh, absolutely. I will say so. We've got Hellfire, uh, HC, and and um, and CNX Circus both going straight to BFD. Actually, opting to do SFK last. Really? CNX Circus in a bit oh, of a better really spot. really fast. I, yeah, CNX Circus in a bit of a better spot, I think purely because they had their Hearthstone in Ashenvale. Um, you know, whereas you saw Leanne's team uh, with their Hearthstone in Westfall, so they had to go down to Booty Bay, take the boat to Ratchet, and now they're flying over to Astronar now. Wow. Yeah, this is actually so interesting. We have four teams neck and neck running to SFK right now. We have... Team No CC, Grace for Days, uh, Bobka, uh, Cargos, right? The creator of Cargos, the creator of Hardcore, right? Wow. We've got Calamity, 
Parla, Ompi on the next team, right? Then we have Leanne's team flying there currently as we speak. And then we have Chipo Wow's team running straight to SFK. They're going from South Shore up to SFK right now. Mm -hmm. This is a long run for them. So they do have a little bit of added time here, but heading to BFD right now where you're level 23, you'll probably hit 24 in the dungeon, but the last boss again, what level 28 is one of the scariest ones and is probably the most intimidating boss we're gonna see today as the other things that could be really scary here are if they don't really execute any of their trash skips or accidentally pull too many things. So we haven't seen any deaths yet today, but this is really towards the end of the circuit. The back half is where we're really going to see things get a lot more risky. Who do you see as having kind of the advantage here? What do you see as the route difference being an advantage going to BFD or heading to SFK and then BFD? Cause these groups getting into BFD early, it is one of the longer dungeons. Wailing Cavern is probably the longest dungeon we have, but BFD uh, is a long straight run. I'm really interested in CNX Circus's BFD run. I have heard some of the craziest strategies. There is a fishing tournament where you can win and become a fish in World of Warcraft. Classic. I've heard that everyone on this team has that fish. Everyone has it, yeah. The entire it, yeah, squad, good. the entire team has the fish from the fishing tournament. They are going to fly through no, this dungeon. In kind of con like a, a bit of a, uh, a juxtaposition of that, I'm actually really interested to see Team No CC's clear of SFK where they're on their way right now. I have heard that the skips that Bobka is planning for them as the rogue, kind of able to pull mobs away, uh, do evade spots on his own, uh, reset them so that the rest of his team can get by. He can then stealth back up behind and catch up. Uh, I'm really excited to see what kind of skips they've got in mind. We have Calamity getting a whisper right now from another hardcore player saying, hey, would you like to heal Welling Caverns? Calamity <laughs> responds promptly, sorry, what's Welling Caverns? Sorry, what's WC? She How said, is that the one with lava? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we're seeing our Such first SFK kind of being cleared pretty, pretty smoothly here from Danger Noodles. They're having actually no real stress, but they haven't really skipped too much. If you see, they actually have 29 ghosts killed out of the 10 required, which is one thing that I think some of the... the groups that have planned things out that have done a little bit of testing have really tried to optimize to mm -hmm. kill exactly only exactly what's what's needed absolutely yeah again the, these early dungeons have got a lot of trash and being able to be efficient through it killing just what you need to uh you know taking a very specific route knowing your aggro ranges uh can really be the difference you know as we see potentially of saved minutes you know it's not only kill time but for mana users uh you know like this mage who are watching leb you know that's time you have to drink yeah Honestly, drink walking is one of the things that's also most useful. Uh, I think Ompi probably, Ompi had an entire bag, an entire 10 slot bag, which bags are hard to come by in hardcore, but they did make a lot of gold while fishing, so he was able to buy those. But an entire 10 slot bag completely full of water so he could drink walk as much as possible as they move through these dungeons. It's also another big thing for hunters, but all classes, just being able to stay up on mana is going to be a large thing for them as they move through. Oh, certainly. Like, this is you know, we're, we're actually seeing one of the um one of the downsides of being the first team to be going to bfd if you look at cnx circus they're actually having yep. to clear the trash on the way in you know they don't have the benefit of every team being at dead mines they don't have the benefit of another team having gone just before them it you looks know, like chippo's team is just slightly ahead of team no cc they're about to they're walking into sfk right now as i'm saying this even oh, as are, alliance yes. they've got a little bit they made uh, it there I faster think that their dungeon times must have just helped them out mm -hmm. uh, so either they've... dungeon times or the choice even as alliance to start with wailing caverns yeah and these this is a uh, so chippo wow's team is actually vadir and joyers are a this is a team comp compromised of like hardcore wow veterans mm-hmm Mm -hmm. These guys are no joke when it comes to playing hardcore. They've all been part of the community for years at this point. I see Blenderer in that group. I see Cheapo in that group. 
they have some pretty next level amount of knowledge when it comes to running these dungeons safely. Oh, but can they add? I mean, I mean, we're seeing it now. They're they're clearly adding the speed to yeah, it. Like it, it, it's really a unique opportunity to see, you know, how teams who are coming in as speed runners, you know, teams like Grizzlies, what can you do? Uh, work in progress coming over from Gehenna, you know, who are used to speed running things, uh, but maybe haven't done so in a setting where you know dying is you know the end of it all. Uh, yes. And, and then on the other side, you've got hardcore veterans who know every mechanic of every mob not just in these dungeons but you know all the way up to 60 in the open world um you know but haven't really uh taken into consideration before this competition but how how can i move through it faster what are what are the limits that i can push where i start treating my my health bar my mana bar as resource bars where i only need it to have one on it it can drop down to one uh so it'll be a really really fun opportunity uh to see kind of how these different types of teams translate the skills they already have and by the way, we've actually got Hellfire Club made another substitution. I think they subbed out their Hunter in favor of a Paladin for BFD. They're on their way over there, about to drop in. Oh, they did, ramp. yeah. And and as they head over to BFD, as groups are heading into BFD, I do want to say we're going to start the first giveaway also. If anyone wants to join in on the giveaway to win a heroic edition of Wrath of the Lich King, just exclamation point giveaway and it should enter you into that to be eligible we'll do we'll we'll roll out the giveaway soon but i just want everyone to know so that they can join in and be eligible to to win you you better believe how oh my god the exclamation point giveaway yeah that better work <laughs> look at all those giveaway members Yo, welcome, first time chatters. Another shout out to Blizzard Entertainment for really uh, partnering with us for this event and giving us some cool stuff to give away to you guys. We really appreciate that from them. Um, little nod to the hardcore community, if you might, which you love to see. Yes. Uh, and it's it's a beautiful thing. We live in a in a world of classic era right now, where most of the people, honestly, all the people, let's say let's say all the people, everyone that's playing classic era right now, currently, um, is die hard in love with world of warcraft they've been playing classic era since they were kids most likely i know it's the same story for a lot of us um and to see this game even being supported right now in the in the best version that we like Ooh. to play it in is a beautiful thing what happened danger noodles had a death <gasps> really yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go back and clip it which team is danger noodles uh, uh leb st uh, string. Oh okay. no, they, they were the team that went into, into SFK. SFK. At level 22, had a death. The rest oh, of their team no. uh, made it out of the dungeon. They're going to go back in, but they're going to have to go back in with four. Are they swapping in their sixth, though? They're, they're not able to. They're not between dungeons. Oh, true. You they're not between dungeons. continue dungeon. the dungeon with the people you entered with. Oh, the first death of the day. And they were so close to finishing the dungeon. They were so close to being done. They just have literally Fenris, Wolfmaster, and, and Argal mm -hmm. left. So just the wolves at the very end. They were almost you know, that, there. That room that they must have been in, kind of the big room with the uh, with the bridge going overhead as you enter, mm -hmm. uh, that's a dangerous one at low level uh, because of some Z-axis issues that exist. I've got a big feeling um, that this team accidentally pulled and the entire room came running for them and nobody uh happened to notice until the, everyone was already there. I do Incredibly have likely. a big question for you as as the minister of the Hardcore All-Stars. They zoned out. Yes, uh, you are allowed You are allowed to zone out uh, if you need to evade mobs. Uh, you just can't come back uh, after you kill all of the bosses. Oh. Uh, you have any trash requirements. Okay, well, I misspoke earlier, and anyone that heard me misspeak earlier, I apologize. I thought if you overpulled, then you had to to fight it. So thank you, Prime Minister, for for saving all of us. Also, yes, yes, the shout prime, out the to prime minister. All almost three hundred people that have entered into the giveaway. We will do that as this group kills the last boss in here. Absolutely. It'll be really interesting to see how they adapt and overcome with now four people still at level 22. Yes. I'm going to do something I do all the time right now while people are joining this giveaway. How's, how's your day going? If you're in chat right now, if you're in anyone's chat, if you're in, if you're watching LEB live, if you're watching Grace for Days Cargo, Sarth, if you're here today with us, how's your day going? Give me a zero out of 10. 
Zero being the worst day ever, 10 being the best day of your entire life. You you won the lottery, you can quit your job forever, never work again, play WoW for the rest of ever. How you guys doing today? Eleven. Look at all those numbers. Look at Eleven. that. Let's go. 6.5 from Jerome. I'm sorry for your death. <laughs> the unfortunate death. If you missed it earlier, we watched Jerome's team did have deaths last night as they headed over to Dead Mines to get started. It, it, it is unfortunate, but it's what happens and you have to restart everyone. We need to remember that anyone that dies in any of these dungeons or in between the dungeons or moving in the circuit they all have to delete their character instantly. So it happens, but luckily it's the very first circuit. We do have a glitch reset of Gamora here over four CNX circus. The boss actually is in kind of a buggy spot. He does get full HP back and they're still gonna try to keep bringing it, but that is a little bit intimidating. They are around half, H, uh, half mana for Calamity. Yeah, from what I've heard on EU servers, uh there's a big bug all over the world with any mob that isn't equipped with a swim animation. Uh, they've got a really tough time going into or out of water. Uh, so I imagine that, you know, just with the positioning that they had, I mean, also BFD, I think, is pretty well known for having uh, mobs be buggy in water. Uh, so I've got a big feeling that they experienced one of those things. Um, but, you know, they're going to they're gonna keep on going. Again, one of those things where they are doing their best to be a team that can hold W, even with a comp, uh, you know, like having a mage uh, that might not be the perfect spot for it. Yeah, mage very low on single target DPS. You're seeing Parla starting to kite here. They're low on mana and taking quite a bit of damage. One thing that we will notice that they did earlier and they're going to have to do again. You can see on the right side of the screen, they have the Akumai Fishers. You have to kill six of those as trash requirements. Those are the non-hostile turtles. And it was actually yesterday when I was re-editing and, and fixing this week or a... Um, that I noticed that those were the the right mobs. I was going mm -hmm. and actually checking everything and making sure it worked. And I was oh, like, absolutely. oh well, yeah, it's I love that that was added. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, I, I want to point out, so CNX Circus actually just went into, if they're focusing on just boss kills, they went into the wrong cave on the side uh, with the boss. I'm not quite sure why they went in there. I didn't see everybody. Quest. Um, I, I they they, they want didn't. the quest because that the gives wand. you the Black Fathom 50 caliber sniper rifle wand, bro. That quest, <laughs> that I, I know, quest but, but, is a bis wand to like level 40 for a caster. And and that's being done just for Ompi then. Yes. yes purely so, for so they, they it have, is, it's 100% worth it. Yeah, that so, so wand will out DPS like is, Frostbolt. Yeah, at so this level. their priest is sat out here. Uh, so they went out of their way to make sure that their uh, that their mage would be upgraded and ready for circuit two just at level 31. That wand actually is rumored to shoot nuclear missiles at mobs in Hills, Bradford Hills. Oh, that wand's insane. Better, better come with a license then. Mm hmm. How long yeah, I'm pretty sure they, uh, they Ompi had to pass wand. a test. You'll use it until like 36 or 40. So that one, they they actually will use that. And, and even if they lose time here today in the run, it'll be useful for next split for yes. the next circuit. Huge pull yes. here from Team No CC. Oh my gosh, this is actually kind of wild. They're also getting some of the rare mobs. This is a little bit of the RNG to have any of the rare bosses spawn for you. It can be good or bad. You can get some nice items, uh, but you can also add a little bit of extra trash you might have to deal Absolutely. with. Absolutely. And actually, we see Chippa Wow in the same place, um, but with Odo the Blind Watcher pulled into that pack. So they're just oh. barely ahead. This is a neck and neck SFK race. Tactical I'm actually thing. loving, I'm loving Chippo Wow's strategy here of just AoE, ta like tanking every dungeon. They're just getting all the mobs grouped together, big pulls, they're rank one blizzarding, and they're engineering bombing everything uh, in the dungeon all at re once. Really making use of uh, Raizuko on the priest, able to put out bubbles, put out uh, renews, you know, a lot of preemptive healing, not to mention just having fortitude, you know, an extra, what is it, 20 uh, stamina, an extra 200 health on every single party member. Fortitude That's is legitimately huge. one of the most broken buffs in this game. And, it and is you so see, good. You see a great skip here coming. So they only need two of these officers, those really utilizing the roof uh, to try and get a little bit. Oh, we got the pet pull, got like the, the, the pet pet pull though. A little bit. And Unless that was the strat. Forced error here. They're going to have to nuke it all down. I mean, hey, par for the course on their normal strat. 
Yeah, there's and, a and bomb I don't goes think, out. Looking at how close they are to dinging 24, I don't think they're going to be particularly annoyed at having the XP after this uh, little combat encounter. Do you train? I don't even think you train. I think you just go straight to BFD. Mm -hmm. It's only F if you ding I think, 24. I think there's only like certain classes that will hit certain places um, during any of the circuits that'll be worth to train. Mages will have very easy ways of getting through places as they finally get portals and such. Um, they can already True. teleport now, but getting portals later will make mages really solid in the later circuits. But one thing that Certainly. we're seeing here is the hunter moving forward and doing a lot of the pulling. Huge pulls over here. And this is one of the biggest things that we usually see in speed runs that I love that they're employing here today is having a hunter that's always running forward and pulling. It'll just make all of the running times so much quicker for their group. So the phenomenal work here over on this team from Chippa. Wow. Absolutely. And I think that we see like a, a really uh, cool contrast here in Bobka's team with no CC, you know, again, just about in the same place, you know, they're, they've got two, maybe three mobs on them at a time, but they're just dragging that mob. You know, they're never really stopping with it. Until right now, and this I think is where we want, we are going to see one of the first big plays. Uh, or I, I should yeah, this first, Railing Caverns was a big play, but no CC has a fantastic strategy for this room that I am incredibly excited to see how it plays out. This this room, if you guys don't know, if maybe it's been a while since you've ran SFK, this room you can pull above you on accident, and the entire dungeon it feels like starts running at your character. Yeah. So what so what they're going to do is they're going to try and take care of all of the trash requirements they need to take care of right at the front end of this room. Keep in mind, there's a loop and horror uh, right at the end uh, with uh, not Fenris, but uh, Nando's the um, the wolf master mm -hmm. They're pulling all of the mobs here that they need. Oh, it looks like they pulled by accident. They did. They did. Pull the they did pull. Oh, the this is scary. This is going to be a very scary moment for this team. Yep, they've got a lot coming. They dr preemptively dropped the target dummy. You're actually going to start seeing, look at this. You see tactics, you see Bobka. You see the a lot spot. of these teams. Yeah, go to the evade spot up above the stairs. Uh, if you want to swap over to Cargos or Grays, you'll see that. But what we're actually going to start seeing out of um, Bobka is he's trying to get aggro on all of these mobs. It looks like he brought Cargos with him um, as a change of their plan. But they're going to be taking all of these mobs over to an evade spot. Uh, for some reason, mobs over here just can't follow you over here. So we're going to start seeing them evade out. The rest of their team uh, is going to be moving past where these mobs uh, actually are spawned. So they're going to be sitting there until they get out of combat. Oh, this is man, interesting. It looks, like all, it, it looks like this really did not go according to plan. This could end up costing them quite a bit of time. Yeah, those mobs are supposed to be resetting, right? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, though, oh, there, there's for, the, the team that did no skips, Chippa Wow's team just got through the room. So we actually see an instance where not only was Gray's heart rate elevated up to 105, but it actually <laughs> took them more time to get through that room than just pressing W through all of the content. So yes. wow, they they actually it all not down. playing off from one of our front runner teams. Graze is still stuck there. They they are having a really hard time. Oh, They've Graze. decided to drop down. Oh my god! I think they're just gonna fight it. They might they might target dummy. They might target dummy and run. This is yeah, actually might have a serious really problem scary here. here. Target dummy's out. Target dummy's out. Okay. Yeah, so I think that what they're going to try and do is target dummy and all get to this evade spot, do a full reset, and come back to it with a clean slate. That's a rough. That's yeah, a rough and one. Keep, keep in mind, you can see uh, in these uh, raid frames, they've got Gift of Arugal out on three of their team members. Uh, Dustbone has it, Grace for Days has it, and Tactics has it. T three people who are taking quite a bit of damage. And to have uh, damage going out of them from a curse that they can't dispel every 60 seconds for the next five minutes is a pretty big risk. Yep. And we've learned today that Grace for Days needs to work on his cardio just a little bit to get that heart rate down in these yes. high, high tense <laughs> situations. Otherwise, when we get to BRD, my man might, you know, we might be having some issues in the oh, later certainly. circuits. All right. So it looks like I'm taking a look uh, back at uh, Hellfire and CNX Circus. It looks like CNX Circus, their PTR is really starting to pay off. You can see them really taking off past Hellfire in this dungeon. 
they're about to get to Galahast, the Murloc boss. I, I'm really excited to see uh, how they approach this room. You actually don't need a lot of the trash in this room, but it's really hard to get to the trash or to the boss in this room. So we'll see if they, uh, you know, try and evade some out, if they zug through it, if they utilize this mage to just AOE everything all at the same time. Uh, definitely something hard to do with casters. Yes. So it'll be a great, great thing to see. This just room is scary because it. these oracles hate to move. So if you have melee DPS, like running towards them can be so intimidating to try to get a kick to get them to move. We have uh, we have Ellie group. Uh, Danger Noodles is over here fighting Archmage Aragal currently. Remember, they with came here after Dead Mines. Mm -hmm. Yes, with Ooh, LEB taking ooh, taking some damage. Half of her health almost gone in one Shadow Bolt from Aragal. Shows just how careful you have to be here. They actually do have five people in the dungeon, and I think that is a clarification of the rules that you might need to ping them about yep yes i would agree on that one but as this boss dies we're doing the giveaway right yes as this boss dies we're going to do the first giveaway guys and we're going to give away heroic edition of wrath of the lich king shout out again to blizzard for actually providing us with some giveaway codes to actually kind of show support for the community and for the event there yeah, it is. Absolutely. They do get the kill, and they're actually their road gets pretty low there. Yeah, Belt of Argal drop. That's not a bad drop at all. Not a bad drop in any way. You actually do have a chip of WoW's team. Got through Nando's. They're killing all of the sons of Argal right at the same time. They're actually catching up, yes. All right, and, guys. and on this team, you've actually got the mage who's able to decurse, so they're walking into Argal with no fear of extra damage coming out. You know, that'll be another big difference in how Bobka's team has to react here, no CC. Because against these Bobka's Argyle, team, team is still... Kicks. They're still dropping target dummies and trying to evade this room. Why not just fight it? They're not fighting it still. Oh my they gosh. They're still trying to get this evade, but what, what are they doing? They are losing a lot of time here. This is like seven minutes off the clock of them doing this, by the way. This is a lot. Like, yeah, this is terrible for them. Oh, certainly. Why not just fight it? I'm not sure. But as Chippa Wow gets the kill here, uh, thank you everyone who joined in on the giveaway. I'm going to roll it out as Chippa Wow gets the kill. I should show you guys the roll. So Vidir is like, taking the definite lead here in those who chose to go SFK. They'll be right on their way to BFT uh, for their final clear of the day. Yo, did Vigo just win? Vigo just won. Vigo and Vigo. Yo, let's go, Vigo. Vigo, yeah, send, send me a, a direct message here on Twitch and, and congratulations on being the first winner of the giveaway, the free giveaway of the Heroic Edition of World of Warcraft Classic, Wrath of the Lich King, which also, of course, gives you access to the Classic Realms so that you can also come in here and join the hardcore. Robes of Argal here for Chippa Wow's team. Beautiful Passive drop. drop for a priest Huge. as well. Huge. Mm -hmm. If you have a priest on your team, you definitely want those robes on the priest, in my opinion. Absolutely. So I think I'd rather have the belt. Cargo's team finally moving through this room. They're actually finally decided to probably just kill things. Oh, we, we need to watch Calamity's team right now. They're doing the BFD. Interesting strat. They're in the water oh, yeah. room. So, so this is a room where you can kind of swim around all of these mobs uh, through the water. And all of them have uh, not only uh, the fish trinket to get a little movement speed, but everybody but Ellen actually has swim speed potions as well. That's actually mind blowing that they all have swim speed potions on like like on lock. Yeah, for this dungeon, very specifically. When do you get to use those ever again in these dungeon circuits? I was uh, trying to think. I mean, I think that there's like maybe a very brief window in Maradon when you drop down the waterfall trying to get to uh, the inner sanctum just yeah. to get through there but i think yeah. that other than like and that's only saving you maybe 10 seconds tops but i, I think, think that we're not going to see yeah, any water lava skip eventually so the lava maybe. oh we're dude so we are going to see lava skips in brd by the way and that is going to be some of the most high intense scary moments because i've done a lava skip in hardcore before and yes. I, it, it's disgusting 
Oh, it, you you feel like you're it's just the dumbest thing to do ever i wouldn't recommend it but we're gonna see people doing it this is a pretty cool strategy out of the like or silver with chippa wow so their team uh they started with their hearth in westfall they actually reset it on their way up to sfk so that it would be an iron forge and now they're going to fly out to wetlands take the boat um over to darkshore uh to end up doing bfd their last dungeon they really are interesting towards the last use dungeon. of changing hearts phenomenal here. Yeah, it's, but oh, meanwhile, look at, meanwhile, look at we've got a, how fast they swim. Yeah, meanwhile, we've got <laughs> CNX Circus just zooming oh my through god. water. How did they swim that fast? Oh my god, swim they're speed, so fast. Swim dude. speed potion actually stacks on top of the trinket that they mm. got from the fishing tournament, which that all is of them insane. have. Insane. Look at that. Everyone in this group has the swim speed po potion, and they're pulling a little bit with this. Maybe not on purpose, so we see the sheep come out here to yeah, do so, old so Syracuse. Think, so when you look at these uh, crabs on the floor, so all of those crabs are buggy. Basically, you know, if you're ever in there, it's always best to ignore it. But the threshers, I'm very sure that they planned out, okay, how can we get through this water pulling the minimum number of threshers possible? And the way that they're going to get out of this water is pretty cool. There are a couple places on this platform that they have to get up to uh, to kill some of these twilight uh, cultists. Uh, where you can jump onto the platform directly from this water. Uh, there are a couple even, um, you know, that require pixel perfect jumping. So I'm really excited to see the path that they're about to take to get back on land and finish up these trash requirements. So it's it's looking like this is my assumption. Okay, so Chippo Wow with Vidir Enjoyers is clearly in the lead of of and all of today. They are on to the last dungeon. They're heading to BFD right now. Yeah, watching. Especially... We're wa oh, oh, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say we're watching uh, Calamity's team do BFD currently, but they still have SFK after this. They chose to do BFD yeah, before just SFK. Look at that jump though, with perfect execution. Everybody just jumping up the wall, getting up there. I mean, that's what you know. Twenty plus hours of PTR, PTR will give you on these dungeons. Being able to just skip oh. straight to Old Seracus and then get I... up there right at the end, ready to go into the next room. I just realized, are they going to click all of the braziers at once? That will be an interesting speed. Call. That will yes, be so, so scary. I'm really, I'm really interested to see. I like understanding that I think uh, CNX Circus is pulling insane dungeon clear times specifically, but the routing from Chippa Wow's team, uh, the it, Deer Enjoyers, is unmatched. To be yeah, honest, so I'm it's really, amazing. I'm really interested to see because CNX Circus is going to have to Hearthstone back out to Astronar and make their way to SFK after this. Uh, yep. Meanwhile, and... Chippa Wow's team is already getting to the boat to yes. head to uh, Darkshore, and and so we're they're seeing looking to be entering the last dungeon way ahead of anybody else. And we're seeing right now, we're seeing No CC fighting Aragal. So that that time sink of them trying to evade those mobs really bit them hard they they are so far behind can they get to bfd faster they're actually the only group we've seen that actually is fighting aragal in its normal location mm -hmm. yeah yeah they're just they're just zug zugging yeah they, they even had a son of arugal up they were hoping to be able to skip it but it looks like they uh they had to pull it off of a fear Yeah, so they're still dealing with two sons of Aragal, having a pet tank one, pet goes down here for cargos. It was just tanking that the whole time, and then they're also using their target dummies to tank the other ones. Yep. Now they'll have to kill it, but at least they are going to be moving on to their last dungeon. And they also, I think they got the belt. I might have missed that. I think yeah, they, they got, also they got, got belt the belt and feline, feline mantle in the belt. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so pretty good drops here. You've got a... You've got a Hellfire FC... Uh, utilizing their paladin to tank a little bit more, and they're actually doing Blizzard plus Reign of Fire in their uh, spell cleave comp. A massive pull from them, might I add, as everything's Hellfire, going down go. here. Yeah. So just fi just finishing up a pull here, uh, but my goodness, you know, a little bit behind CNX Circus, but a really cool strategy uh, to see employed for taking on some hefty pulls in this dungeon. And I love. Veneer enjoy or Vadir enjoyers. This is such a great team. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is this is a. I mean, it's just incredible. I, I am the speed a that they're going. Enjoyer, enjoyer. Yeah, I am a Vadir enjoyer enjoyer as well. Cargo's team 
hearthing out on peace team blasting through it is going to be interesting to see we'll see how many of these um braziers they they end up clicking at one time <laughs> so, so this boss is really interesting you technically don't have to kill every mob in this room but there are certain mobs uh that are uh, leashed. leashed to the boss yes so you can see the one that just pulled from across the room it's the two mobs that patrol on either side and they actually pulled just in time oh but it actually oh, it reset. started walking away I'm curious how they did that because it ran through. It looked like it ran through terrain. They have the tech. Mm -hmm. they I, have, I'm also, but they need oh, it. So it's so actually, they, they actually, yeah, they, they actually want... expected to take it. Uh, they probably wanted to get rid of it so that it wouldn't interfere with the braziers being killed. So even though they don't need this mob, they know for the sake of an efficient, effective clear, it needs to get killed. Oh, huge the... rod. And the rod coming in for Omni, oh going to be really happy about getting that one. 10 intellect, I think, uh, or no, 11 intellect, 10 spirit uh, is going to be the perfect stats for a mage who makes great use of both of those. Uh, so it looks like they're pulling just bonuses. one at the first time, just getting all four of the, mm -hmm. the turtles right away. Yeah, probably starting is... with the turtles uh, for a good reason. I, another thing that they're going to need to keep an eye out for is the elementals too. That's what I was going to say. One thing is is the elementals, if they're using anything like blizzards ever, but most of their AOE damage is coming from this arcane explosion. Their group has a ton of just steady damage at all times. The rogue got amazing weapons. The hunter is always just one of the strongest in these hardcore runs especially in classic and then having the mage for all of the aoe pulls they're just gonna do a, a lot here have we checked in on the missing diplomat yet uh i've been checking on them pretty routinely i've been following edgy's stream which i'll link uh they're actually uh not performing as well as i thought they would they are still in wailing caverns oh wow uh here i'll link it here in the staff panel Level 23 oh, in, and in and in Wailing Caverns moving through. They did get a, the shield for their tank, at least, which is a nice thing. Or for the Paladin, the which Paladin, is going to yeah. pretty much be the tank and healer yeah. during, through well, this from dungeon. What, so while they have a warrior, uh, the warrior's actually been benched for the day. They decided, hey, we're going to go in with the larger utility kit rather than relying on the higher uh, raw DPS from a warrior. And it also looks... Uh, like, yeah, they're they're pretty early in this dungeon, so a lot of their work still ahead. I'm kind of thinking that they might have been focused less on travel time than making sure that they really juiced out every bit of XP possible from their quests. Yeah, they might be able to move through the dungeon really quickly. And and for people watching and that don't know much about the scoring system, travel time is important, but it also is less important than the actual speed of the dungeons themselves. Since there are issues that can come up with travel time, it is less weighted in the scoring system than yeah. the actual speeds of the dungeon themselves. There's also less variance in your ability to kind of min-max dungeon time, uh, or sorry, uh, travel time over dungeon time you know yeah you can think uh, as hard as you want like chip at wow's team has clearly done uh in terms of routing and definitely gain a few minutes but in terms of you know holding your w key moving forward getting through that routing there's not much you can do yeah checking in here on zug life how are they doing they're also here in sfk moving through sfk and they have just the last kind of the the wolf bosses left so they're actually moving yeah. through at a it, very it solid like pace they're actually right on par so uh yeah team zug life is full of you know hardcore veterans um but none of them are particularly well known for speed running uh but meanwhile you know you've got them just about tied up with gertash's team uh what can you do who are wrath speed runners uh so you actually see the you know those two polar opposite uh, experiences coming in and going neck and neck. Yeah, they're at the exact same pull, actually. Mm -hmm. So from Wrath speedrunning to to classic hardcore teams, everyone is doing really well here. It looks like the, the teams that prepared the most are pumping. Chippo Wow's team, though, the, the hardcore veterans moving ridiculously fast, and they're actually doing a lot more of pull big and AOE it down, which I think will be a huge advantage later on, mm -hmm. where they're utilizing the hunter 
to pull a lot of things, I think that really sets them up for a a very, very solid circuit two, three, and four, and grand finals. Absolutely. And we're actually seeing CN next circus kiting Akumai, uh, keeping hamstring up on it at all times. It's a level 28, five or four levels above them. They dinged 24 in this dungeon. Um, Peter Zen keeping threat to keep it on the move. They're about to finish their last boss. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they are going to either go, uh, you know, run back down and get that teleport to Darnassus if they need to turn in quest or hit the bank or train even. Or, yeah, it looks like they're all going that route. So they're all going to head straight to Darn, uh, hopefully uh, being able to take uh, either the the boat out. Uh, they might decide to Hearthstone, or at the very least, they could just be getting the buff at the end of this dungeon even. Yeah, a little bit of extra. It's it's mm -hmm. intellect and some frost damage. I remember uh, getting yes, this buff. It's like spirit, intellect, and 15 frost damage, I think. I remember you would get this buff to min-max back in Classic. You literally would get this buff as like mm -hmm. either before or after the rest of your world buffs, and then you would just Absolutely. do a little bit extra damage. So Yeah, so now that they're done with this dungeon, they're not even worried about being in combat. You know, you see Mud Maniac Ampi here just polymorphing mobs. They're saying, yep, we're grabbing our buff. We are out of here. So they must be teleporting to Darnassus. I'm really interested in this routing. It's incredibly peculiar. They also did not go to turn in that quest that we were talking about earlier. So it's a little bit intimidating. On PC seeing everything, now they finally all get ported out. So they're all safe. And they've got one dungeon left. Let's yep. check over Team No CC also wow. around the same situation. You see them they are so picking... fast. Yeah, you see them picking up a lot of ground over Chippo Wow's team. Uh, because of that horde privilege here in the first circuit, just the better flight paths. You know, they've been going to Camp T every single time. You can see that they re-upped on Blood Shards yet again. Uh, yes. and they're already in the Zorum Strand. Uh, whereas, you know, Chippa Wow, kind of the first of the pack here for Vidir Enjoyers. Okay, uh, and that's largely because he's got Aspect of the Cheetah. Yeah, it's actually crazy how, how much Team No CC has caught up. They lost a lot of time inside of SFK, but it's really crazy how much they've caught up just outside of the dungeon because of that routing. Also, uh, the, uh, if you could only, could you post the rules, if you have a link to the rules just in the chat here, guys. So we have the rules for everybody. There are spreadsheets and breakdowns for them. We can also go to the Discord for the Hardcore All-Star but you can also go to XMH point HCAS to see the leaderboards, the events, and join in on the event. Anyone wondering if they could also join in, you can still actually register to participate, and you could still win the $5,000 grand prize, even though you missed the first circuit. It just, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage because people are getting quite a bit of points here um, <laughs> with the first circuit, for sure. Yeah, so I'm going to post uh, first a, a Google drive link here to the full rule book uh, and then i'm going to post uh, our hardcore all-stars discord you can visit the rules page uh, which has a pretty good summary of them as well yes and i will make commands for them all Team Hellfire Club getting a cloak here, kind of actually pretty nice, eight spirit cloak. They didn't need the dagger anyways, so it's probably one of the best drops they could get from Old Syracuse, and now they will also move on towards the last two bosses, Twilight Lord, Kelris, and Akumai in BFD. We've only seen one guild so far kill, or one group so far kill Akumai, and it looks like Hellfire Club might also go for the jump up spot. It looks like they are. They will go up for the jump jump up spot. And we saw the that Ompi's group had literally a pixel perfect jump up. And they're going in a slightly different location than we saw from Ompi's group. There we go, though. They all make it up really clean, and now they're going to deal with these Twilight Occultist groups, or Twilight Acolyte groups, which actually, if you had the early version of the Weak Aura, just a reminder to anyone that's joining this, if you had the early version of the Weak Aura, we pushed out before today's runs an update because the Acolytes, uh, to be honest, my fault, were, were not inside of the the week or it wasn't tracking that so if anyone wants to join in or wants to tr practice any of these runs the week auras are all public and you can download all of the week auras for the dungeons so far the ones that are made oh my god the the mobs running away this is actually 
terrifying for the group. They pulled so much because they let everything fully run away and things are healing. Yeah, this we is a lot of damage deaths. playing down. We might see our first deaths. This like, is a lot of spread out damage, a lot of cleave. Casters free cast, and they're trying their best to make it to these LOS positions. Oh my gosh. A fall off from Leanne. A fall off from Leanne that actually grabs a Thresher that might come towards them. Oh my gosh, here we go. The Paladin is, is one hit oh, away in bubble. And, and There's one death. They're... Oh no. You hate to see it Wispo, the first one to go down here. This is the falling. Skeppo might make it out. Skeppo, Skeppo down as well. Is this a full team wipe? This is, remember the group that technically wasn't running with the tank. Oh my gosh, Leanne just knows it's happening. And the Thresher takes Leanne down. Swan, the last person alive in the group. And everyone oh, here man. has to delete their characters. That is not good, you guys. You hate to see it. Some of these characters had 60, 70, 80 hours of prep time. I know that this team had done some PTR. And, you know, it, it just goes to show when you fine-tuned your plan so much, even the slightest mistake can send things out of control in a huge downward spiral. So yeah, if, big Fs in the chat for this team. Big if you're watching the stream... The yeah, if you're watching the stream, maybe you're maybe you're new to hardcore. When someone dies, you guys, it's typical. We put an F in the chat. Shout outs to Call of Duty for making that meme years and years ago. Show your respects with some Fs in the chat. They will go again. I guarantee you they will be in the next Absolutely. event. Um, now, this is an important thing, right? Let's say you are on a team that's not exactly speedrunning today. You just moved up in placement okay, one entire position because a team wiped, right? Yeah, team wiping, not being able to finish the circuit, that means that they have forfeited their points. All that progress today uh, is out the window. They're going to have to start from zero points next Yes, week. so if you can play the long game, come to all these circuits, actually survive. To be honest, you don't even need to go that fast. As long as you can survive the circuits, you'll probably end up top 10 in the teams. Because okay. so many teams are going to die in these later dungeons as well. And dying cool. outside of the dungeons is going to be a huge thing. We're going to have a reminder. We're going to have a recap before all of these runs okay, to sure break down who has actually died outside of the dungeons. Because a lot of groups stone. might have people dying while leveling hardcore. You have to remember that leveling to hardcore, leveling to level 60 and not dying the entire time is, is a legitimate challenge that is a struggle for a lot of people even though these groups most people are seasoned veterans in doing it one wrong move one mistake one crit two parries and you're dead this is unforgiving for sure oh absolutely and i i just want to kind of point our, our top three teams in terms of total uh circuit clear time you know looking at cnx circus no cc and vidir elixir uh, Vidir Elixir pulled ahead in BFD despite having that slower travel time. They're already killing Gamu Ra. Um, meanwhile, you know, Bobka's team with no CC, uh, you know, still on their way to the boss. They're not too far behind, um, but definitely a little bit of an edge there. And then conversely, you know, you've got Mud Maniac here, Ompi's team, uh, you know, looking at um, looking at seeing next circus, or I should say Parla's team as the captain. Uh, but, you know, they're still in flight to South Shore and they've got to run after that even to get into SFK. So despite it being a sl or a faster dungeon, you know, that travel time isn't something that you can just skip through. Yes. So they, they actually might be close or or ahead technically because their last dungeon is one of the shorter ones. We're definitely going to see as things all pan out. But Vidir Elixir's. I honestly, this is like the sleeper build, and I'm so impressed because how they're playing this. Chippo Wow, and I'm gonna link his his Twitch in the in our chat here, guys, so you guys can all show him a follow. Chippo Wow is doing so well at pulling everything and moving ahead. The group is grouping everything up, and then just having the mage like AOE it all down with slows is just phenomenal. They are doing so well, and this is like the epitome. This is peak speed running here, and we're seeing peak speed running in these lower level dungeons in hardcore scenes. I'm shocked. I did not think. I mean, I knew that the Vidir Enjoyers were going to be a good team. I did not think that this strategy was going to pan out the way it is with just consistent target dummy rotation and AOE damage. 
Yeah, this is the team that technically doesn't have a tank, right? Yeah, it's just the Hunter pet is the only tank that they really have. Oh, it's by gonna the way, be interesting you, you got, for the later phases. Yeah, by the way, you've got no CC doing another. The next one of their stealth missions, Graze for Days and Bobka went ahead, killing Lady Cerves, two man. Oh, well, the they rest love of this split. Goes off on another mission. Really excited to see this split play, making use of that double stealth comp. Yeah, this is really a, a big advantage they have where they did get good drops also. So the two mm -hmm. mobs, even if mobs are higher level, they can still do a, a decent amount of damage as long as Graze has enough mana to keep himself alive and they rotate CDs with Bobka. If he ever pulls aggro, just pretty much using evasion and using kicks and such. But he's obviously oh, going to do that as a multi-glad rank one player. Absolutely. Yeah, but I will say, even with uh, Chippo Wow's team, Vadir Elixir, you know, not splitting up, they're actually still ahead, uh, you know, because you've got Tactics, Cargos, Dustbone, killing the Turtles, killing uh, Gamura, um, while Lady Seraphis is going on. Vidir Elixirs is already moving to their their quest to get their uh, Wand Enjoyers, a little bit of an upgrade, and they're ready yeah. to move on out of this room. And One thing we're nice. seeing here is these Hunters, right? Most of the hunters went engineering. They're crafting actually better ammo right now that you can buy from the vendor at level. You'll notice that they're using guns as opposed to typically when you're leveling, you want to go with bows. Uh, the reason they're using guns is because if you're an engineer, you can craft silver plated shotgun and it's ridiculously good. Yeah. And uh, at, at this level of bracket. Of the, uh, the rank two, sometimes even rank three scope, if you're lucky, for plus three damage on every hit. I mean, you got to think about, you know, how many bullets these guys are going in, probably thousands. You know, if you're adding three damage to every single one of those auto shots, every single multi shot and arcane shot, you know, that's quite a lot of damage. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, it's it's going to be interesting. It, you know what's a really weird thing? I don't think we've seen a single uh, Venom Strike drop from Wailing Caverns today, no. which would have been a massive upgrade. I wonder if Hunters brought arrows just in just case in Venom case. Strike dropped. That's also something I think we're going to see in the next in the next split is the next circuit is 32 and a half is the highest level. And at 30 at level 30, you can start the quests for the uh, SFK gun and bow, right? Mm hmm. Which is yes. going to be really intimidating, really hard to do. But we did hear on the podcast yesterday that there is a strategy to be able to solo all of those mobs. So for hardcore characters, you should have to deal with all of that yourself and solo all of the quest uh, mobs. And there is a place in SFK or in in STV that you can actually kind of glitch mobs to be able to to use pathing to kill them all. <laughs> All right, I'm going to blow your mind right now, Sarth. I have had two different people tell me their strategy for soloing Whirlwind Axe before next circuit. Whirlwind at level 30. Axe at 32. At 32 will on be a hardcore character. Massive. There will be warriors next circuit walking into these dungeons with a Whirlwind Axe. That they had to solo open world. And if you've ever played a warrior in classic, which I think most people have, right? Yes. You know just how hard that quest can be. You have to kill the elementals. You have to kill sight lip. The, just, just the elementals to get mm -hmm. the pre-quest done is insane. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Big I gotta say, I'm, I'm really excited to see, you know, I uh, just how far... Vidir Elixir or, or Vidir Enjoyers and No CC are getting into BFD when again we still have CNX Circus on their way running, not even still out running? of Ill's Oh bracket. my gosh, that's so far. They have a, such a far journey just to get to SFK. Yeah, so it really seems as though they they may just be throwing away, you know, quite a few points, four or five points on, uh, you know, circuit points here alone, uh, you know, and unless they are beating out the rest of these teams by a substantial margin, uh, it's unclear if they'll make that up in the total uh, from their dungeon clear times, because yeah, you can, you know, guarantee first, first place finish on all these individual dungeons, but that's not really going to matter if second place team is just one point under you and you've lost five, six, even seven points in your circuit clear time. Yeah. I can't believe this, but this is so crazy to me. First of all, team no CC 
Grace for Days Cargo's Ompy, the not you, you know the boys, right? Yep. The boys. They had potentially the biggest time save in Wailing Caverns. Their horde. They have blood shards for additional run speed that these alliance players don't have. And they made all of the right plays until SFK, and it all fell behind because of that one room. They, yeah, they the, may the yeah. very well Chippos, have been deep in first place. Yeah, the, the fact that Chippo Wow's crew is is ahead right now with Vadir and Joyers is actually kind of mind-blowing just based on the fact that no CC has had a movement speed buff this entire time and better routing in the dungeons. The movement speed buff, though, is only five minutes. That's the unfortunate oh, thing. Oh, true, so true. You used to actually cheekily use it in speed runs where you would get it was the last thing you would get and you would get summoned. But you have to be obviously afraid if there was like a big brain priest dispeller that was just waiting there for speedrunners. But just but being was, horde, though, in circuit one here, like being horde today is a huge advantage for travel time. Yes, and there's going to be some and circuits they still we're fell having, off. We're having like next circuit where we're being horde and having axe spe specialty is going to be a large thing as well. We have to Absolutely. think about that as well. Yeah, I, I think it's a really interesting thing. You know, there was so much talk during the registration phase of this competition about how horde was being given an unfair advantage on, um, you know, circuit time and routing time um, because of these better flight paths that they have, and that we're clearly seeing with OCC. But you got to give it to these alliance teams. Two out of the three front runner teams are alliance going into this. Uh, and they each took different routes, um, you know, yep. through these dungeons. Honestly, Vadir Elixirs, they're using target dummies on like every pole, rotating mm -hmm. through all of their engineering mats. They have this all planned out so well. They had to have spent above 50 hours per player just farming mining nodes in places that all of the mobs are red and if one of them actually reaches you could probably kill you i'm le like i'm more impressed with the fact that they farmed wool cloth without getting xp at 22 yeah. <laughs> right like how do you get wool what mobs do you kill for wool that don't get you over the 22 and a half threshold of level like of XP? Yeah. So, I mean, these teams must have been starting to farm it as early as 17, 18, just willing to farm orange mobs, even red mobs, even if if uh, we see any in their VOD review here uh, when they submit those leveling clips. But yeah, there's no way they skin sheep. There's it takes like 20 hours to get two wool. Well, if plus, you I mean, skin you're, sheep, you are locked Worth into your it. professions. So, you know, uh, they, oh yeah, you're, they, they are locking skinning, yeah. mining and engineering. Uh, so you know, skinning sheep is not an option. One thing that they could be doing, uh, you know, for um, for leathers is fishing. But you know, you're not getting uh, raw wool, raw silk, raw linen out of fishing trunks. You're getting bolts. So you know, yeah. it really is killing mobs. Uh, chests. Somebody's saying definitely farming chests is a possibility. But you got to admit, the number of chests that you can actually find uh, with wool in them pretty hard to come by without having to kill a few mobs yeah yeah and we That's... see over here from team no cc they actually tried to pull the boss uh galehast by himself and accidentally pulled two mobs with mm -hmm. him it shouldn't be that intimidating for him they they are all level 23 and 24 so it shouldn't be too intimidating but they they clean it up pretty well but they, that just adds on to a little bit of extra time where they didn't actually have to kill those murlocs for the trash requirements so we really are in a neck and neck race right here in bfd between the deer enjoyers and no cc yes. like they are literally on top of each other yeah they are they are they actually uh, are. take circuit first clear time in circuit one the premier event yes. for this uh tournament I don't think that the uh, I don't think that Calamity's team is going to be able to bring this one out. They just opened the door in SFK to the to the uh, like open area. I, I guess. Know. Look at this. Look pulse. at this. I'm pull. watching. I'm watching Parla's POV, and it is absolute insanity seeing him just pull every mob possible, knowing exactly what route, knowing exactly what mobs they need to pull and the patrols they need to hit uh, to make this pull happen. What great execution out of this! Are they going to make a little skip here? It looks like they did get a distract. Uh, they did. They opt to go and kill the, the yes, mobs. So I, I think that they missed their opportunity to pull one of those patrols and they didn't feel like they had the opportunity to wait for it to move. So they're just saying, screw it. Let's kill all three. 
Yeah, still grabbing everything together. This yep, group They're has... going to try and make this pull a little bit bigger to make it worth their while. That that lost uh, time that they had to do to kill what looks like is going to be two extra mobs that they didn't plan for. Mm -hmm. they're, they are actually probably the most honed in we've seen from like the week, whereas that they have been pulling like exactly the amount of mobs that are required for most of the group for most of the dungeons. Mm -hmm. I am locked in on these runs right now. This is incredible. Like oh, the, the cool. fact that they're like, they're two pulls behind each other. Like, whatever team uh, here holds W harder wins. Cargos and Absolutely. no C and and uh, Vadir enjoyers. Yeah, yeah, for first place. This is a they tight, really tight are. race. Yeah, they truly are just two packs behind. This is really exciting to see. If they just like, if they said screw it, I'm gonna hold W and get two packs ahead right now, they might actually win if they pop all their cooldowns and just like pump really hard. Also, whoever you know, wins this tournament, whoever wins today uh, is the first clear of the entire thing. We'll do another giveaway today, guys, and we'll do an epic edition of Wrath of the Lich King. So if you want to join on that, you can exclamation point giveaway in the chat and, and we will do that whenever Absolutely. they completely finish this and one more time shout out to blizzard for providing us with these giveaway codes really 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 appreciate it this is really interesting you guys if they're about to get to the room with the water in it if if either of these teams have swim speed pots it's almost they're they're just like pulling ahead so, just like yeah, a little so, bit so what, right? I, what i can tell you is that for team no cc uh, you know, Grace for Days and Dustbone, the Druid and Shaman, are the only alchemists on this team. You know, so we might see it from them if they want to go ahead and pull Sarakis back to the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a pretty interesting comp. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm tempted to say even questionable uh, to decide to go in for Old Sarakis as a two-man for. So we'll see what their big decision is here. They might even use this opportunity to do yet another two-man stealth, stealth group. mission. Yeah. But if they but do it looks that, like it would actually be insane. Water. So their entire team is opting not to go through the trench, uh, which you know definitely gets through more trash than you need. But they're going to use the water. They're going to use these jump spots back up onto the platform. Uh, we'll see if they clear five man. Uh, the rest of the team goes on to the next room, and then they do Syracuse. They'll see if they split up immediately. They'll see if we'll see if they go in all together. Yeah, we have two strategies coming out. Chippo's team, Vadir Enjoyers, is choosing the pathway, and it looks like. No CC is choosing to go swimming. So we'll see how this affects. I'm not sure if if swimming is the play. If you have the, the DPS to kill these, these mobs on the pathway fast, it's probably better to just run to where you need to jump off the bridge, jump off, kill the Absolutely. mob, and then and then ledge hop your way back up, right? It also looks like Team No CC is going to pull more than we've seen any other group pull before, really. We haven't seen any of the groups in BFD kill this group right here in the middle bit of the pathway. Oh, but so, it looks like a Chippa Wow's group has pulled the exact same crew plus an extra yes. pack at the same time. An oh. even bigger pull. They say, we see you pulling big. We'll one up you. Look at the grenade damage. All those mobs are at 50% HP after everyone this just grenaded. This massive damage. Oh my gosh. I wish that Chippa Wow had an individual uh damage meter. I'm seeing overall and I got baited seeing 38 and a half thousand damage yeah. from Unchained. But unfortunately that's over the course of the entire day. I'm gonna take a look uh, to see if we can get some updated numbers from that. The team. grenades on that pull was insane. Yeah, you have solid dynamite right now they they have like oh, the best grenades you can really get they have big iron they bombs do. they do so, okay, so much so damage I've got, yeah. I've got updated numbers from that pull alone and they are insane their mage did 3.6k damage same as their hunter their paladin 3.3k their rogue 2.7 their priest did 2.6k they have big iron bombs they farmed iron at level 22. I know. I, I'm pretty sure that Raizuko... So <laughs> Raizuko, their, Raizuko, their priest, is using Holy Nova. The yes. infamously bad priest AoE but spell. But it's so good. And it causes it's working no threat. For it causes but no it's threat. It's so good. good, yeah. It's so good. Insane. I cannot believe they, they farmed iron in red mob zones. At all five of them had to solo farm their engineering this high yeah all of them by themselves 
playing it and being afraid of everything. No mm. one to protect you. If- yeah, no trading, no auction house, no grouping. Just you versus the world turning WoW into a single player game as long any time outside of these dungeons. So That's incredible. The but you, min you maxing. So from from Vadir Elixirs, not having a good kick option with just that one rogue, definitely letting a couple of these heals go through. But again, the damage that's coming out here, just the sheer DPS numbers are enough to get them down quick enough. Yeah, I knew this team was going to be good coming into this. I did not think that they were going to be pumping this yeah. hard. So, so literally, they are about 1,000 damage in front of uh, no CC. No CC choosing to take the water route saved them time, 100%. Um, oh, and you can actually see Graze for Days from No CC going into seal form, porpoise form, if you will, to go He's get a porpoise. Americas. He's porpoising. He's porpoising. Meanwhile, <laughs> we've got Vidir enjoyers going in with all five, choosing to nuke down. They're all going to be swimming here. And Vadir and Joys, you want to look at this. They're probably popping their water elixir quests from uh, the Thresh Wackadon. Absolutely. No. Which is a, something that Horde doesn't get. Alliance gets the Thresh Wackadon. You get five underwater breathing potions. They do not get that on Horde. Absolutely. I will say, Grace, oh, no CC had Old Sericus way in the back there. The worst possible spawn location. Grace or Days had to go all the way back there. They have to kill extra Threshers just to get the boss. This Definitely is actually a them. large yeah. pull for them, yeah. So they, they did end up having to be all together because of that extra trash that they had to go through. Graze was trying to solo it, but he had two mobs on him, got down to like 30% health and was melting fast before. He yeah, what a beautiful yeah. porpoise play. The porpoise play came out and it actually <laughs> caught them up. They are it, they're ahead slightly. They are about... Well, and you can see 30% HP okay, ahead five and rising. From yeah, that. he's so nervous. Porpoise, your daily porpoise play brought to you by HC Elite sponsoring the <laughs> world tour from HCAS. Thank you, HC Elite. The uh, classic WoW's premier hardcore level 60 rating guild dropping in the huge $5,000 sponsorship to for us to provide a prize pool for these great competitors. They're going into BWL tomorrow, from what I hear. Wild stuff. Crazy. Oh, it's oh, first hardcore so it's BWL tomorrow. The circus in the middle of a skip, by the way. They are in SFK right now. Trying to make use of a clever little jump. It actually did do something. I see Franklin in chat saying, did it actually do anything? That porpoise play pulled Sericus to the rest of their group fast enough to, to get the pull before the deer enjoyers did Absolutely. this multi view is 100% needed. These next two bosses are going to be. Yeah, this is going to be so close. So we just saw uh see a next circus do perform the skip that I'm pretty sure uh, no CC failed. And they are now on the bridge having skipped the entirety of the room below that infamous room in SFK. And yeah, let me grab that. Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't they, know got, they, they got past all of it. They got past all of the trash, and now they can just yeah, this, forward. This could be tight. This is, the bridge. this is tight no, between all three of the teams. They, they could win. win. They could win it just from that alone. They've gone through this dungeon so quickly. They are flying through SFK. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. All you guys, right. they could win this. This is a tight race between these three teams. This is what This is what you live for, to be honest. This is what it's all about. Let's see. Okay, what do the BFT teams have to do? They have to click all four of the buttons all at once. Big, big damage, and, big and fight, right? Bosses. And then they have to fight two bosses. There's two bosses left in SFK. There's Fenris and and Aragal, right? No, and uh, Wolfmaster Nandos. So, okay, so Fenris, okay. they've, they have to kill him, and then they have to wait for five Voidwalkers to spawn, kill those, and then they can go on to Nandos. For Nandos, they've got, uh, you know, a pretty decent number of mobs to kill, but again, they've had no issue killing mobs this uh, this race. Uh, this is we'll one have- of the coolest moments, dude. I'm <laughs> telling you, we have two BFD teams yeah. in the same location doing so, the same things. Yeah, so yes. CNX Circus will have to kill all three of the Sons of Aragal before killing Aragal. Uh, so it's a decent amount of stuff. I think that their biggest time gate will be that RP uh, bit after killing Fenris here that they're just coming up on too. But yeah, meanwhile, you know, I th- I think that for no CC and Vadir enjoyers, it's just a matter of 
how much pressing W you can really do. It's game time. I, I think whichever team here clicks all four of the things at once and fights it, which I have a feeling oh the Deer God. Enjoyers is going to do because they have the I've grenades, got, right? I need to handle it. No CC can't do it. They don't have the AOE, but Vadir, Vadir does have the grenades. They do have the target dummies. They do have the mage. They have pulled off massive pulls already. So they are they are the ones to watch to see if they pull that off. So but hey, look at them. They're fighting orange mobs already. I'm and, fairly certain that they're gonna they're just gonna pull this entire room. And Ompi's team is already on the second to last boss in SFK. Although we do have to remember they do have a little bit of of a penalty that we need to deal with because of the um mutinous, the mutinous, mutinous to despawn, yeah. Yeah, big shame, you know, for a team that's gone through so much PTR. I'm surprised that they haven't found out uh how to deal with that bug before. We are mm -hmm. we are both fighting Twilight Lord right now. Yeah, this so is going to come down to Akumai. Who can kill Akumai faster than than they can kill Aragal? Oh, absolutely. Are they fighting Aragal right now? They are. Yes. They are fighting the sons of Aragal. They're about to pull Aragal right now. Yeah, so, so I think no way. Pending the uh, weird mix up with Mutinous not spawning in their dungeon. Uh, and us needing to take their VOD into review. We've got a winner of Circuit 1. Despite taking some interesting choices in the circuit, they really made up for this in their dungeon clear times. Clearly a lot of preparation, a lot of hard work and planning uh, having gone into this. Also incredible loot with the Cruel Barb, Prospector's Axe, and, and oh, Deadmines. Yeah, the RNG was on their sides absolutely here. And and that's it. That's going to be Archmage Arugal going down. They have now cleared all of the dungeons. They have done it. See you next, Circus. Pending the reviews, looks like the first, not even looks like, it is the first group to full clear basically everything, even with the slower transitionary time. They still made up for it and still took it. Massive GGs to See mm -hmm. You Next Circus. Peter, Parla. Uh, Ampi, what a phenomenal team here. Calamity, LD, amazing. And I'll link this here in the chat. We can go back to the head to head for a second right here. And I don't think we had anyone pull all of the, no one clicked all of the, all of the Brazzers. No, they, um, they both decided to start with turtles, it looks like. Both finishing them up back. To I can't back. believe they're both doing this. All it, do they not know that they're this close in a race right now? They, they might not know that there's another team How this close. How would you know? You're, this is the only thing you can pay attention to. You'd be so nervous. They, yeah, there has to be. I'm not They've gonna lie. Informed. I'm gonna They've say this. Informed. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna say it. And th th I'm, this is. This is the truth, though. SFK fucked those. Their team. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Absolutely. That, that that's SFK lost poll it. lost them seven minutes, and they lost this entire day because of that SFK run. Yep. You hate to see it, boys. Oh, you know, I think that we're going to have to take some time to to talk with all of the team captains from these three teams. Such great performances all around. Really interesting calls. Some some surprises in a good way. Some upsets. It'll be really great to hear from the teams uh, just how they were able to pull these off or not. Yeah, Vadir had a DC too. Where was Vadir's DC? Was it there in the water? Um, so that's even with a DC. They're mm -hmm. still doing extremely well. They're literally neck and neck, and now they're just getting... Actually, Vadir taking a head slightly, actually. Caught back up and is on the Elementals, which is one step ahead of these crabs. So Vadir is is looking good, right? Oh, certainly. Yeah, already on the Elementals as opposed to the crabs. I, and, and I think that you know what we're really seeing is Vadir's uh, ability to really melt down high armor targets a lot faster than no CC. You know, turtles and crabs known for having higher armor. Uh, okay, we've got it. Really, yeah. makes that they're still on these mobs. Vadir, yeah, pulling clearly ahead here. Let's see if they can get uh, our our good friend Akumai down. Maybe a strike of the Hydra drop. I don't think we've seen a strike of the Hydra today. Did? Which would be a huge drop. Oh, Honestly, they... I, I was waiting for us to see like a tree bark jacket drop for one of these casters. It would be nice to see an, an, a melee class with a really nice weapon. Has like anyone a, seen any of the other... Shadow. 
Shepherd any of the other teams wipe by the way in chat if you have let us know any of the other teams wipe that we missed since there are so many uh streams 150 pov streams i think you said it was there's a lot uh, there's 100, a 100 lot different streamers today uh 35 teams 217 different characters participating today what a competition he massive yeah. shout out to all of the participants and everyone in the hardcore community and everyone watching here today mm -hmm. this is just what a what a great tournament and one more time we are going to do the epic edition giveaway i'm just waiting for the teams to finish akumai so if you want to join in on the giveaway and, and win an epic edition of world of warcraft wrath of the lich king then exclamation point giveaway to get entered into that and here we have both teams getting close. First, Vadir Elixirs pulling Akumai. So no CC, actually having to deal with more Snapshots. And Vadir Elixirs pulling Akumai. This is where they're going to do the same thing, most likely. The Hunter has the most DPS, is going to actually be able to hold aggro, and they're going to just need to kite this as much as possible. Rank 1 Frostbolt's probably coming out. The Mage actually low on mana already, so maybe not Rank 1 Frostbolt's. If they end up with any issues of kiting here, this could be a little intimidating. There's their first target dummy. They do have the usage of all five target dummies also. Yeah, some pretty great plays here. It looks like Vadir Enjoyers is doing a tremendous job kiting, using those grenades, using the uh, target dummies, as well as the hunter kiting. Yeah, uh, slightly really ahead here. I, I will say yeah. that like when it when it comes to single target, you know, this is where no CC has been hoping to shine, that they can just melt this guy. And with Bob K getting the cruel barb, you know, I, I hoping that they've uh, they've got enough DPS. I will say though, no CC made the decision to not worry about turning in any quests. They decided not to go for crescent staff, not to go for wing blade. Big weapon upgrades like this could be making a bit of a difference. Can we talk about how on the winning team today? Ellen Degen has a cruel barb and a stinging viper. That's so yeah. unreal. There it is. Yeah, imagine, imagine there it is for Vadir. Yeah, Vadir coming in strong Vadir, with the second place amazing, today. Amazing, amazing, amazing job. And they got the moss cinch. Absolutely. Boom, this GGs. back up. Huge GGs for the second place there. Again, we do have to check in on the ruling and, and how it's going to pan out for... Um, for Ompi's team, but they they actually they were so far ahead that it really doesn't even matter. Yes, and if you are in the chat right now, if you're interested in keeping up with this, this is going to be an event that we are running for a long time, you guys. Uh, the, I just linked in the chat the leaderboard. Once we get all of the teams tallied up with their runs, we'll be doing VOD review, we'll be doing log review, we'll be making sure nobody's cheating. We will update the leaderboards. You can follow along with us over the next 11 weeks. We're going to be doing this event every two weeks, just about. Um, and it's going to be really, really fun, you guys. This is just the tip of the iceberg. It's going to get more dangerous and more sweaty from this point on. Also, if you're a team that lost today, you can still go again. Make a new team yes, and absolutely. continue on. There, if you let's say, let's say you died today, you wiped today. Right. Let's say that happened. You make another team, or your your team rerolls. Or let's say you just found the about next, the competition today. Yeah. Let's say you just found out about the competition today. You make a team. You come to the next cir circuit. Right. Mm -hmm. If any other team has a wipe during any of the next eleven weeks of events, right? We, you are now caught up. Just if you get to the level and you survive the dungeons, you will be accruing points. The the teams. The the worst thing that can happen is if you have a team wipe, because then you get no points for the day, basically. Yes. You so lose you can you can join. Points. You can join late. You can come in. You can start it now. You can sign up, j jump on the website, jump in the discord. You can and set I, up. You can I enjoy it. A second SFK wipe. A second oh, no. SFK wipe. OK, I'm going to let you send that to us. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get pull a clip right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, multiple teams who participated today who are going to be walking away from square one, just like any new team. Oh, only the prime minister of hardcore all stars. God, please. Yeah. If you wipe, to only. if you wipe in a circuit, do you get points for the dungeons you at least cleared during the circuit? You do not. You need to clear the entire circuit to be able to get points. We, we want to make sure that if you 
wipe in the finals and you're not even able to finish the entire circuit to have a hardcore 60 that you do not have eligibility to win the hardcore all-stars world tour that's the philosophy behind it it's going to hurt a lot of feelings right now but uh you know again you know not only is this a dungeon speed race but it's a hardcore race surviving and getting to 60 on these characters and as a team definitely matters yeah, Metaglo Which? Metagoblin's team here on Argal. He actually, oh my gosh, if he didn't have that potion, if he got hit again, he could have died there. So they got actually pretty low. Metagoblin now killing Argal. Argal is orange, level 26. And they're moving through. They're still all alive, so it's all pretty... Like, honestly, it's a good strategy for the for finishing in a very solid spot for the whole tournament like we were talking about earlier is just making sure that your team doesn't wipe through them you don't have to maybe push like the fastest crazy strategies um because there are teams here that are absolutely ptring and putting in tens hundreds of hours even now i think people are, are almost close to 100 hours on some of these characters put in time just to prepare for this first circuit Absolutely. And we have teams, you guys, there are so many teams. If we couldn't get to featuring your team today, we do apologize. It does happen. You know, we we're trying to keep up with the, the front runners as well. To, like the tight. I had no idea that race was going to be so tight. That was yeah. um, crazy. three, three teams. went three completely different routes and ended up within like five minutes of each other. Two of those were within 10, 10, 20 seconds of each other. Oh, absolutely. So I have the VOD. Uh, it, this is a wipe in SFK from uh, Bag Drops or Abyss. It is the longest death scene I have ever seen. I'm going to link you the VOD. Yes. But also, sure. as we're doing that, I'm going to do the next giveaway. We're going to run it. So yeah, if you joined excellent in, fun giveaway. So if you join it on the giveaway, I'm running it in one minute. Actually, I'm running it now. Let's see. You guys can see it. Roll it. And congratulations, Twidina. Twidina winning the actual epic edition of World of Warcraft Classic Wrath of the Lich King. One more time, shout out to Blizzard for supporting the event. This is honestly, I think, the, the largest fan done event outside of something Asmongold has done. And really, really happy to see the support from the actual company that makes this game. So, Twidina, send me a DM on Twitch and I will get you your Epic Edition. Here, yes, this is the name, absolutely. Twidina. Also, to uh, reiterate the, the status of the actual event right now, the there's some oh. things we need to figure out, but right now the first place team is indeed See You Next Circus. Then we were followed up by the Vidir Enjoyers, and and then third place was No CC. Mm -hmm. That's those are the teams that have finished thus far. There's going to be a lot more teams rolling in and finishing. Uh, and you know, if you finish, period, it doesn't matter if it takes you six hours to finish today. If you live through today, pat yourself on the back. I'll see you next circuit. Right? <laughs> you, yeah. you you get your points. And then next circuit, it doesn't even matter. Guess what? Next circuit, you never know. The deer enjoyers might wipe. Their points might go down it because they couldn't complete next circuit. Mm -hmm. You will you see, will constantly be accruing circus. points. See, next circus could you know have one little thing go wrong, kind of like what happened to a uh, Hellfire Eight, uh, you know Hellfire Club today. Yeah. What one runner gets a little too far, boom! Suddenly your pull is tripled. Absolutely. Uh, you were about done. You've already spent your resources. Uh, we also just had Ragnar uh, HC go down uh, team captain for his team right as they were finishing up SFK. Very let's, tragic for them. Uh, let's head to over see to see it. Let's head over to see it. Did you send it over? Uh, I wasn't able to get a clip of it. Uh, I tuned in a little too late, but in the staff channel, uh, I posted a clip or I posted a VOD. Uh, you need to go to hour, hour mark, two hours, 21 minutes, 30 seconds to yes. see a really insane wipe. If you have finished and we haven't like we haven't found that you finished yet, uh, make sure you send one of us a DM on Discord and let us know that your team is done. Um, I just saw Ash was in chat, said that they finished. So that's good. I'm not well, sure when they finished. So that's team slow, by the way. 
Team bag drops. Bag drops are this. Gets the wipe. This is actually the same area that was extremely scary for Bobka's team, where Team No CC accidentally over aggroed the top part and was going for a skip. That really lost them a ton of time. That probably actually mm -hmm. lost them the competition today, at least. But oh, absolutely. we're going to see how this happens. This was an unfortunate wipe that does happen. And remember, guys, anyone that dies in any of these tournaments or even outside of the tournaments while leveling your character, you have to delete the character. These are one life characters, completely hardcore setup. And the rules are in the Discord. So exclamation point HCAS as well to go to, to the official website for the hardcore all-stars, mm -hmm. which launched today. So actually, I'm uh, I'm checking in on Team Slow through Calyx TV, their warrior tank. They actually opted to summon Baron Aquinas, the horde uh, quest mob, uh, quest boss. Oh, after they just finished. Yeah, so they just finished BFD, their final one. Uh, they stuck in the dungeon uh, to, to stick around, do a little bit of extra trash clearing, a little bit extra questing. Very fun strat from them. Also, if you are new here, maybe you, you're just learning about what Hardcore World of Warcraft is, or maybe you're just finding out that this community exists to begin with. Um, these aren't the only events we do. We do events every other week of, under the Hardcore All-Stars banner. The World Tour is what you're watching currently. But if you want something that's a little bit more easy to get into, a little bit more, uh, I guess, less, less uh, committal, we have one day events where you level up and you race through dungeons with a dungeon draft. It's an amazing time. It's a really fun next weekend. We're doing an RFC event. You have four hours to level, draft a team out yes. of the people who hit level 14 and go into RFC. And those are one day events. They're super easy to get into. It's free to enter. You just make a character and you can compete yourself. It's really, really fun. And I would encourage you to join us. And here we're going to see so potentially the wipe of of here. This this room is actually I'm surprised that we didn't even think about this beforehand in the pre-show that this room is probably one of the scariest. This was the scariest room for everyone, really, that we saw because of well, being able to over aggro. Yeah. And the big issue that you see with this team, so they don't know that you can jump on this roof and run out of the instance really quick. Uh, you know, so they're trying to run oh, super, out super and just no. kite oh, out God. this entire pull. I'm out of mana, guys. I'm out and, of mana. And for, this could be for trying oh. to do that, oh. it's a they do a really good job. I, I already used it. I oh. mean, you know, these last three players are kiting out for a long oh, it? time. It's probably another two minutes before they suffer a full team no. wipe. The longest team wipe of all time. No. It's so terrible. It, it, you hate oh. to see it, but also it's exactly what makes this entire tournament and this sort of an event yeah. so exciting because the just the so much risk well, we reward accidentally pulling too much oh, and then just I losing like your character and having to completely so restart. Oh, I'm certainly. So let me, I'm going to start. Oh, and, and there it is, it is. They ran into. It is rough, you guys. These are the moments that your heart rate starts spiking. You, you start freaking out. You don't know what you're going to do. You, you need, it's, it's funny because there's two mentalities people have with hardcore. It's either you, you have a contingency plan with your team. You say, guys, what do we do in case shit hits the fan? Or the other option is to take the Parla Ompy stance of we don't plan to fail. We only plan for success. Okay, um, okay, and you on, don't on, have a, an exit strategy. Let which, alone a backup character. Let alone a backup yeah. character. So it is two, uh, two backup characters, right? Well, well, two, yeah, in his defense, okay. or I, I honestly, it's not even in his defense. So on his first character he made, he got a tremendous amount of BIS items, but then accidentally went over the XP requirement. So he decided to reroll. Oh, uh, yeah. there and, and then is. he got bored on that character. So that's when he made his third. Oh my yeah. god. I'm gonna go down, but I to just another go another fun thing is you guys gotta remember these events are free to enter. We're not charging anyone oh, entry fees, right? If you wanna just compete for fun. In chat, boys. Yeah, if you wanna compete for fun, anyone can join in. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, yeah, get you. your get your wrath guild, get your get your uh your raiding guild and, and be like, hey, does anyone wanna just level some tunes on Classic Era? It's it's a really fun time, and I promise you. You'll enjoy it even even if you're not in these first place teams. Oh, certainly. Yeah. You know, it looks like we've got a lot of teams uh, now in BFD or heading there. It looks like you know it's pretty good competition. While you know, sure, some teams have already finished, but you know, we planned on maybe having teams finish in three four hours. It looks like there's a huge chunk of this competition who's actually going to wrap up their dungeons. You know, within 
a 30 minute window, uh, which all things considered sets the stage for a pretty tight race moving forward, uh, where even the even a couple of seconds of clear time could end up meaning an extra point here. Yeah, this is an entire league, and this is the first of five circuits. So having a decent clear time and being fourth place, fifth place in this run today can set you up so well. What happens when, when one of the leading teams accidentally has someone die or, or has a wipe? You are then in the lead for forever, yes. right? Then they and have to catch up by the time of the next circuit, which is going to be so hard at the end. And the finals, the grand finale, all points are doubled. So it's going to come down to the wire for sure. We are going to have some of the most insane circuits coming up. There is a circuit with Zulfarak and Maradon, all of Maradon, every wing and princess in the same leveling bracket absolutely yeah there's a circuit the finale that's going to have people clearing every boss in brd at 59 and trying to go fast and and trying to speed run. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna try and hold w through brd they're gonna, uh, they're gonna lava skip for sure a hundred percent yeah it's gonna yeah. be yeah. so exciting to see mm -hmm. someone accidentally like not jump at the right times, not have like a fire potion or a health pot on uh, CD and go well, down. I, I got to say what I'm most excited for in BRD is to mm -hmm. see how people handle the Grim Guzzler, uh, the tavern that's in there, because you've got to kill not just Ribley and Hurley uh, and Phalanx, the guard there, but also the innkeeper. Uh, so being able to plan out how to kill all those bosses without aggroing the, the patrons that are just yes. out there having a time getting drunk. So many teams die. The uh, low key sleeper cool. boss in BRD though is the one when you walk in, you go left, and everyone always skips it. And there's and you over there's those it. patrols. Yeah, the the yes. But that hour. boss, that boss isn't even the scary part. It's the it's the patrolling dwarves to get to that boss. Those things will wipe an entire group of level sixties, no problem. Yeah, and we have actually some spice sent over from Calamity, so we can see the bubble pull here from Calamity um, that they pulled off, where the death can happen at any second. In one global, before a bubble, you could instantly be dead. This is actually one of the scariest things that could happen in the actual dungeon. There's multiple pulls like this that the winning team actually pulled off today that I think really sets them ahead. Uh, it, I think we could see that Parla's group, Calamity's group, Peter, LND, like they are so set up for all of this. Look at how they're dealing with all of the trash mobs with Ompi actually having aggro on everything. And yeah, just so this is a it. really, really similar strategy, some tech as they call it, uh, to what Ompi was doing for them in Dead Mines when they were on the boat, being able to get certain trash out of the way, just having Ompi use his huge AoE abilities to just be kiting them kind of at his own free will. Everybody else is just downing one mob at a time slowly getting them down uh you can take these massive pulls all at once that way ombi could die in one hit while he's doing the jump because you have to jump to make sure the arcane explosion hits right you yep. need to increase your range when you jump your your aoe is larger but also ombi is playing from na on eu ping so that that pull is actually a lot scarier than i even thought about first because of the fact that he could die yeah, like instantly 150 ms and you got to think of it so they've been doing a lot of their ptr from what i heard at least on uh on na uh, i could be wrong here but ptr is all na ping yes yeah, but, but the thing about ompi he gets three ping on na servers he yeah ompi's insane Beautiful place on the entire planet, apparently. Ompi literally lives on top of the server deck. Yeah, he lives inside of the server deck. <laughs> oh yeah. my god. He gets zero lag when playing normally. So for him to adjust so perfectly on game day okay. to 150 plus EU ping, um, just a marvel. Yeah, that was phenomenal play from, from this group. They, they won today and they just played so well the entire time just honestly yep. so well the and, entire and time. if you're a team that's finishing today and your character's live it's gotta feel good knowing that you can continue getting experience up to the next bracket level you can you can put the fishing pole down for a few days and go back to playing the game as as the good good hardcore gods yeah. intended oh, and uh <laughs> and yeah, you man. you can finally play your tune outside fishing Honestly, putting in 70 hours on a tune fishing and like the entire time you're kind of like zoned out right while you're fishing. 
But if something happens, if like a mob runs to you, it's not only that you can't die, right? Um, yep. You can't die, but you can't kill the mob because if you do, you get You'll too much XP. You'll go over the XP. Yeah, you yeah, get it's too terrible. Much XP. That's how much it's they're terrible. min maxing. Anything runs onto you, if you accidentally hit it and someone else kills it, you go over the XP and they griefed you. You're done. It it is so nuanced what what some of these top teams are doing. It like I, we have been in Discord calls for eight or nine hours a day with teams that are just shooting shooting some BS to each other and just fishing mm -hmm. all day, all day. And it's honestly some of the some of the most interesting like wholesome moments of 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 wow in my opinion you know it's like when it, it's like a fresh when everyone's just hanging out and you know grinding gold or doing what they're doing with their guild yes it's that but you're building friendships with your team and some of these teams didn't even know each other before they built these teams there's a looking for group section in the hardcore all-stars discord some of these teams literally just found friends and they're just having fun together you know it's I really really cool people being like dang i haven't had this much fun playing uh like world of warcraft in years uh you know yeah. being able to just, like, meet strangers form a team like do these insane strategies prep together put in thousands of fishing casts uh you know they're having a blast doing it also these the, one of the crazy things is it's so reminiscent of the days when the during the beta the original wrath or yeah, class, yeah, yeah. classic beta where you were level capped right you could only get up to like level 35 and you would twink out your character as hard as possible and then you would see if you could do all of the dungeons now we have that on top of that you can't lock your xp and if you die in one of these crazy dungeons you're gone right you're starting over all ago uh, again so phenomenal yep. jobs to all of the teams here in the first circuit and we still have some teams going for it like in reality all of these teams are still going really fast if you think about it for the sake of hardcore and clearing these dungeons in hardcore they might be a little bit behind ompi's team but that that team has put in so much effort they have they have locked in every single pull they know exactly how much trash they need to pull um these teams are still doing a phenomenal job yeah. and it's really exciting it to see what's the saying sarth it's uh, people uh people that are really good at something make very difficult things look very easy absolutely so it's, it's easy to underestimate how hard what these teams are doing is actually like they're it's it's not easy to go this fast you put me in this dungeon group i probably would be there until four o'clock today like just <laughs> another five more hours right of, of grinding these dungeons out absolutely but One the best makes it look easy one thing too with some of the t these top groups is their ability to adapt like like only was talking about earlier is you kind of plan to always win if something goes wrong it's not that it went wrong you just how do you deal with it and i think that's something that we saw from the top three teams really in in this competition today all of them are always set up to have call outs in discord for whenever anything goes wrong that they can all deal with it they have multiple cc situations they have engineering they have grenades they have multiple actual cooldowns that they can deal with and can plan out accordingly and everybody will deal with it all calmly instead of accidentally stepping backwards potentially and and getting a death which which you definitely see a lot of times in a lot of the hardcore dungeon runs where if something goes wrong if you accidentally pull one more thing as it's going wrong instead of walking that tightrope in between mobs it, it it can actually cause a lot of deaths and a team wipe oh absolutely mm-hmm but we did get a lot of actually not that many deaths or team wipes today. So that's actually kind of a really nice and a good kind of foreboding towards the future is seeing that the teams are all honed in and playing really clearly. And thank you, Winky, for pinning that. If you guys don't know, the winners today or the fastest group to clear it all was See You Next Circus. And they actually, after their dead mines, which was like 11 minutes on hardcore or something, they did dead mines with trash requirements. They all went and turned in quests. They didn't even enter into their second dungeon until other teams had almost cleared halfway through Wailing Caverns. And they picked it up and still mm -hmm. took over and won. Yes, and if you are wondering what place you got if you finished right now, 
Uh, we will find that out for you. We have to review the logs in the clear times. We it's so difficult. You can imagine it's difficult for, yeah, for just with, the three with, of us with, to keep with, up with the, with the 30, 30 teams. 35 teams each clearing four dungeons and having a full circuit clear time. Uh, with all of us live uh, broadcasting here, you know, uh, going back and doing VOD review, doing that data entry to get those leaderboards up, it'll definitely take a little bit of time. Um, but we're very excited to see how these points actually play out uh, once we go and verify all these runs. Let me look at that that clip. Skeppo also with, with some crazy pulls that happened for them. Let me go and grab that. Bing, bong, bing. Let's see what pulled these for you guys. Oh yes, this was this was so unfortunate. I think it was the running away mobs. I'm gonna go to full screen and give you give us your comms. Hmm. I should say, by the way, uh if you're here and you're listening oh. and you're in chat hanging out. Um, oh if you wanna help out with this event at any at any point, just message only black smoke. I'm sure we can come up with some way for you to help out with the event. We're like, constantly uh, struggling with with needing help, keeping track of things, running like leaderboards, live, things like live that. Live data entry on the leaderboards that we can have some initial point breakdowns. Yeah, if if you're interested in helping, shoot one of us a message on Discord. Join the Hardcore All Stars Discord. Um, let us know if you if that's something that's up oh your alley. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you're a random business owner and you're looking to sponsor something, I think that's still on the table. Uh, we could add to the prize pool, right? If we oh, need absolutely. to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that would be really fun. And you would have your names on the screen often. Like you can see um, your names on the screen often. So to show the support. So like we have Blizzard, Hardcore All-Stars, and World of Warcraft Classic here. So if you want to sponsor it or if you want to help, definitely let us know. Also, any Weak Aura geniuses that can help me um, add a timer to my Weak Aura because the coding in Classic is different than Wrath and TBC now. <laughs> and it's making it more complex. Should we do one more giveaway today? We'll do one at the very end. I think, we'll, why not? We'll do one more at, at the very end. Um, I'm probably. down. Yeah. But I win that one, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you win. All, you always win here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here we have none. By the way, I'm going to try, try and pull up a clip. I'm pretty sure that Gertesh's team, what can you do? Uh, actually tried to pull like quite a lot of the um... oh no it looks like I'm a little too late but it looks like they pulled quite a lot of those torches at the same time uh, so at least we're getting some of these teams going a bit ballsy even if they're not pushing for first place oh yeah we no, have, we, can, uh, we can actually see uh, Cheesy's team is on it right now Zug Life even here I will post a clip in the oh, staff God. chat Sarth uh, this is Team Nemesis. Uh, DeWas was in chat just now, linked it, um, but they didn't have privs to link. Oh, nice. I got you. It's a spicy pull, almost wipe. Um, and I, I believe this might have ended their run. I had them up on one of my monitors and they were and they were no longer in the dungeon. Okay. Perfect. Um, yo, is gonna be a little team scary. Nemesis is a dope we... name, by the way. I think my favorite team names, you guys, so far... Yo guys, is right. by far yeah, Prairie yeah, Dogs. Yeah, Big fan of Prairie yeah, Dogs. That's a great so team name. Like standby, um, and then I also like Please Clap. Please Clap. What a beautiful yeah, name. Yeah, Please Clap is a great one. Or the Balding Eagles is, a really, is another hey, good one. Balding let's see Eagles, this I gotta say, is my favorite uh, name and logo combo. Yeah. The Balding Eagles has a wonderful logo. Mm -hmm. I'm Oh, is this the this is the same spot? This has literally yeah. been the scariest. This room, yes, this room causing problems more, time and time again. I'm running. Just, just be careful. Just yeah. watch if you can heal. Uh, yes. Yeah, so oh, and there the it is. You just see it. Yeah. And Drexer literally jumps there, and it okay, aggroes yeah. the mobs from the other I side. The on me. Yep, no, no, here they come running. Okay. 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 So this is where you start seeing the value, knowing that, no. about some of these um, evade down. spots down, that like no CC tried to use them, that uh, CNX okay, Circus okay. successfully used. Well, if, if could have down. mitigated no, no, this no, entire no, no, situation. Honestly, it's one of those things where game knowledge, I'm taking the time I'm to understand dangerous mechanics and how to react to that to get out of it safely can make such a huge difference. Honestly, I think that's 
the difference of of someone making it to 60 in hardcore i've said this so many times before is game knowledge it's all game knowledge um focus, focus. like every single zone as they start getting to the higher level zones every single zone has one random patrol that can kill you in classic and most people don't remember it because it didn't really phase you it was just like oh i died whatever you move on but in hardcore knowing about everything like that or every mob that puts a curse on you like we're seeing that just does 150 damage to everyone in the group knowing all of these mechanics is so crucial for a hardcore character oh absolutely so low look at them yep so we actually uh we do have cheesy's team zug life here uh Another well-named team about to pull Akamai finish up. Uh, pretty middle, like even ahead of the middle of the pack here. There's a lot of teams if we look through our Discord still at it here. I think there's about 20 different teams. Yeah, yeah I'm watching. I'm watching Shobek. I'm watching Elenia. I'm watching Nom Nom HC. I'm watching Cheesy Goodness, Meta Goblin, Gertosh, Leb, Edgies. There, there's so many teams still running, you guys. And these are all people that if they if they survive these runs, they'll be accruing points on the day. Certainly. If if you're wondering how points are calculated, I encourage you to join the Hardcore All Stars Discord. The, our God King, Chairman, Emperor of the Board, Only Black Smoke, has put together a ridiculously in depth rule sheet that you can browse at your leisure. <laughs> there is so many nuanced, Accessibly, tiny rules. <laughs> it's very accessible. You can read it. Uh, there's no, I just said all... excessive. Oh, it's it's very yeah. excessive. Well, but I mean, like, uh, you know, when you're playing for $5,000, you really got to make sure that you're covering the bases. Uh, yes. You know, the the yes. opportunities and the desire to cheat in this kind of thing um, are really big. And we wanted to make sure that we're delivering a competition uh, can that can, be... can genuinely be everybody's game. You know, it's about, uh, you know, at least equal opportunity. All these players going in with the same rules uh, and, you know, able to really showcase their individual player skill. Yes, and there's a link in the chat if you're interested in joining the Hardcore All-Stars Discord. Reading up on the rules, maybe you want to put a team together. Maybe you want to play for fun and have some fun with the homies. I have a character uh, that I have been leveling that I am gladly going to be entering onto a team uh, that needs a sixth player in case uh, someone dies, you know? Oh, certainly. Yeah, so if you want to recruit Winky, you can do it now. Get there fast before everybody else want, swoops him up. If you want to recruit <laughs> Winky... I'll I'll do it while casting the event. I will speed run with you guys. Oh my god! I would, if, would I was in, be... if I was in that team, I would be like, oh, never mind. All right, we just lost him. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're not recruiting him anymore. <laughs> I'll join Jerome's team and we'll die on a zeppelin again. Yeah, Nom Nom's team. There it is. Akumai goes down. Every single team here on Akumai so far has used the hunter to kite hunter with mm -hmm. aggro and uh, using slows. And that's really because of the mob being so high level that the hunter is really the one that can do all of the damage. So he's going to have the aggro the whole time. Absolutely. So at some point today, Chobek has exited cosplay as well. I don't know when it happened, but it's got to be a speed yep. increase to exit the cosplay. I would imagine so. And we actually just got a clip in from Gordon Ramsay on Team Slow, super lethal, outstanding warriors. Uh, coming in, uh, a team that I don't think got a lot of coverage today, but may have finished in fourth or fifth, actually. Um, a really great performance, so I asked them for a couple of highlight clips. There First one was go. sent over to me. All right, let's check this out right now. All right, here's the actual clip of the day only. <laughs> yeah. Mine's loot. We had Taskmaster's Axe drop, we had Lavishly Jeweled Ring drop, Smite's Mighty Hammer, we had Emberstone Staff, Cookie Stirring Rod, and the Cape off of Team Slow. DC. We had insane. Oh my god. What loot? Oh they actually my god. just broke that down. No Literally way. the best list out of that dungeon. They got everything they wanted. That's actually ridiculous. Some of these groups have gotten so lucky, and, and honestly, it, I think it made a big difference for some of them. One one in particular was the no CC getting their weapons, but we also mm -hmm. saw the winning team get their weapons and, and being able to do splits there because your rogue can do so much oh, single dude, target damage. See you next circus has a cool barb and a stinging viper on a rogue. Yeah, that's unreal. That's a, the amount of say, though, damage Skobek that they're outputting. Main handing a stinging viper too, so it looks like yeah, he got yes. pretty lucky in Wailing Caverns too. And meteor meteorite shard on yeah. his offhand. 
That's a strong combo that's right actually there. That's really solid, combo. yeah. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah, if you're not going to get a Cruel Barb, that's probably the next best thing you could hope for as a rogue. Absolutely. Oh, wow. That's a very That's solid. incredible. So many of these groups have, have really gotten great weapons, and some of these weapons will even still be BIS for the next circuit. Although the crazy thing is one we're going to be reviewing before the next circuit, watching the Whirlwind Axe solo enjoyers, or, oh, or the hunters man. that go after their master hunting bow and stuff. Yeah, there's going to be like some insane weapons next run. You guys... The you think that the fishing was bad at level 22 for these top teams. Wait until the things they can fish up now. Next circuit's maximum level is 32 and a half. In the dungeons and only, you could, you could break down. Yeah, what dungeons, yeah. what level? Of course. So for circuit two, hold on, give me one second here. I want to make sure that I don't misquote myself. Uh, so for Circuit 2, teams are going to be entering at level 32.5 on Saturday, March 25th. Same time to start 9 a.m. Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, but they're going to be racing through SM Graveyard and Library, Razorfen Crawl, and Nomergan. And That's Nomergan, gonna be a spicy Nomergan is one of the most hated dungeons in, in the Hardcore Challenge because oh of how God. easy it is to miss pull things on we Seattle. Might Nomer we might be same. able to split up Nomer, by the way. There might be another group comp splitting off in, you know, three really and two. So. I really and so. and double clearing Nomer at the same time. Nomer's Nomer's so, so the there, same. There's even an option if you have a rogue to be lock picking your way into the back door. Oh yes. yeah, that's actually yes. going to happen. All of them. I, are I've been level trying to think picking. a little bit about about how that could change your strategy. Yeah, Nomergan, it won't be the, the most scary one for them because of their level, but Nomer is, is another situation where it's exactly like what we saw today, the scary pull in SFK, where if you jump, it'll actually pull all of the mobs from another section, which will chain. So yes. Nomer, moving also, through, you have to just hug the wall or else you could aggro everything and it's just over. Also, you we have to remember the, the level requirements are batched based on the dungeons that are being required for that circuit. All of so the naturally, naturally, you're going to be over level for some of the dungeons because there's other dungeons that you need to do within the same circuit that you might be at or under level for. But also, the difficulty of this isn't necessarily the mob level of the dungeon. It's, it's you trying to go fast with your team. You are exponentially well, increasing the difficulty by trying to go as fast as you can. Absolutely. It, it makes things so much scarier, especially f for a hardcore character to run through a dungeon as quickly as you can. Try and skip things. That's the part where I'm actually surprised we didn't see as many issues today, um, is that trying to skip things is one of the most intimidating things that can happen. And it's so easy to go wrong in a speed run is if one person slightly stands to the left or to the right and pulls the wrong pat and not everybody reacts and turns around instantly, it literally could cause a cascade and everyone could wipe. Oh, certainly. I cannot wait for the circuit that has Oldeman. Oh I, I, what, do you know what Crash circuit that is? Is that circuit three? It's circuit. Uh, no, it's circuit. I, I think that's the no, circuit. It's, it's Ulderman and Maradon in the same circuit. I think that's yeah, while, while I'm away. So it, it is uh, SM, uh, Armory, and Cathedral. It's Ulderman and it's Maradon. That's the wildest. What? I think that's the one I'm away for. That's one circuit? I think so. Yeah. That's that's. Wait, Imagine wait, all of wait. Maradon. Maradon? Sorry, Maradon, guys. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misspoke. It's Armory Cathedral, Razorfen Downs, and Ulderman. My oh, okay, okay, okay. I was, I was, like, Mara? I was like, no way. Yeah. How would you do SM into Maradon? Like, Wouldn't that be a hilarious princess? <laughs> oh, my God. oh, I would love it. Maradon. I would oh, love it so gosh. much. No, but that. Oldman, so the, the the dungeons I'm looking forward to seeing the most mm -hmm. in this in this tournament, you know, atmosphere, by far Oldman. Mm -hmm. Maradon is going to be insane, and then BRD. BRD, it's a cap the event, is going to be one of the coolest things. I, Godspeed to the teams that are still alive when you walk into BRD. It's going to be very few teams. 
Mm-hmm. Most of the people are probably going to have died in the open world uh, up to that point, and it is going to be a battle of the ages Honestly, to speed run through I, I'm BRD. I'm so curious how many teams will still have their original roster, if any, because of just the opportunity for someone to die in the open world and then them have to bring in their one sub or have to bring in potentially a backup character if they'll be ready to make it into any of these later circuits. Because absolutely, leveling hardcores, not all of these people playing right now have have fully made it to 60 and it's everyone who's done it knows it's very easy to like randomly die and lose your character not fully randomly but like pretty randomly in hardcore as you're leveling yeah no I, cc I, i'm hearing no cc skipped a boss in bfd what boss did they skip um it looks like on their on their um so, so they on their week order that they skipped the the turtle boss, but I think it's because they uh, they skipped. Yeah, yeah so they, they, they split, split up for it. Two of them killed uh, the Naga boss with the chain lightning. Yeah, uh, Lady Severus. Paris, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and the rest of their team killed uh, Gu Gu Ra or whatever it is. Yeah, the turtle. Gamora. They were Gamora. So they were just out of range from for the Guardians week order of the Galaxy. It. Um, but that'll be verifiable in VOD review. Um, no. But yeah, from what we saw pulling up both streams at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were killing those bosses simultaneously. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, can you so. have can you have more than two characters ready? Yes. So you can level alts and have them ready in case your main dies in a dungeon. You can pre level an alt. Um, but you and can't I know in your alt in the same circuit you died in. So if you yeah. die in a circuit, you are sitting out until the next yes. circuit. But the idea behind that, and I understand, it's like oh, there's there's been some people saying you know things like oh well leveling an alt kind of takes away from the one life aspect of it. Kind of true, but at the same time, we want these teams to get to the end. We want to see people actually racing in BRD. If you die in circuit four, well, also, and you don't have an alt, man, like you're going to well, not make it to the next circuit yeah. in time. The fact that we had 44 teams sign up, only 35 made it for today. So there were like nine teams out there who tried to get to level 22 and get full this and just broke down on that challenge we had teams full wipe last night on their way to the dungeon as we saw with that clip from no hit jerome uh yes when we this cast today you know so making it to 60 at all is a challenge in itself so making sure that people can have those backup characters uh you know you're put at a, at a pretty big disadvantage if you die you can't repeat these dungeons every single person is given one dungeon id so you know Let's say uh, I die or let's say, you know, something different. Like I just didn't like my loot in one of these dungeons. You know, I can't go back and do it again uh, to be getting the cruel barb to be getting Are we you jumping? Know, Are we jumping? Uh, X, Y or Z piece of loot. The, the sleepwalkers rod or something. Yeah. And you still can't just like die on your main and then bring your alt in that same day. If you die on your main, there's a still a chance your entire group just goes down because you're, you're screwed for that entire circuit. Yeah. Yes. So then it would be it would be the same as if you had re-leveled for the next circuit anyway. You're just doing it in advance. No so eyebrows, right. Jerome. Teams here actually vying for vying for a placement. Uh we've got uh the missing diplomats over here watching Edgy Stream. And I'm also watching Watchdog SRT um hmm. from Team Where's Kyle? Uh, oh, the best team name ever. Where's Kyle? Where are Diddle you? A little bit ahead, they're on their way to Akumai right now. Oh, they are doing really well. And what was the other one we had? Edgy's? Uh, missing Diplomats, yeah, with the Edgy stream. Can I just point out that Jerome has an affinity for Zeppelin-related deaths? <laughs> Jerome, you should consider going Alliance. Jerome? One time Jerome strafe jumped off the Zeppelin at like level 40 and died. I think I saw that clip, dude. Yeah. The pain of accident. Like, the thing, too, is is you're just, like, especially if you're streaming it, you're talking to chat, right? You're Yo, talking yeah. to chat. Oh, yeah. You're chilling. You're just, like, moving your character, not paying full attention. And, like, it, you're, you just slight off the edge, and you're done. Your character's gone. So many hours and hours, days worth of playtime, weeks of your life spent fully gone in an instant. Yep. The I've never seen someone I've never seen someone jump and the Zeppelin like move under their character. I swear it happened to Jerome. He <laughs> jumped like 80 yards out the back window of a Zeppelin from the bottom floor. 
I didn't even know it was possible. Oh my god, it's He's so got legs, man. He's yeah. Got arms. Jerome said they had to patch the back of the Zeppelin. Honestly, I believe it. It was an it was like it's an absurdly it. it was an absurdly oh, so long unfair. range jump. Oh, certainly. That's so unfair. It hurts. So you know what bad. I have seen though, or we were talking about this the other day. We've seen Ompi intentionally jump off of Zeppelins on his warrior and charge before hitting the ground, like charge a critter. Yeah, it, it's to, like to the, not die. The ground class enjoyer equivalent of a blink before you hit the ground. It's absolutely nuts. Now let's uh, see yeah. him do yeah. that with EU ping. Because the game yeah, will just true. register it later. True. It is like, he's like, no, I made that. And then all of a sudden he's on the ground walking away yep. and then he's dead. It literally. Yep. Yeah, we like the the fact that you're willing to like do that on like a level 30 plus hardcore warrior is insane. Like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna trust that that mob's up and gonna be underneath me. Oh, I jump. Yeah. It's it's the real risks that we see. And I, I think yep. honestly, playing like that. There's times where you're like, it's just the easiest thing. I always do this. One time it goes wrong and your character's done. You, it's like the worst feeling. You would just yep. be so sad. Oh, and if anyone wants to follow up, um, these events are once every two weeks. The uh, the World Tour circuits are once every two weeks. If you want to keep up to date on the teams and things like that before the next circuit, if you want to find out where the best loot drops are coming from, what quests are, what, who are going for the spicy quests, who dies while leveling their tune to the next circuit level? Tune into Grace for Days' channel for Around the Forge. It's a it's a short podcast that they're doing to keep everyone updated on the hardcore all stars, especially the world tour. And they're going through a ton of really cool stuff. I'm sure we'll get a lot of that stuff and information uploaded to the website as well. But if you want to check it out, Grace for Days does Around the Forge, and it's really really good. Um, and it'll keep you guys up to date when we're not doing tournament days Absolutely. on what's and going on. And another plug, uh, our co-caster Winky, uh, you know, introduced as the founder and host of F's and chat, uh, coming out. I believe you're still doing it every Friday, correct? Winky? Yeah. Every, every other Friday, it's probably mm -hmm. every Friday though. We have so yeah. many clips coming but, in. Uh, you want to see death clips, highlight clips, and just all around some great chat. I mean, it's F's and chat for a reason. Uh, yeah, I gotta get Sarth on there. Friday. Oh, it's absolutely. been a minute. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's yeah. been a while. We need some great video recap uh, from this tournament, as well as from our dungeon drafts. Uh, not to mention, you know, just all of the other hardcore players out in the world that are still. Yeah, playing. it's it's essentially a, a podcast that we've built uh, for the last couple of years about hardcore World of Warcraft. It's updates in the status of the community. Uh, if you want to be in on the inside jokes of hardcore F's and chats, the place to be on a Friday night with a beer in your hand. Um, and I've had the privilege and honor of having just about everyone under the sun guest on that show at one point <laughs> in time. So I appreciate everyone that's ever been on it. Sarth, you're always welcome to come on it too, of course. Uh, and, and yeah, we, we try and keep it up to date. So we yeah, just really saw where's one. Kyle uh, kill Akumai. It looks like edgies and missing diplomats are just pulling him. So just one kill behind here. Uh, shouldn't be more than maybe a 30 second difference in their clear time. Or in their finish time, I should say. Where's Kyle? Uh, also, the team name because their player Kyle died, right? Yeah, died and they weren't able to level up. Uh, so they found a replacement, but renamed their team. Where's Kyle? It happens. It definitely happens. But it's it's fun to see uh, everybody just just get into this. Like I honestly think the community has gotten behind the event so much, and everyone's having so much fun. The memes are phenomenal. Feel free to join the Discord. Xmage might rules for an invite to the Discord. I just fixed that. So feel free to join the Discord. The memes are phenomenal. The participation is amazing, and the community is absolutely amazing. And yeah, where's Kyle? Are. Where is Kyle? We have Kyle. You know what? Because of that Kyle death, that's why we have Winky here today, guys. Shout out to F Chat and the real Kyle. Yeah, my name's Kyle Chat, just so you guys know. And no, I don't drink monster or punch holes in drywall. I actually drink water. And punch Big holes in drywall. And punch holes in drywall. Obviously. I actually prefer punching holes in wet wall. Yeah, I, I hear wet walls easier to punch through. Yeah, because I have limp arms. <laughs> I'm, as a, well. I'm a i'm a world of warcraft <laughs> nerd. World of arm gamer i'm not gonna lie yeah we i went out last night and and raved i was i went to a trance concert last night and i literally 
am such a wow boomer. I'm in person at a trance concert, and all I could think about was part like 99 parsing to like psy trance pumper music the whole time I was there. Like, I'm IRL parsing so hard right now. I literally did. I posted in my Discord a video, and I was like, I'm IRL parsing. Jerome DM'd me. No hit, Jerome. <laughs> Last night, and I just sent him a video back, and I was like, "Hold on, bro, I'm, I'm 99 parsing right now, IRL." Oh my god, I love that! Fantastic, I love it. It was you just can't get around it. It's like every time I hear trance music, I just think of like raid night. At this point, that's just where I'm, where we're at now, dude. I, I have, uh, I've trained my brain to think trance music is is world of warcraft fully yes like, yes fully. and i i've yes. made trance music for a long time i've made trance yeah. music for the biggest artist the biggest trance artist in the world and while doing it i was thinking about rating yeah oh, absolutely yeah i i make yep. i make trance music nowadays and i i tell my chat all the time like hey you guys want to hear the new rating music oh <laughs> it's, my like, God. it's it's so ridiculous dude yeah, it was yeah. really fun though. Paul Van Dyke killed it. I'm not gonna lie, absolute he is, legend. He is absolutely amazing, and we still have yeah. we do still have teams running right now. Um, Showback's team is on their way towards the Murloc boss. Yeah, on their way towards the Murloc boss here in in BFD, and trying to stay safe. Again, this is one of the sketchier ones where just you could. I feel like Murlocs always have just the one like one of them runs away and you're all dead. Oh, certainly. Yeah, Murlocs just, they've got some speed, man. I don't know why, if it was some kind of sick joke from Blizzard, but for how annoying their little Murgle Murgles are. Yeah. Oh my god, I did. you down from a million miles away, they run away and go get their friends. Nothing you can do about it. I did the sound of, of a Murloc once, um, randomly in a social situation with with my <laughs> girlfriend, and she was like, what, what was that? And I was like, it was a Murloc. She's like, no, what was that? What was that noise you just did? Did everybody just hear him do that? And I was like, um, all right, well, I'm going hey, to excuse... point it out. Yeah. I'm going to slowly back away right, now. Well, like, hey, shots. Oh, no, I just like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was in a do. I was in a hardcore duo with my girlfriend the other day and she was doing the Murloc noise all night. It was annoying me just to get on my nerves. You know what? It's 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 trying to it's like a jump scare. It is. It's a jump scare. Yeah, sound. It is. It's the sound of danger. It. Yeah, it unlocks this like weird feeling in my brain that I just need to turn around and run. Just so you know, there should be like, like life alert IRL, but it's like for I'm wild gamers. Lord, 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 Lord. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, oh no! All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. It's how you know, guys. All right, it's your spidey sense is oh, tingling when you start hearing Murloc sounds. So who do we have here? We we still have Showback going. We also have uh, Boomers, Team Boomers, German team. Uh, shout outs to the EU gamers. They're going. We still have Elenia on her her team. We have Nom Nom HC still going. Looks like he's actually finished. Uh, a Lutheran still up and running with Pagels Pro Shop. Another amazing team name. They redid the Bass Pro Shop logo and they called it Pagels Pro Shop with a picture of Nat Pagel on it. Great. Uh, Great team name there. I, I was just sent Team Nemesis's death clip, and I uh, posted it in staff for us here. Let's. Yeah, we didn't we watch it. It was the SFK one, right? No, uh, BFD death clip. Oh shoot! Yeah, so Maybe I missed that one. Second oh. uh, hype clip we will yes. see today out of BFD. This is pain. This is pure pain. Oh, sorry. Did I add a T to it? Yeah, I did. Sorry. Okay, one sec. I'll grab the clip for you guys. Did we ever get checked in on uh, the Westfall Wallabies, by the way? They're still in BFD. The old West, Westfall good Spiff Spifferson the good old, of the good old Westfall Wallabies old is out here. Spifferson, as we yeah, know. The, yeah, as you know, the, the Spifferson Wow uh, hey, is just have... absolutely pumping here. Oh my gosh, Team Nemesis. Oh, this is a rough spot. Uh, this is a rough spot. How much is going to come? Oh, no, they left all of that back there, too. Oh, yeah, this is a bad day. Nice. Yeah. I, this is didn't, one of those okay. where if you're going to be doing these skips, you better know way ahead of time what your strategy for an evade or escape spot is. They have no mage, and they they have some grenades. They have some grenades, but no mage. Yeah, target no, dummy. Not a lot of good CC. They're just all burning target dummies. Really when you see when you see that purple f box hit the ground and the purple light shoots out of it and makes the target dummy, you know it's a death clip. 
Target uh, dummy use is is iconic. And for those of you that don't know, maybe you're new to the hardcore community. Maybe you haven't tried your first hardcore character yet. Target dummies are a staple in our community. If you level engineering, you can use them to rip threat off of you and potentially save your life. Yes. Um, buys you precious seconds to get that heal off, to get you uh, away if you're resetting a mob or something like that. Target dummies can be a massive asset. In in all speedrunning, if anyone doesn't know, in all World of Warcraft speedrunning and all of Classic, target dummies are one of the most useful items in the entire game. They instantly taunt everything around them and everything will turn to, to attack them. There's even bosses that will put a debuff up on you or kill you and you can all use target dummies to stay alive. They are insanely Absolutely. useful. But yeah, we got um, this many acolytes being pulled because they don't have enough kicks to get yep. through all the heals. You just have heal after heal going off. They cannot kill these mobs. Yeah, looks like we have a team. Team Boomer is about to pull Ak Akumai in uh, BFD. If we wanted to watch the POV, I don't know. Oh, but the oh Bakugan down. This is where it starts <laughs> to fall apart. Level twenty four in BFD after everything you did to prepare. The deaths and it feels the worst is when you know you're going down the slow, the slow burn, seeing your priest go down. You have no heals left. Oh, trying to sprint away, trying to run to Narnia. I'm actually kind of low key glad that Jerome died. Yo, can I, can I give a big shout out to Shobex team who's just taking time to loot a chest and just reveling at the fact that they got a 10 slot bag no no listen i have to okay you guys it's not toxic let me tell you why i'm glad jerome's team died jerome's team name was mischievous rural squirrels and also there was no shark that was the name of the team the imagine full, us wait, trying to thing? shout the full thing <laughs> is the name of it mischievous rural squirrels and also there was no shark do you want us to say that team name on broadcast this entire time you guys i kind of do there was a show. They got Murlocs instead. They they summoned the Murlocs. Oh no. Okay, Jerome, I can't wait for you guys to go again because next circuit we will be shoutcasting the mischievous rural squirrels and there also there was no shark comeback arc. Yes. Very true, very true. Also, uh, my favorite one of my favorite albums of all time is called The Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavored Water. Are you telling me Limp Biscuit is one of your favorite albums of all time? Bro, it is amazing. Sarth, you're kidding me. No, what? That album is one of the albums I had as a kid. Yeah. So great. So phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. So they some... basically just are just one of those days. It's just one of those days. You're pretty good at it. I, uh, oh, that album yeah. is great. If you don't like that album, uh, you're, you're telling lying to yourself. Limp Biscuit is one of you. Oh yeah! I'm you're gonna kidding me, right? I'm gonna pull up your face right now so everyone can see you. <laughs> and and everyone in chat right now, tell me if you think Winky listens to Limp Biscuit. It's just one of those days. He for sure. Look at that. He's, he's listening to it right now. He's trying to make fun of it. You're one of those people that lies and says you don't like Nickelback, probably. I don't like Nickelback. What oh, do you mean? That's exactly yeah. what someone who did like oh, Nickelback. What yeah. are you talking about? Oh, I <laughs> didn't like exactly Nickelback before would. it was Sorry, cool to not like Nickelback. You cannot oh, gaslight yeah. your chat into thinking that I like Nickelback because it's don't not have true. To. It's okay. We you, don't have to. You just said Limp Biscuit is one of your favorite <laughs> albums of all time. That's a great album. Nickelback, so we forget about Limp Biscuit. Yeah, you no, is deflecting. I've never, you know, Limp Biscuit is touring now, and they're phenomenal, and everyone, everyone knows that. And also, Nickelback. What a one in chat amazing. if you actually like Limp Biscuit. Yeah, and a two if you don't like N Limp Biscuit. It's one of those days, dude. Do you keep rolling, 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 rolling? Yeah, look at all of those ones. Look at all those lyrical, ones, and look at all those lyrical prowess liars. right there. What a great lyricist. It's rolling, 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 rolling. What? All right, everybody. Rolling, 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 rolling. Ban them. Ban every every number two there. There is. Yikes. How, like, like, why are we defending Limp Biscuit right now? <laughs> because we like music and 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 see what you're doing is called gatekeeping. And you see, we don't do that in the hardcore community. I'm not Guys, gatekeeping anything. What do you he mean? won't gatekeep you if you want to join in on the fun for the hardcore <laughs> all-stars tournament. Exclamation point H C A S to go to the website oh. or also exclamation point rules. If oh you guys want to know the truth of the real you know the real banger of like the actual truth of the best uh, best artist of all time in that time period? Who? Shakira.
you know, you, oh, maybe when you dance like that. That was Kermit the Frog playing Shakira. I'm not Shakira. I could never sing like that. She's a goddess. You are Kermit Some, Somebody clip that, please. And that, somebody clip that, and I'm making it a sub sound. Somebody oh, clip no. that, and I'm making it a sub sound. Oh, my God. Oh, no. You got yourself. Oh, yikes. Oh, yeah, I'm in a predicament God. now. All right. So I'm kind of curious. You know, we've got a lot of teams wrapping up their BFDs here. Uh, we're getting toward the end of it. Do we want to maybe pull in one of our team captains for a little post game Absolutely. Yes. Toodles we do. Absolutely. Yeah. We do. So, so I know that our, our main man, Parla, the team captain of the absolute winning team today, uh, VOD Review Pending, uh, Parla is busy streaming Raid Shadow Legends right now. Dope. Ooh. Um, fastest but, game I, ever. Go show him, go show him I, support. I got bobka in the chat and we can pull him in if we want to hear somebody from team cc team cc was absolutely a front runner first finishing team from the horde side looked to possibly be first place overall until a big upset in sfk all right that was a huge upset for them let's grab bobka um can we get bobka to do a face cam because bobka's face is beautiful yeah, Okay, right now. Be careful. Oh, careful for pets. Bob, Bob, Bobka's not going to do a face cam. There's no way Bobka does a face cam. It's impossible to get Bobka to do face cam. You know, cam. he's literally a male model in real life. Like, he actually oh, no, unironically know. models. I, and he's afraid of putting his face cam on. Bobka is one of the best looking human beings I've ever seen in my life. And you're right? just like, that's oh what I'm my saying. God. He is so good looking, but never tell and, him that. And he, and he won't yeah, never, never say that to his face. Never turn his camera on. Yeah, it's because World of Warcraft Classic came out and he stopped going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh Yikes. My God. He was what what the Giga Chad meme was was characterized after or uh, designed after. It was him. It was. But now. Yeah. Yeah. Former <laughs> Bob Gum. Yeah. Uh, all right, I just sent it to him. Yeah, feel free to the link, the link for the face cam. And he just uh, says, what? Yeah, he's not going to. There's no chance. He won't. Uh, regardless, we can definitely pull him into the chat here. Mm -hmm. uh, have a little conversation with him. Bobka, if you're paying attention, uh, if you want to jump into the waiting room chat, we can pull you up. Let me make sure I have a few things already. Perfect. Yes, Bobka, if you if you want to come in and, and break down what you what you guys plan think... was, how you approached it, feel free to hop in. Love to hear from you. Also, if there's anyone else from the from the winning team that wants to join after with Bobka, um, let us know. Reach reach out. Just let us know, and we will bright. Ompy, Yo, Ompy, well, Ompy, Ompy get in jump, here, Ompy. Ompy can just jump in himself. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. Ompi, ready to, to talk some more smack. Ompi versus yeah, Cargo's see... yesterday on my podcast was the funniest smack Probably. talk of all time. They were just going want, in on each other. I want to see the team rivalries. Now Absolutely. that we've got a taste of these teams, right? I want to see teams like I want to see real team pride coming in, right? I want to see teams with jerseys. I want to see teams like laying down the law talking that smack in a wholesome way don't be too terrible about it right but just like you know you can see you can you can be confident in yourself without being rude mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very true very true yeah i want to see like we should do like those pre-game like you know how before fight night they do that thing where they do like the the, the title like the boxers meet up and they talk shit for like a little bit and then they they look at each other menacingly and then, and then you take the photo and then they kiss yeah yeah, yeah. there we go Sorry, so we what was that oh hey bob good chat here hey yo 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 up, boys oh dude up, how are you welcome great performance today babka uh pre i mean yes and no man uh i think overall pretty good but sfk uh we uh we had some issues and uh and yeah i mean yeah not babka bad. what if i yeah. told you i wanted to get second place uh but it is what it is what you if i told you to babka second place that, yeah because i know we uh we cannot really beat uh see on next circus because uh, they're practicing uh, more and i know that they're bobby very, very good players too so but what if i told you Yo. that if you had not scuffed that sfk you would have won i know uh, you were I mean, you were like in I'm, first I'm place yeah. but then the sfk so, happened it is so what it is. You know, we uh, bobby I, I saw that no. like we we all saw the original like kind mm -hmm. of miss poll that led to you needing to get to that evade spot not when you wanted to you know and it mm -hmm. looked like you guys were doing your best to 
to make up for that fact I mean, you know, when yes. cargos were kiting back to the evade spot. But then it seemed that you just couldn't get the reset to work properly. Uh, and it ended so, up costing more and yeah. more time. Can you walk us through what was happening? Mm -hmm. I mean, technically speaking, so like this skip, we did it. So like we, we did not do PTR, but what we did is I was on my 60 rogue and like we were looking at, you know, rotting. And we did this with a level 60 rogue and a level 20 warrior. And it worked when we did it on uh, on uh, on our alts. Mm -hmm. But uh, but today I think like what what happened is is uh, first we uh, we didn't pull at the time that we wanted to pull, and also when we wanted to reset, um, our shaman dropped his totem, so we had to to uh, to like redrop totem on the evade spot. And because of that, uh, the, the spell cast, you the, get uh, the, the two, the two uh, totems were pulling uh, when we wanted to like reset, so the reset was not able to go through because of the two totems. Yeah. So we did, so we so we just uh, decided to try to, to like uh, try it again, and then um, it was not working, so we just had to kill them. Mm -hmm. but, so uh, I, I believe that we've actually got the clip available. Sarth, do you want to play it? Um, yeah. You know, over this interview Let's live, see. so we yeah, can I have it. Watch as we're getting this explanation. Yeah, I have, so it, that, I have it going. So it technically ended speaking, up in, a bit, uh, in a bit of a like a threat loop. Then. So like what we wanted to do is the four players would run in the uh, in the in the little corner where uh, where uh, you have the the uh, the uh, staircase, and then I would pull the mobs and then sprint up and go to this spot that that guys are like watching right now, and mm -hmm. then just reset everything. And while the mobs are running to me, my team just go through all uh, the stairs and the ramp and get to the. To the next boss but because of the totem uh we were not, i mean my team was not able to drop combat or avoid getting combat because the mobs will leash to them while the while, uh, while uh, they were passing by so uh so we tried twice probably bad call but uh we just never found a a way to to like to like actually reset them and then when we tried again i mean they just bugged again mm -hmm. and then um we like i just carried three mobs uh on the top while my team was killing the rest uh in the bottom staircase oh, so certainly. could have been worse to be honest pretty happy mm -hmm. with the outcome because i think that we we have seen like couple team wipe today um because of this room but again like i think like this is just some like you know small knowledge that if we had ptr or like if we did like alt run uh doing uh doing a shadow fan keep we would have noticed that but we went you know we went uh we went raw with no practice and we just yeah so this was very bad because there we cannot have two calls so it was either we go back to the roof and then reset to the roof or either my team goes back to the small corner but since we had already jumped i said you know what let's go roof reset everything and i mean yeah just just unfortunately having to do it twice yeah really good but yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm I, i'm just really sad about about the outcome of this fk but we learned and it is what it is what, what i will say though conversely and i think winky has been just gushing over this like all day mm -hmm. uh you guys made an incredible play in wailing caverns uh probably some oh, of the yeah. best we got to see in the entirety of circuit one yeah we decided to do a split three two because we wanted to use a stealth and me and grace were uh were, were pretty sure about our ability to be getting the the seven vipers which are the mobs on the on the on the left side and then we were able to solo the boss too with like with uh with a rope because i can you know sap i can uh, i can do things kick so we decided to do this uh this three two split and i think that is the best way to do winning cavern because did we get the best time if not just under cnx circus like, is there other teams that... I haven't seen the splits well. for the dungeons just yet, but you guys moved also, really quickly. You you got amazing this weapons was also. The, the worst spawn, by the way. Yeah, also, so, like, so what, what I've seen, given that uh, CNX Circus had an issue you, uh, where Mutanus bugged out, um, but even without Ooh. that bug, um, uh, you guys had what I saw a 15-minute Verdant kill uh, moving on. Um, yeah, and the deer, team, deer yeah. enjoyers who narrowly beat you guys out in overall circuit time only had uh Verdon down in 17 minutes uh so yeah, to gain I mean, that much time you know i i really think that um you know i i would be shocked if you didn't have the fastest whaling cavern split at the very so i totally agree with, uh, with, with that and then we would have been even more faster if we didn't get this bad spawn because like, yeah it's uh, terrible lady there could, can like spawn on each corner right but you, but like, yeah. you want her to be spawning either to your left or to your right so you can kill it quickly with your team so me and like grace we had to waste me like three minutes uh to do this which mm -hmm. 
uh, which I think like slowed us down a little bit because we cannot pre-clear enough because we we were behind. But uh, and this was your only uh, poorly positioned mm -hmm. boss. You know, in BFD, you guys had to swim all the way back to uh, the water cave to get old Saracus. Yeah, so uh, we sent Grace alone there to go fish, uh, but Grace, the fisherman, uh, sadly had problems with a growing too big, uh, too big dragon. So we had, so we had to go help him. But I think that if we could have. Um, you know, pull that bus uh, without ads. We uh, we would have even a better time in BFD. But I so, don't so think your we, your we strategy did then time. your strategy mm -hmm. then was to have Gray solo go pull old Saracus and bring it back yeah, so to we, the yeah. outside of the cave. But instead, because you got those two extra mobs, you all we had, had to, to all jump water. in and and then and then all swim. Yes. Yeah, that, that that's the, definitely uh, a big commitment to put your entire team in the water and force that swim time. How was yeah. our B our uh, BFD time compared to compared to other teams? Where we uh, where we somewhat somewhat good somewhat uh, decent only has it but it looked like you guys you guys did exactly what you set out to do which was basically just hold press W the entire time and yep. you guys did your little seal team Minus six yeah exactly and your but you had your your seal team six where you and Graze went off and were able to basically kill bosses with just you two especially in in whaling caverns this was close. huge mm -hmm. because you got. The, the weapon, right, from Dead Mines, huge drop to get that. And then to, to move through, and your DPS is so high from just you two when you're doing this split that you can actually fully clear the dungeon so quickly. Because that dungeon, you have to go left and right. And by the time you guys are back starting the actual RP for, for the event mob or like the, the escort, it's right as your group is pulling and killing the last mobs or the last bosses so it, it times out really really perfectly so that was really nice of you guys really well planned i think for a team you know that we didn't did not really practice we just you know went like over dungeons like like with voice and with some pictures i think uh, i think we performed well but uh next circuit i think we, we're gonna be scaling way more because of of uh, of uh, wind fury um and just how our, our comp work so uh next circuits i think we we're just gonna get better and Today we 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 kind of learned to play all together and pretty mm -hmm. satisfied. Yeah, but... yeah. No CC yeah. is definitely a team building a comp that is meant to go with the distance. Uh, I know. I know. Even outside of the question of you know PTR practice uh, on PTR. route, you know, you guys <laughs> so were sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys were uh, sorry, very uh, prepared, yeah. saying like even yeah, yeah. comp wise, um, you know, you were ready to to take second, but you knew. That you know, come these later circuits, it really was going to be the press W no CC strat always. Yep, that's moved. our uh, that's our motto, and uh, but super fun, uh, super fun journey. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are casting are doing a very good job, and everything is smooth. And yeah, um, shout out to you guys. Yeah, no, Congra thanks, Bobby. congratulations, Bobka. Great job today. The minor setback, but we'll see you on the next circuit, especially when you have Wind Fury, which is like the bread and butter for your composition. Yes. If you guys, are you planning to get tactics, Whirlwind X? I mean, we were just talking in Discord before you guys pulled me out for that, but Tactics is planning some uh, some uh, some uh, sketchy strats to get his <laughs> Whirlwind X. So, so you, guys are, you guys are fresh off the heels of circuit one already planning circuit two you've got two yeah. weeks ahead of you yep and i think we learned too but uh today uh you guys i don't know if, if i guess didn't mention that but we uh we are gonna have so i have a minus three points because my teammates uh tactics and cargos mm. uh, they love to be on the edge of everything and they went for 49.99999 <laughs> uh, percent uh, but we had to explore two zones to get to the mine so we have a little oh. point yeah, they didn't have the exploration beforehand yeah. to get little... there, so they out leveled uh, the cap yeah. exploring two oh. dead mines because you guys changed yeah. your out, right? Yep. A little because point they... deduction for the boys. You hate to yeah. see it, but uh, it is what it is. You know, I think that to to leave a chance to the other team, um, especially the teams that are PTRing, uh, I think that uh, <laughs> you know we need to have a little minus points just to you know, oh, just, just to make this more fun. You know. Oh, but I, I love the jabs. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I mean, it is a e-sport technically, so you know, gotta have a little banter. A little, uh... Yeah, true, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we got, we got to have a rivalry. We got to have a rivalry. Yeah, have a rivalry. Do you want to? I mean, I'm, maybe we won't call them out by by names, okay. but oh, no, no, you, no. you guys have that. you have a rivalry. There is a rivalry at the top we right now already after the rivalry, first circuit, yes. and we're gonna see. I would not say the name, but yeah, it is a pretty big one.
It's okay. We had a podcast yesterday with Ompi and Cargos, and, and, <laughs> and so, the, so the rivalry was pretty obvious. Yeah, pretty well on display. Speaking of Ompi, though, uh, you know, right, Bobka, you I don't want to keep you guys. Uh, thank you so much, know. Bobka. Really, really appreciate it, and congratulations. Have a good day, boys. Uh, and yeah, I, later, Bobby. And I don't know if uh, Ompi just wants to jump in here um, or if we want to do a little bit more coverage before that happens. I know a lot of teams are uh, just starting to finish up their last dungeons as well. You know, we're really mm -hmm. getting down to it. Um, you know, about at the three and a half hour mark, not too bad for this first circuit, uh, particularly given that these folks are running uh, on foot for all their travel time. Yeah, and in Classic, if, if you don't remember, that was like one of the things that used to drive me insane. Like, I loved it, but also drove me insane when you were trying to do something like IRL very quickly. And it was like, oh, I'll be there in like a minute. I just need to get to this one location really fast. Totally. That's like 13 minutes. You have like five minutes of flying and then and then walking time. It's always like that. It's such a yeah, thing in cool. Classic. And I think that it just makes it that much cooler that these teams really thought ahead to plan every single second of travel time. You know, like, where do we want to have our Hearthstone set? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, we had to go through, explore all of these zones beforehand, uh, make sure we had flight pads, make sure we have the money for flight pads. And some like, didn't explore the those zones, as we just saw yeah, like, or in the heard. Case of indoors, like, planning to reset your hearth to a new location. Uh, it's pretty wild technology that's being planned uh, for, again, just level 22 dungeon running. Yeah, for this, and this is just the first circuit. The amount of effort put into this circuit really goes to show how hard and and how serious a lot of these teams are taking it. And that just means that like we're gonna see such ridiculous min maxi strategies come out of these teams for every single one of these tournaments. So guys, remember for sure that every two weeks we're having another full circuit happening, a different level cap each time. Exclamation point H C A S to to see the website i like that stutter there because i was going to say the discord but the discord is exclamation point rules also we will do a giveaway one more giveaway at the very end of this casting today and also you guys if you want to join in you still can you absolutely still can join in it's not over we did see some teams full wipe today but they're still going back they're going to level again they just won't be able to enter into these dungeons that they've entered into before because you are limited every person is limited to only doing these dungeons one time not per character but per person oh, absolutely um and yeah i don't know if uh Oppy is available right now i did confirm with unchained uh from vidir and Jars. he is up for jumping in here uh, oh, amazing. Oh, the old Chippo wow. The oh, amazing. Honestly, oh, that wow. was I think that my favorite POV today was was Unchained. Ompi also had crazy strats, but Unchained just I, as a enjoyer of of all versions of speedruns, um the hunter is one of the most important people in the speedrun, especially if they're always in front of the raid if they're always in front of the group pulling things back to the group it's such a massive time save overall and having a player that plays that well will add up significantly throughout all of these circuits so ampi welcome hopping in here yep. how you doing buddy how how you feeling after this circuit feeling hyped i'm already prepping for circuit two I'm starting to level starting to you instantly onto the leveling no relaxation huh yeah Almost 25. Yeah, he this man has some rested XP to farm. I do, yeah. Yeah, you were so, saying yesterday. I learned my lesson. You had, you had six I would have hit 24. Days, right? Of rested experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If so, I had one more day, I would have hit 24 before BFD. It was a huge power spike for me. I got three massive spell upgrades. But I was yeah, so, five percent so, off. I've got a big question for you, Ampi. You know, one of the we were really skeptical as casters looking at your team early on the circuit, like right after you finished Dead Mines. We see you guys taking your sweet time to get to Wailing Caverns. And we're thinking that you're about to blow, you know, your um, your circuit time. Mm -hmm. what, what was your thinking behind saying these quest turn ins are worthwhile? Was it the rewards? Was it the XP? Was it just, you know, saying we might as well because we're confident in our ability to perform in the dungeons? What's going through your heads? Uh, well, I already knew that we were going to win the circuit time regardless, so might as well get the XP. Damn, oh, like that, bro? My gosh. That's a jab. Do you know these other teams were, were they did phenomenal? Does it, do you have some sort of rivalry, would you say? Yeah, yeah I mean, I will say you guys. Well, 
circuit time by maybe 60, 90 seconds. Yeah, easy. Okay, easy. I see. Uh, oh, plan the plan the sixty to but ninety I mean, seconds. I mean, my main nemesis, Hellfire Club, has already perished, so that's that's good. <laughs> oh, um, that's true. All right, fair, good. True, true. They're gone. Who is OCC back, though. in the bin? All they could do is Wailing Caverns. Their Wailing Caverns was was a beautiful was good, run, though. but also next time they will have Wind Fury. How are you going to combat Wind Fury, Whirlwind Axe, Enjoyers? Um. It'll be whatever. I don't think it's that crazy. Like, Whirlwind Axe, there's a couple other items to just like it. Okay. So so then, for you guys turning in these quests, it's about picking up the extra stats because you're confident in your clear times. Um, were you guys trying to... You made mention of, like, trying to get level 24 before BFD. Um, were you, like, trying your hardest to hit that mark as quickly as possible? Yeah, that was the goal. That, the, that was the reason we really went to Stormwind and everything. We thought we would be able to get 24 um, before our third dungeon, which would be, a, I mean, for Mage, it's Fireball, Flame Strike, and Counterspell. But Counterspell is huge. Counterspell, oh my yeah. god, yeah. So we lost, we lost, uh, if we had 24 there, we would have shaved off a lot, a lot of time on our mm -hmm. um, BFD run. We ended up dinging like on the way to BFD. It was yeah, that's not tough. ideal. That's really tough. You were just, that was, close. You got it. You got it from like a mob, or was it from a like? It was like it was like the tunnel. It was a lot of mobs. It, for me, it was oh, like yeah. eight percent XP. For calamity, it was five percent. That is so, one thing that you guys did have to deal with. Your your way into BFD, you guys had to deal with actually clearing out all of the enemies before it, and yep. some other groups kind of had the opportunity yeah, of going yet. right after other people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I was curious, like, why BFD before SFK in that case? Was it just because your, mm -hmm. um, like, your Hearthstone is set to Astronar and you're planning on that, uh, you know, Darnassus uh, loop? Yeah, BFD is just way better for routing because we we didn't really want to sack our circuit time. Um, the only so so the the reason we went to Stormund was for XP, mm -hmm. but I was going to Stormund anyways. So our route was like. I don't Hearthstone. I actually just go to Wailing Caverns from Booty Bay. So everybody else who went to Stormwind was just like kind of waiting for me. Um, uh, because Wailing I need Caverns. to. I need, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I need. I needed um, Hearthstone at 24 to train, but it ended up not panning out. We lost like maybe six or seven minutes on circuit time just from that. Okay. And, and I guess for your team, like, you know, it's not like you were out of the know that ghetto hearthing was allowed. Was that extra time that you'd have to wait for your ghetto hearth, you know, the 10 second delay after leaving party, the one minute timer on getting it ported out? Was that just in your math not worth it to wait for? For what? For which which one? Uh, For um needing your hearth up at 24, you know, why yeah. not burn your hearth uh, to get to Wailing Caverns and then ghetto hearth at 24 to train? My hearth is in Ashenvale. So I need it. I can't get back to Ashenvale because I can't. Oh, I see. Okay, so at twenty four, yeah. getting to a major turn, and then outside of a dungeon, you need to. Yeah. Get a I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. One thing you guys that, did a, that, an impressive showing, Ompi. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. How did it feel? There was one point in in SFK which we watched earlier where you were jumping up and down basically just leashing the mobs um, and you were hitting them with your arcane explosion. Did you have any fears that the EU ping would uh, allow them to melee you once? No, I mean, it's not that big. I have um, I have 100 MS. It's not uh, game changing. That's it? What is your internet? This is what, I, this is what he, I'm saying. He I lives think, on the server, I'm telling you. I think, yeah, I think he's secretly moving to the EU just for this. Yeah, he's using exit lag could over be. here. But that... So, one one thing I'm super interested, Ompi. Mm -hmm. What was your guys' reaction in comms when you saw first the cruel barb drop, but second the stinging vipers drop for L and D Gen? I mean, those upgrades were huge, and we were pretty excited here on the desk. Um, but we'd love to hear your take about just how much uh, y'all were getting excited for that. Well, it's hard to get excited about those things mid run. I think um, like it is it is really cool, but the main focus isn't what your you know your item upgrades because at the end of the day. They're, you know, upgrades for one person, a uh, dungeon of five. I mean, the damage isn't game changing. Um, so our focus was still on like 
I, I don't know. I, I don't even know if we had a real reaction. It was just kind of great. You no. Know, all right, pass fast, pass fast. I want to get this. Yeah, you guys didn't plan out plan out beforehand. Yeah. But yeah, so so we are watching live right now, or I guess I should say a replay a right replay, now yeah. of, of this kite that you performed. Um, you know, how, how much practice, if you can share, like, you know, did this take to get down? Did you have to practice again on EU to get the hang of this? No, I just got a first try. You know what? I thought it would take it's practice. It's not that hard. Your jumps up of the water in BFD was pixel perfect. You have, like, because of the gnome... Um, like you have slightly different jumps than everyone else. And every time you had a different jump in, in dead mines slightly than everyone else. And every time you guys literally, no one had it to even jump a second time. It was wild. Yeah. I mean, we, we did a couple runs. Um, we didn't spend too much time practicing. Um, we did, a, we did like two or three runs of every dungeon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, except for SFK, SFK, um, was the hardest one to route by far, just because of how much we were trying to like optimize. I think our SFK. If if I had to choose like one dungeon that I'm most proud of, it would definitely be SFK, because we we did like a lot of skips, um, a lot of invis, a lot of AOE, huge AOE packs. Yeah, you guys were poised to get second place, and then your SFK was just. Your SFK insanely was fast. Yeah. Your SFK was was honestly um, great. Um, yeah, and you needed it, or else you literally would not have won. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you guys flew through SFK. It was yeah. like we blinked and you were on Fenris. I have a, a quick question for you. So obviously there, there's this rivalry and, and some talk between your rivals about um, practice, practice runs and everything like that. Some people are, are claiming practice. Okay, anyways. How much preparation went into this, including practice? How much How much did you prepare? How much of this was all hashed out? How much did you know what you were doing and strategies to make sure that you guys could have the fastest possible speed runs here? I'd say everything was uh, practiced or theory crafted in some way. We spent a lot of time like routing um, on level 60s, trying to find evade spots and um, just like what mobs we pull when is like a really big thing because mm -hmm. as mage, it's a lot of like stop and go, but as a team, we're not just a, an AOE like caster cleave or caster comp. So we can't just stop every time, you know, I need to drink. So it was a lot of like planning out, okay, this is our AOE pull. And then after this, I'm drinking, you guys are just killing two mobs. And then we're doing another AOE pull. Yeah. So it was a lot of, um, you know, we, we had like every pull roughly um, an idea of what we wanted to do. Yeah, that's, I think, phenomenal. Really, the, the preparation showed today in your performance. Everyone in the group played extremely well, and I think you guys really did. Re like, you executed all of the plans that you came up with, so really well, just I, great work. And I think that your team really proved that, you know, preparation and just knowing how to execute you know your route your plan can go a long way i mean we just saw calamity you know your paladin healer in the chat saying she only had one day played on her character you know we've heard of people all, right, all, right, all right okay hold on yeah. calamity is sandbagging she had no scrolls for the run she can get them in stormwind <laughs> okay. while she's getting rested xp Jesus. log in for two seconds buy the scrolls noob so, so what you're saying wow. is she wow carried okay yes the calamity carry i had to give her my scrolls no wow. scroll calamity. You heard it I brought first, five guys. For, for me, and I ended up using a full set on calamity. Yikes, dude. Physically too poor to afford scrolls. Maybe that was because of lack of fishing, Clem. Yeah, where was the fishing? Was, and the yeah. 50 gold the that, unprepared. that Omphi fished unprepared up. Unprepared paladin players, man. Imagine. Paladins. Well, I mean, honestly, even with that happening, even knowing that, it just speaks to the amount of preparedness that, that you guys have for this tournament and i'm really excited to see what you guys pull off in the next couple circuits honestly i think your your group composition is kind of planned out potentially for the later circuits a little bit where you really start excelling and then eventually you even have uh teleports and stuff and portals and just huge aoe and massive damage so well, congratulations and today 
Yeah, and I'm really excited to see how you guys start bringing in your priest as well, Kexek, who sat out the entirety of this first one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to see your comp really start developing. Yeah. I will say that um, I've heard, you know, Bob has mentioned that his team scales very well, but he has no mage. And um, yeah, melee does scale pretty well, but you know, if there's one class that starts getting unlocked really soon, it's mage. We get Cone of Cold, Go Frost, Giga AoE pull with lots of mana, mana gems, dude, it's... Yes. I think I that's think, uh, huge, mage teams honestly. Are pop soon. I, I actually think early on... Not having a mage is fine, but as your sub would be the mage. And I think they actually... Lesmos is the, their six. Yeah. yeah the so chat, no mage, excuse me? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. mage mage later is so powerful, but they're looking at like the melee cleave, go for wind fury, doing all of your damage, wind fury weapon, and, and just some huge melee damage. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how it all pans out. I think they have a very solid comp and it's a i love these rivalries here at the top i love i love it you know the none, real rivalry not a single, not a single on. one of those players is gonna give up wind fury totem they're gonna feel the juice and just not want to leave losmos yep. isn't gonna see the time of day man feels bad i feel that the real rivalry here is actually between ompi and calamity it's like infighting of the, of the winning yeah. team where were your scrolls yeah calamity we're gonna really need you to step it up before the next uh bracket before the next uh, circuit okay. comes into play. Yep. That's why we got a second healer. 50 scrolls. <laughs> yes. But oh, who's man. who is your who's your who's your sixth omp? I can't remember. Kexek. Oh yeah. The priest. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. The priest. The priest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just bring just bring Kexek in. Fortitude's worth. Yeah. Um, but I just want to say one more time, thank you so much for for hopping in and and talking to us. Congratulations again. Huge grats to the team for getting the dub and you guys had the issue with mutinous just decent or not spawning so unfortunate there but amazing work really really well planned and executed and i can't wait for for everyone watching to see how these rivalries pan out in the future thanks for having me on thanks guys of course appreciate you only do we have do we have the deer enjoyers to hop in as a I final believe we interview. do. I, I just gave him perms to be able to jump in here. I'll check in with him uh, on DMs. Mm -hmm. The old Chippo? The old... The old Chippo. The old Chippo Wow. Played so well today. So incredibly well today. That I am so impressed and so excited. And there he is. Hello. Chippo. Hey, hey. Welcome, welcome. First of all, congratulations on the performance. You guys did phenomenal today. Um, I think you you guys, with you in particular, everything seemed planned out so well, and your job as the hunter puller and always moving forward is something that I think cannot be understated how important it is for speed throughout a dungeon and a raid. And I, I just want to say great work there. How much preparation did you guys put towards going to this circuit today? Yeah, I'm glad it looked that way. It definitely didn't feel that way for quite a lot of it. <laughs> um, so we, we didn't actually put in a huge amount of prep. We we ran through on our level 60 characters each of the dungeons. Uh, we kind of planned out, okay, we can pull this much here. We can go to this little late spot there. But we we never actually ran through on uh, on on at level characters. Really? So it was all just what where we think we're gonna go, what our route is kind of gonna be. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, in, in hindsight, I think that would have helped us a lot if we if we had access to like a PTR or something to do some testing. Um, I'm really proud of how we did without doing any of that. Um, mm -hmm. I think our, our theory crafting was pretty good. Um, but yeah, it was all pretty much uh, finger in the air. Yeah, we can pull ten mobs. Yeah, we can pull eight here. Whatever. Yeah, you guys did a, a phenomenal job of pulling way more than most other groups were able to do at all and always being able to down them with like huge damage from yeah. from the grenades, from the mage AOE, from like everything you had. You guys were always just consistently outputting massive damage. I, and I think that this poll that we're looking at, I don't know if you're watching Sarth's stream Unchained, 
Um, Solid, yeah. But but it was a massive poll uh, where you and No CC had been tied. They chose to do a bit more of a skip than you guys did, but then you pulled this huge double poll uh, to retake the lead. Um, it was really phenomenally played. Yeah. You're... So I think uh, yeah, I think one of the secrets we had. I, I don't know how many other teams did this, but the target dummies. Most people in hardcore consider that a defensive cooldown. For us, we were like, that's an offensive cooldown. Like, that's a that's a tank every two minutes, right? So for these giga pulls like this, um, the target dummies really helps. Like, we the the damage that we were actually taking was was so much lower than it would have been otherwise. Yeah, you guys kind of panned out and rotated target dummies on like almost all of the pulls. It happens all the time. And I think I, I, we were curious how much time went into things like mining and preparation to get all of the, the engineering mats for every single character. Uh, a decent amount. So myself and Kitty, the rogue, we were both pretty much maxed on engineering. Um, not everybody else was. We had a few unfortunate deaths quite late in our team. In fact, our team had seven deaths total before the circuit. Ooh. Wow. So, what? Um, okay. Yeah, no, no, for real. Like, and three of them were above level twenty. Kitty died twice above level twenty, and oh, our mage my died, word. died above level twenty. So um, we could have been a lot more prepared, actually. Mm -hmm. but wow, you, that's that's crazy to see that comeback to to have the people that are dying above level twenty twice above level twenty when twenty three is the cap, and to come back, level up again, and be prepared, and then go in and put in such ridiculous times seven deaths before the first circuit yeah wait have you yeah. guys i know i know bev. 60 before on hardcore yeah i i know bev i know bev dies pretty often but i didn't think it was that bad bev i have six days played since the event started leave me alone <laughs> oh my god that's incredible so where'd you guys get all the wool so uh i i I've I've uh, I've made a few Matt Garrard characters, so I knew that the wool grind had to be done nice and early. Mm -hmm. uh, most of us farmed it at the the wetland orcs, um, and we did that like a full level just grinding wool. Yeah, I was gonna say because like the wool grind is a big bottleneck if you start it too late and you're afraid to over level. Because mm -hmm. you need you yeah, all needed yeah. like thirty target dummies each. Yeah, we we uh, we knew that in advance, and uh, we were fine on wool cloth actually. That's awesome. That's incredible. Yeah, you guys, that was you were my favorite team to watch today. Hundred percent. Me too. Certainly. It was so it was so exciting. It was so entertaining. I think you guys pulled off some some crazy strategies for well, a team comp that you wouldn't usually expect to pull all that big all the time. But using the target dummies as an offensive CD instead of as a defensive one just makes it so that you always have this like isn't it level forty five like a, a tank for like yeah, multiple 40 poles. mob yeah yeah it's, it's crazy and uh it's gonna be equally strong in circuit two and we'll have sappers um and wait you're gonna have device. sappers in circuit oh two? yeah hell yeah like a, a hunter you can easily get mage weave on a hunter for sure. oh jesus christ we're gonna come out sapping this oh, is yeah, gonna be yeah. this is gonna be how much damage does that do to you how much health are you gonna have versus how much damage does the sapper charge do <laughs> yeah, are you gonna be doing all of your health, health? I mean, we have a priest, right? The priest can pre-shield whoever suffers. Uh, but that's <laughs> no, gonna be, pre shield uh... <laughs> the Oh my goodness. So still oh, yeah. putting you at low health after the shield is consumed. Oh man, that's going to be awesome to watch. I can't hey, wait. I got to say though, this was all, your run was all the more impressive uh, knowing now that you hadn't been practicing for it. It really looked like you all had every pull planned out to a T. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad it looked that way. As I said, like it didn't feel like it at times, but uh, yeah, my team really clutched it up. I'm really proud of how we did. Um, and yeah, I'm glad it was enjoyable to watch. Yeah, I've got a new favorite team for the rest of this circuit. I'm, I'm super excited. I know, I'm low-key super hyped. You guys really crushed it. Amazing <laughs> yeah. work. Well, I have one last question for you because I'm, I'm so curious about um, the next circuit. Do you plan on getting your STV bow? Absolutely, yes. Yes. Oh my God. We're going to need you to send us the clips of that. Yeah, before the next we would love to watch we it definitely... in show. Yeah. I, so I have actually, I've done it before. I have, a, I had a level 31 horde hunter, like no gear, no professions. And I've, I've done it on that hunter. So I'm confident that I can do it again. That's incredible. It's actually incredible. Are you, and are you doing the, the rogue Mokgara? 
Oh yeah, of course. So I'm, oh uh, great. I'm, oh great. I'm always okay. back for the Mike, Mike Garaz. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sick. So we won't win winner. that one either. Yeah, yeah. this is a two-time winner here so, to defend the the championship. Well, Sarth, you might not know that, but uh, we do hardcore dueling tournaments, and uh, Unchained here is the two times winner back to back. Going for the hat trick this time. It's going to be Rogue Locked, Mock Garal. Lose you the duel, you kill your character. Your character. Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, they've, they've got a week to build up a level 20 character. I think for Rogues, they're doing it 22 for the Vanish. Um, but the first one was all warriors, second one, all shamans. Now it's rogues. Uh, and yeah, you're looking at a, a two time champion. Good luck. I will, I will say I am not as confident on rogue. Um, I picked that more because it was a crowd favorite, not because it's a, a strong class of mine. <laughs> but I'll play, I'll play anyway. Well, I, I know you're gonna have some stiff competition. I know people like Bobka uh, are really, really excited is to Bobka get in there. And why yeah. does why does everyone say Bobka is like so good at rogue? I'm because he talks a lot about it. I am four for five wins on low level rogue duels against Bobka. Wow. And then oh, I well. murdered him in the hardcore Warsong Gulch that we did. You know what? That I is, think that is you true. are Winky as one of your teammates for that hardcore Warsong Gulch. That was a lot of fun. Actually, I love the mm -hmm. there's rivalries now between the casters and, and the teams. There's literally there's literally clips of me. Dumpstering Bobka on a 19 rogue. And, and don't forget also dumpstering Cargos on a 19 rogue. That too. That too. Oh my god. Well, I gotta say, good job to you for doing that. But also a massive, massive <laughs> congrats, Chippo. You guys did amazing. And we're really excited to to see what you guys pull off in the second circuit. Thank you for joining us here. And honestly, I really want I'm going to I'm going to see if we can we can get you in here before the next circuit cuz I I'm really excited to see what you guys have to pull off for the next one. So, thank you for coming in here. Congrats today and we'll see you on the next one, man. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for having me. See you next next time. Yeah, cheers to you. Yep, two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks from now, we all go again, guys. Two weeks from now, mm -hmm. level 32 and a half, and the the dungeons get a little bit scarier. Every time, the dungeons kind of get a little bit scarier. The level gap in the dungeons is always more intimidating, and teams have to level outside of these dungeon groups and not die. That's like <laughs> another thing that like every time I'm thinking about it, it's like they had seven deaths in that team. That's wild. We should we should thank our sponsor once again, Hardcore Elite. Absolutely. The premier end game raiding guild for Hardcore World of Warcraft. If you want to raid Hardcore Roll Alliance Blood Cell Buccaneers, go get fed a bunch of gear from Molten Core. They're going into BWL tomorrow, tomorrow. for the first time. They're going to try and kill Razor Gore. There's a potential chance several people die if not an entire raid wipe happens tomorrow. So for if you sure. want to see that, jump in the Hardcore Discord. Click on the streams tomorrow uh, or Calamity HC in chat. I'm sure she will be streaming that that run. Um, yeah, big shout outs to Hardcore Elite. Um, and if you want to join Hardcore Elite, make a character Blood Cell Buccaneers, level it to 60 without dying, and ask him for an invite. Or Hydraxian Waterlords. Uh, the Mortal Elite uh, raiding group has also started clearing uh, Molten Core, right which is now? fantastic to see. So... EU or NA enjoyers, uh, you've both got some options. Yes, some um, amazing guilds. And honestly, that's going to be so exciting to watch. I just linked Calamity's Twitch in the chat, guys. But if you want to watch that tomorrow, the first time any hardcore guild going in and dealing with BWL. And that is a fight that things can go wrong. So, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Razor Gore is an interesting first encounter. No escape. Uh, you know, definitely a lot of team coordination that needs to be going on. Some weird bugs that can happen. And if the bugs happen, if, they're just out. They're just dead. Yeah. It's a it's a feels bad too bad. Vale, get owned. Vale is probably scary as hell too. Mm -hmm. Um, you, someone literally has to die on Vale. So, uh, I yeah, don't, I'm not sure how. Well, well no, you don't. You well, no, you don't. No, you, don't. no, you Hearthstone out. You Hearthstone yeah, out. Hearthstone out immediately. Yeah. So as soon as yeah, you get you the debuff, you quick Hearthstone. So then they 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 change tanks instantly. Mm -hmm. Bubble Hearthstone. Log you don't bubble. Or whatever. You you get so the the debuff well, that instantly kills out. you. Hold on. <laughs> the, the, the debuff that instantly kills you doesn't it? You, you can't start. You, is Vale's Vale's not tauntable? That's why you would. Is Vale tauntable? Vale it doesn't. Tauntable. It doesn't go on I the tank it is though. Tauntable. 
if you get the debuff, you just insta hearth out and you're safe. You don't die. Yeah, it's the third one, but will they have the DPS to kill it before the tank gets? Yes. Before they have BWL gear? Yeah. I mean, they've got some massive. You DPS usually kill it before the tank gets it, but not in your first raid in in BWL. No, nah, no, nah, you'll get it. They have they have AQ twenty cleared. They've got some good gear. ZG. All right. Well, I'm intrigued to see. I'm I'm world used, buffs. Uh, it's gonna be fun to see it if they when they do it. The rogues like like are you gonna use like warriors? Will you use recklessness? Are you ready to lip? Because you're staring at your threat bar. Oh, they'll they'll figure it out, but it's going to be awesome to watch. Yeah, that'll be that'll be one of the most exciting and and hype ones to see. And imagine, sure. imagine you're in that raid. It's like it's it's like roulette, right? Like you're just you're risking it. Like it, it someone's getting the debuff, right? Like who is it? Is it me? All right, Hearth. All right, I'm out. No, I'm out. I'm out of here. I'm yep. looking forward to the yep. desk. Honestly, we we had some team wipes today. We had a few team wipes today. Some partial team wipes. Some teams lost one person, but some of the the fastest groups were able to clear this, making it look easy. And it's and it's not necessarily easy being able to do all of those pulls, especially if you didn't practice it, like we just heard. Some groups not practicing and doing large pulls, just knowing that they're going to drop a, a target dummy there, making it look. Sorry, I, th very I threw clean. a. I threw a highlight. I haven't watched it yet, but I threw it in the uh, staff chat. Right. Um, it's from Dirty Randy's POV and BFT today. I'm not sure what happens, but I'm sure it's funny because it's Dirty Randy. Dirty Randy. All right, let's do this. From, uh, Randy. This is from Pagels Pro Shop, a great team. By the way, their, uh, their tank, Alothran, I posted a, a little gif he sent me in the staff channel. He got wow. so kitted out yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. We on the is pillar. he just super we geared? Very, very well geared. We Algae fist smites spot. hammer. We can't, we can't have them not Oof. the works. Yeah, if it, it could drop, it drop. Oh, oh my Chad, god! If you're here, eleven percent. <laughs> burn one. You guys gonna burn one? Everybody one hit pop, and he was dead. Pop, one right hit. One. Focus, focus the one that's low. Let's go. Oh, talk about taking some big on. damage. Three, oh, three HP. I potted. I potted. I don't have any. Stun. Nice. Any, any, any Three time. HP. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. oh, Who's it on? Nice, nice. Okay. Shields, everything. Nice. Holy fuck. Yo, oh it, we're, we're at this, looking at this, like I'm no wonder we didn't dude. see any teams move. pull all four of the, of the yeah, torches. Yeah, that the was just time. two. That was just the two mobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god. Three HP is. is that's so scary. Immediately when that's done, they just say, all right, Randy, get to full. Sasha, you got to heal the next one. Three health. My goodness. You literally don't notice it until you're like, no, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was that was that. Was, that's wild. Uh, congratulations on not dying. This is that team, by the way, is full of really good friends of mine. That is dirty. Randy. Mm -hmm. Sasha, a Lutheran, Shoal, and Hell Smash. Yeah, those are some OGs. I only know know Alu and and great dude. So I'm I'm really yeah. Hyped. You know Alu for in real life. Yeah. These these are people Three from the, our uh, our Wrath Guild. So scary! Oh my god! I'm glad I'm glad this all went well. I'm I'm really proud of all of the guilds today. This is like honestly so impressive uh everyone who made it through even the guilds or the the parties who had people die it's not an easy feat to speed run through dungeons and it's very scary to speed run through dungeons and know you only have one life if anything yeah, happens you're out i'm quite excited to see even those teams who wiped come back and show up for circuit two absolutely absolutely i think I think we might see maybe a mix up of things. It, it seems like there's the one squad, a couple squads have a lot of preparation that they go through and they're already mm -hmm. moving directly towards working again. Like Ompi's leveling right now, but everyone's gonna have a lot of gear. I think there's gonna be a difference in, in some people might die trying to solo Whirlwind Axe. We're gonna have a ton of clips for the next event of, of people outside of the event dying. We'll break down everything that happened here also again. But I want to say this was phenomenal. I'm I'm so proud of how this all went down. Yeah. 
I'm excited. I, this is something that only Black Smoke has been talking about for a long time. And I'm really glad we're finally not talking about it and doing it. And I feel very fortunate that I'm here casting it with two of the giga homies that I've met through World of Warcraft over the last the three, boys. four years. The boys. It's been it's been a wild ride. And the fact that we have a hardcore event partnered by Blizzard. Mm -hmm is just mind blowing to me. I mean, huge shout outs to Blizzard as well for this. You know what? Amazing That's event. The perfect. Um, we're let's do a giveaway. The last giveaway yeah. of the day, guys. The last giveaway, giveaway. of the day. Exclamation point giveaway. I'm going to give away. Let's see. What am I going to give away, guys? What are we? I'm going to eat these nachos. You know what? This giveaway is going to be something that not everybody can use because this is going to be a giveaway for retail. But that's okay. Because if you show up next time, I'll also again be giving away epic editions of Wrath of the Lich King as well as heroic editions of, of Wrath of the Lich King. But what we're going to do right now is give away the Dread Raven mount for Dragonflight. Jeez. So. So, I know a lot of people don't love to play retail, but a lot of people do love to play retail, and we want anyone who plays World of Warcraft to, to be here having fun with the hardcore community. And so, even if you don't like playing retail, now you can log into retail and lord it over every retail enjoyer that you have this exclusive mount. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. that you have this mount that you got for free instead of buying it for $99,000 IRL money. You got it here at twitch.tv slash sarf. Yes. That's what you have to tell everyone. And you're like, oh my God, I did it. Well, guys, I'm going to run the giveaway right now. And Drum the roll, please. Is, yeah. <laughs> and the winner is Refi. I am Refi. Let's go. Congratulations. Winning the third giveaway here today. Again, guys, earlier in the stream, we... Oh, let's go, Refi. Send me a DM right now. Let's go. Congratulations. Um, and, and guys, remember, next week we will give away... Or next... Next... Uh, circuit in two weeks we will also give away more free editions heroic and epic editions of world of warcraft classic so you guys can go in here play wrath of the lich king have instant level 70 free boosts as well as have access to be playing on the full classic realms and joining in on the hardcore fun so i love that guys and everyone who hasn't started a team or still wants to play in a team Definitely let us know because you can. You absolutely, absolutely can still play. Absolutely. Yeah, just feel free to join uh, the Discord. We are going to be unlocking team registration, which was locked uh, for the 24 hours before the circuit. Uh, mm -hmm. New teams will be able to register up until Friday, March 24th. Uh, feel free to get leveling, uh, get in the LFT channel and find your team. Yes. Uh, and yeah, Saturday, March 25th, we will see Circuit 2. Coming in clutch again, we're going to be racing through SM Graveyard, Library, RFK, and Nomer, all at level 32. Amazing. And good luck to all of the teams. Congratulations to everybody who who won the giveaways today as well as everybody who participated thank you guys all for watching the event today massive shout out to the teams over at hardcore all stars and the hardcore teams for putting this all together only thank you so much for all of the work you've done here this is an amazing event i hope everybody enjoyed this i hope you all had fun um Winky, thanks for being on the cast and desk. You're the, of the absolute legend, the best. And guys, huge shout out to you guys, as well as the podcast that Winky has, Fs and Chat. Make sure to check that out on Fridays over on his channel because he will be breaking down all of the hardcore deaths. Only pew, I'm going to send it to you to, to, to <laughs> give a little send away and then we'll send it to you, Winky. Sure. Yeah, hope you all enjoyed uh, Circuit 1 of 5 for the HCAS uh, world tour season one uh, it's been an absolute blast working with this village of contributors to get this going uh, over 200 competitors got to uh, join this first one you can still join we hope to see a lot more of you joining the discord getting talking uh, and joining us for the next race
couldn't be more excited, uh, especially again, getting to hang out with these two beautiful guys uh, all day hosting these things. These two beautiful dudes. Yeah. Um, if you can hear me right now, if you can hear my voice, if you're playing games, if you're lurking, if you're at work right now, whatever it is, if you have the opportunity to put a one in the chat and just show some love for not only you, but for your fellow homies in the community, you guys, this is a community run grassroots event together by the grassroots community that is world of warcraft classic hardcore um the fact that you guys are here is the reason we like to do this stuff and without you we couldn't do any of it so i appreciate you first and foremost before everyone else um and you deserve to uh to acknowledge that and be acknowledged all the time so i appreciate it i appreciate being allowed to to be on the cast today and and have fun with the boys and watch some epic god tier gameplay because i can't so do fun. that on my warlock um sar thank you so much for letting us do this and for hosting the event today and only thank you for including me in your grand scheme of a wonderful idea called hardcore all-stars that you've been trying to do for years yes this all came together so well what a what an event guys last last time thank you guys everyone for watching thanks for participating thanks for the follows the subs and, and everything today as well i know we weren't calling any of that out but it shows massive support support massive support over to the channel so it really really helps really I'm appreciate glad you it corrected for the wrong one yeah yeah massive support to the channel everyone have a phenomenal phenomenal weekend there's still some teams going for it and so we're going to send you over to some of the teams still going for it enjoy guys much love and we'll see you all next weekend peace hell yeah Bye.